Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday night, May 29th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here is a little taste of what's coming up tonight. Tonight, how the Patriot Act took down its key supporter. Then, Rex Jones asks, what is the TPP? And live coverage from the Mohammed Cartoon Contest in Phoenix. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. ISIS has vowed to attack it right around 6.15 when they're expected to have prayer time. Well, we are bringing you a very live, extended version of the InfoWars Nightly News tonight. God willing, we are going to be Skyping in live with Joe Biggs. Uh, he's in the air right now, but he should be touching down in Phoenix, Arizona. They're having another rally for free speech there. And, you know, we said, Biggs, do you want to go? And he had already had his flight booked. So God willing, he'll get there in time. Uh, so we're going to be shooting this edition of the news live tonight and just going as long as it takes. We're going to have a lot of reports for you. I'll be joined in studio by David Knight and Rob Dew here coming up. We're going to uh, try to take some of your questions live on Twitter. I'll tell you how to do that here coming up soon. Um, but let's get into the news. So this weekend, the, uh, the Patriot Act is set to expire, and a lot of people are, are kind of really hoping that they, they allow this to expire and not just have a pass it to find out what's in it type moment. It's set to expire midnight Sunday, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Obama is saying there's just a handful of senators standing in the way of the Patriot Act. Now, without action by midnight Sunday, a number of tools that permit law enforcement to pursue and investigate suspected terrorists will expire. Obama, of course, he's pulling out the terrorism card. He says, I don't want us to be in a situation in which for a certain period of time, those authorities go away and suddenly we are dark. And heaven forbid we've got a problem where we could have prevented a terrorist attack or apprehended someone who is engaged in dangerous activity. So there he goes, throwing that out there. Heavens forbid there's some kind of a terrorist attack and there's just a handful of senators in the way. I mean, pointing out the obvious here that the Patriot Act and NSA, they have not stopped a single terrorist attack at this point. They were just scooping up the data of a lot of innocent Americans and people around the world um, and possibly one of the reasons why a lot of these uh, senators and, and people there are standing in the way of the Patriot Act is because of uh, what happened to their good bunny Dennis Hastert. Now we'll talk about him a little bit more coming up later in the news but uh, uh, Dennis Hastert is the former House Speaker. He was the one who pushed for the Patriot Act initially. He took credit for the passage of the Patriot Act uh, in 2001 as well as getting it reauthorized in 2005. And it is the very provisions in the Patriot Act that led to his indictment. So I think a lot of senators there are kind of saying, well, wow, hey, we already know that they're building a case against all of us to just kind of use whenever they want to bring the hammer down on somebody. But here again, not for a terrorist, even if the guy is reprehensible and has done some real dirty deeds in his past, they didn't take him down for the dirty deeds. They took him down because he was using his cash money in a way that they did not like. So more on that coming up. But the NSA has already said that if their surveillance program ends, they're going to keep that treasure trove of all your phone data that they've collected. Now, if it, if it expires midnight Sunday, they're already getting things prepared, uh, moving things out of the way. Um, they say they're going to isolate the computer servers where they're stored and block any investigators' access but they're not going to destroy the database if its legal authority to collect this material expires on schedule this Sunday. So they're just going to hold on to it until some terror event happens and then everyone is calling for them to reinstate this program, which once again, if a terror attack does happen, the NSA will not be around to stop it. Uh, but Obama has said, uh, other law enforcement has said that they have some other tools in their tool bag that they can use to stop this terrorism, stop terrorist activities. And a school in Orange, Orange County is actually going to start monitoring their students on social media using one of these tools. Now, uh, this is a Snap Trends. They've got an annual license for this. Snap Trends is actually a software company based right out of here in Austin. Uh, but this software monitors Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. 
And the school said it plans to use this software to conduct routine monitoring for the purposes of prevention or early intervention of potential issues in which students or staff could be at risk to themselves or others. So they're going to proactively prevent and intervene. So they're doing all this to proactively prevent and intervene. Kids do stupid things, and we get it, and they do a lot of these really stupid things on social media. Uh, but this is getting these kids prepared to be under perpetual surveillance. And now, not just perpetual surveillance, but engaging in pre-crime, okay? But once again, not for terrorists, it's for average Americans, young people here in school, because the jihadists, check this out, they've got a help desk. <laughs> so ISIS has created an online help desk to teach their fellow comrades safe practice and help them develop their own secure communications. This is a study based out of the U.S.-based Counterterrorism Center. So <laughs> ISIS is giving online training, educating their colleagues how to use established techniques for online privacy, such as the use of virtual private networks. Uh, they're teaching them how to use tools such as Tor, um, advising them against using regular popular platforms like Skype, Gmail, Google, and WhatsApp. Um, and then the report says that we found conversations indicating that jihadis are in the early stages of developing secure communications and browsing programs independent of the efforts by Western privacy advocates, and they're also working on developing their own software, a study found. So always, right on time, ISIS is doing something that lets everyone know, well, you know what, we're going to need to keep that, the Patriot Act in effect and need the NSA to monitor all of our online communications because now ISIS has an online jihadi help desk to train people how to get around the government surveillance. Now, I'm sure everyone out there has watched The Matrix. If you have not, I recommend you go out and do that right away. Uh, but a report came out here just about a week or so ago where NASA uh, was talking about a theory that someone had put forth that we are potentially living in this Matrix-like simulation where everything we are doing is sort of a pre-program. And I know a lot of people talk about that with just the way television shows are and then the way our government works a lot of the times. It feels like a lot of things are programmed. But if you think that that is really far-fetched, this is something that the government has been working on for quite some time. They have been working on a simulation programs to help create a virtual reality for all of us here in America so that they can understand everything. That is the mastering the human domain that Rob Dew and David Knight uh, broke down in regards to Jade Helm. So here is an extended report on this matrix-like simulation that we could potentially be living in. Our universe might be a matrix-like computer game designed by aliens. <laughs> now, this was a theory that was uh, first proposed by a British philosopher, Nick Bostrom, just a few years after the Matrix film was released. So, of course, he could have been influenced by the film, who knows. Uh, but in his paper, Dr. Bostrom suggests that a race of far-evolved descendants could be behind our digital imprisonment. These futuristic beings, whether they be human or otherwise, could be using virtual reality to stimulate a time in the past or trying to recreate how their remote ancestors lived. So I know that might sound crazy, but NASA actually thinks that he could be right. Now, this is according to Rich Turrell. He is the director of the Center for Evolutionary Computation and Automated Design at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. He says that in quantum mechanics, particles do not have a definite state unless they're being observed. One explanation is that we're living within a simulation, seeing what we need to see when we need to see it. And he said he still finds it inspiring that even if we are living in some sort of a simulation or many orders of magnitude down in levels of simulation, somewhere along the way something escaped the primordial ooze to become us and to result in simulations that made us. And so he thinks that that's cool. 
Well, I don't want to go into too deep of what that might possibly be. David Icke was actually on the Alex Jones Show and talked a little bit about what might be behind this digital enslavement. Um, but if you think that virtual reality and living in a simulation uh, is just too far off, totally unreal. Well, that is exactly what the United States government has been working on. The NSA's Acquaint program was actually featured on PBS Nova in 2009. Acquaint stands for Advanced Question Answering for Intelligence. And PBS Nova says, with the entire internet and thousands of databases for a brain, the device will be able to respond almost instantaneously to complex questions posed by intelligence analysts. As more and more data is collected through phone calls, credit card receipts, social media, GPS trackers, cell phone geolocation, internet searches, Amazon book purchases, and even easy pass toll records, it may one day be possible to know not just where people are and what they are doing, but what and how they think. So this was many years ago, PBS Nova, it's, you know, they're not huge conspiracy theorists, but think back then, 2009, smart homes and smart tracking apps weren't as prevalent as they are today. So all of this technology, we're basically helping to build our own digital imprisonment. But another AI program, Sentient World Simulation. This was proposed in 2006 and has largely flown under the radar. Sentient World Simulation is a matrix-like reality simulating humanity. It is a mirror model of the real world running in parallel on a computer and it's designed to predict and evaluate future events and courses of action. SWS provides an environment for testing psychological operations and civil affairs activities. It's capable of illustrating the impact of these activities on populations. So in a parallel world, the Pentagon is running an AI program to see how people will react to propaganda and government inflicted terror. So they can yank a country's water supply or stage a military coup and see how people are going to react. Now the military uh, through all this is, is seeking to gain full spectrum picture of the everyday reality of people's lives and of course the adversaries of the military so that's why they're tracking protesters and vegan potlucks and uh, the occupy protests and things like that because they're they're wanting to see not only who are terrorists but people who are actively trying to maybe overthrow the world order so with this upcoming jade helm is this just a drill uh, will soldiers be in place to test the simulation capabilities? Are they wargaming some potential humanitarian emergency scenarios, uh, you know, responding to civil unrest? We did report uh, last year how the U.S. Department of Defense put out a Fed biz op request for an even more game-changing technology to predict societal unrest. They were looking to find some technology that would help them to track all human activities that can be measured. David Knight and Rob Dew gave a really in-depth presentation of a whole nother level of geospatial simulation and how this is tying into Jade Helm. They are mapping humans onto the geological map and they're looking at you at the individual level, every aspect of you. This is where the surveillance pays off for them. This is the geoint, the human domain. And when they say mastering the human domain, it's a very specific term of art from the military. And this has been an evolution. It started off as we're going to get real detailed maps of everything using satellite imagery. Well, now they have these detailed maps. Now they know who lives at what address. And now they're tying that in with your Facebook account, with your Twitter account, yes. with your YouTube videos. So they're measuring your political beliefs. And they can go up and down and go, well, he's kind of for us. This guy's against us. This guy's pulling the party line. This guy isn't. We need to put him on a watch list. And they're using all this for future operations. They're it, building an infrastructure of tyranny. Right. There's a... There's a legal infrastructure, things like the NDAA. There is a technical infrastructure, things like the capabilities to do dragnet surveillance. And then, of course, there's going to be a military and a law enforcement infrastructure. Those are merging. That's what you have to understand when they talk about the human domain, when they talk about uh, geo-intelligence, mapping this all together. They're multi-int, taking all of this, multiple intelligence sources, focusing it down to the micro level. They're very concerned, they say in these uh, in these uh, presentations, they're very concerned about one guy with a computer and a video camera because he can have worldwide impact. That's why they're looking at you 
as an individual. Exactly. And now I want to go to this first clip. This is Lieutenant Colonel Al DiLeonardo. This is from the Master of the Human Domain 2010 GeoInt Conference. And he used to run a fusion cell for U.S. Special Forces. Okay, so this is not some ordinary guy. Hey, just like that's the bottom of the Jade Helm logo, Master, Master of the, the Human, human domain. domain. The, the cell's objectives were to use as much non-traditional data uh, in, from an Intel standpoint. Uh, that means a lot of open source data. To go out and uh, do sense making of data so that not only your analysts, but your machine learning, your, your algorithms you could build would, in, would ultimately get to a, a predictive analysis cell. It's very, very hard to do, especially if you don't have all the data. Basically, old data is good data, new data is good data, and all data is good. Um, <laughs> I want it In all. the context of how I view <laughs> human terrain, yeah. somewhat controversial uh, in, some, in some aspects, is, is it's, it's, it's sociocultural information and it becomes, when used in, in intelligence purposes or for sense making for operations, when you bring it to, to the GeoInt, and I don't, I don't mean to be coy in saying that, when you bring GeoInt to it, uh, the, I, I think it becomes human terrain. You have to reach out and have human people terrain. using um, traditional, non-traditional non data sets as you see there That's further to the right. right there. There's multiple and ultimately, layers. as you bring in Esri products in GeoInt, you, you get outputs. Uh, as, as uh, you know, unclassified examples there of different layers that you would, you would make. It's that open source combined with the classified information, combined with the now, the old and the now, that, that begins to give you the layers you can make to, to make sense of what's really going on. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world and install a corporate fascist state. I had read their own books, discovered their own documents, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I transformed my body from the beautiful gift that God gave me into something more akin to Jabba the Hutt. It became an internet joke. But now I've started the transformation back to getting my body, my temple in shape. And I'm about to tell you how I did it. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. The problem was though, I'd never been a vitamin and mineral and supplement taker before, so I kept forgetting to do it. So after I'd lost over 60 pounds, just a month and a half ago, I asked the crew to take a photo of me in the same lighting to see what I could do in just a month and a half. This is what happened in just 45 days. We took this photo back there in the back office and I already lost a lot of weight, but I lost another six pounds with the Oxy Powder and the other products in InfoWarsLife.com. And this photo was just taken a few days ago. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Jakari Jackson here. We have a new report on our site. Student punished for bringing hot pepper to school. This is a young man out of Long Island, a 10th grader. Basically, his family likes to eat spicy food and, you know, his buddies thought they did too. I uh, stress thought. So he took a hot pepper to school, which is supposed to be, you know, one of the hottest that you can get, hottest you can buy. And uh, his buddies, they partook and they got sick. They went to the nurse's office and then the young man was disciplined. I believe the option he was facing was a day of suspension or two days of detention. 
And yes, I do believe this is overkill just in general, but then they went a step further and compare the hot peppers to this. Ghost pepper ads say they'll knock your socks off. The fad has spread to ghost pepper fast food fries, chili, and burgers. I eat hot food. My family eats hot food. It's just in all blood. The leans were mystified when they say the school likened the peppers to acid. I was told that it's equivalent to giving someone LSD. So there you have it. They said that bringing in a hot pepper was like bringing in LSD, which I most definitely disagree with. But you know, this is no surprise. We see these things all the time. In Chicago, they're not even allowing parents to pack the lunches anymore, saying that you know the school lunch program knows best, even though you can find many examples of the kids being very unhappy with that uh, program that Mrs. Obama is the figurehead for. You know, kids getting suspended for eating their Pop-Tarts the wrong way and uh, paper guns and playing with guns in their own front yard. And it goes on and on and on. And then earlier this week, we were talking about how the kids couldn't even, uh, you know, play in their own front yards with forts and tree houses. But, you know, that's a different matter outside the school. So this is the type of craziness we have to deal with uh, when you go to the public school system. I don't have any kids, but it makes me very fearful when, for when I do that they have to deal with this type of crap. So you can find more reports on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. We are here to announce the unsealing of charges and the arrests of individuals as part of our long-running investigation into bribery and corruption in the world of organized soccer. It must have been Let's Pretend We Work for the American People Day over at the Department of Justice. Newly appointed United States Attorney General Loretta Lynch dropped the hammer on World Cup soccer executives, issuing warrants for their arrest regarding the accumulation of over $150 million received by employing methods of racketeering, money laundering, and wire fraud. The head of the snake of this notorious soccer empire, Sepp Blatter, will of course remain untouched. Bread and circus historically serves as a huge distraction while the real criminals mingle in smoke-filled rooms holding the puppet strings of law enforcement that knows full well how they arrived at their position and where the real line is drawn. And so it goes, while the world watches soccer executives scurrying out like rats, no arrests, no warrants, nothing is done to the instigators of a far greater recent scandal that dealt punishing blows to the economy. Six banks have agreed to pay a combined five point eight billion to the Justice Department and other regulators. Five of them have pled guilty to criminal charges. Citicorp, JP Morgan, Barclays, and RPS are pleading guilty to charges tied to Forex manipulation while UBS is pleading guilty to interest rate manipulation charges. They have each agreed to a three-year corporate probation period. No scurrying executives, no impending jail time, just a laughable corporate probation period and fines. Who cares if executives of the most powerful banks colluded on rigging interest rates to make billions of dollars? The DOJ doesn't seem to mind that the Department of Defense spent $4 million on taxpayer-funded credit cards for personal charges, including $3.2 million of it at casinos and $100,000 at strip clubs by 646 government cardholders. While the average American family is seeing their health care costs skyrocket, the government throws away billions per year on waste and fraud. 
Those very same officials spending our taxpayer dollars will be right on board once the cash trough is replaced by digital currency, and that is coming sooner than most people think. A new age of economic totalitarianism, as highlighted by economist Martin Armstrong, is being discussed with zeal in secret meetings in London. Armstrong writes, This idea of eliminating cash first floated as the normal trial balloon to see how the people would take it. Kenneth Rogoff of Harvard University and William Buter, the chief economist at Citigroup, first launched the concept. Their claims have been widely hailed and their papers are now the foundation for the new age of economic totalitarianism that confronts us. Rogoff and Buter have laid the groundwork for the end of much of our freedom and one day will be considered the new Marx with hindsight. Considerations of their arguments have shown how governments can seize all economic power and destroy cash in the process of eliminating all rights. Physical paper money provides the check against negative interest rates, for if they become too great, people will simply withdraw their funds and hoard cash. Furthermore, paper currency allows for bank runs. Eliminate paper currency and what you end up with is the elimination of the ability to demand to withdraw funds from a bank. Our Defense Department squanders billions of taxpayer dollars. We wanted to know how much taxpayer money the government spends on these mysterious micro-purchases. So we found out. Our review found about $20 billion in just about the course of a year. We asked all of these other major federal agencies based here in D.C. for their micro-purchase shopping lists, and all refused. The same cadre of criminals that crashed the economy in 2008 were merely slapped on the old wrist after being caught rigging interest rates. And world governments are colluding to imprison the population with a digital currency that will enslave anyone that doesn't adhere to the impending New World Order system run by a group of elite scum that would become far more powerful than anything we have ever imagined in our worst nightmares. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP as it is called, is an all-out assault on our national sovereignty. It would unconstitutionally transfer legislative powers from the U.S. Congress, our state legislatures, our city and county governments, to multinational corporations and unaccountable international bureaucrats at the World Trade Organization. And Americans are still off in la la land thinking that the United States has the sovereignty. You know, the International Organization of Securities Commission regulates our market, and there's a Basel Commission on Banking and the uh, BIS, which uh, Bank of International Settlements. These, uh, the Federal Reserve is part of BIS. It regulates banking. You know, the International Criminal Court of Europe is, has jurisdiction over here in the United States. So the American people need to wake up that the, the sovereignty of the United States is gone. Global you know? government's not coming, it's here. Exactly. But twisting a few media moguls' arms to squeeze out bribes within an industry built on kicking a ball around a field is far more important? John Bound, Infowars.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. In today's world, abortion supporters routinely attend pro-life rallies and attempt to bully activists. If you have a problem and need a smelly group of commie devil worshippers, maybe you can call the A-Team. How many did I attack? 
adopt, I kill my kids. I kill my kids. So what let's race a fing male that doesn't stand for women's rights. Hey, we saw your Facebook with your communist hammer and sickle. That's pretty cool, man. Is that you on the Facebook? <laughs> uh, is there a Facebook page of you with a hammer and sickle? I don't think so. I don't hurt children. I love Satan. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get your abortions paid for? I pay for them. I thought really? you said free. Pay for it. Uh, upwards of 50. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you piece of <laughs> Bunch of misogynist mother <laughs> Take your male privilege somewhere else. How about you being aggressive? I'm being aggressive. Come on, and us! Excuse us! Wow! Watch out! Watch out. These, that's the guys that attack Alex Jones. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. the TPP is? TTP? No, what is TTP? The DPP? The what? TPP. I, I have no idea. <laughs> nope. I have no idea what that is. I ain't got a clue. I have no idea. Do any of y'all know what the heck the TPP is? TPP? Any of y'all? No. Uh, no. <sighs> Nobody knows what this is. I have no idea. The toilet paper products. The Texas Petroleum uh, people? The terrorist group? I don't know. And my name is a WWE Thunderstruck roller coaster. God bless you. Words of wisdom. I would honestly have no idea. Well, she it gives uh, information and and entertaining. Well, I I don't know exactly the words in 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 English. And that's what we call guessing. Probably some Congress thing about homeless men. Tyrannical people in power. Actually pretty close, actually pretty darn close. What that paper? The TPP or the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Trans, trans what? Pacific Partnership is a alliance of corporate global businesses that will then be able to, in any of the three segments, Asian Pacific, European or American will be able to bypass any or all of the laws and rules in that place and be able to do away with currency and due process. What do you think about that? Reminds me of what China does with their free market zones. Um, I would definitely have to hear a lot more information because this sounds a lot like a bit of conspiracy theory to me. I think it sounds a little bit far-fetched. <laughs> I'm being totally honest, I just don't care right now is that bad like i was just so unprepared for this uh i think that's awesome dude actually yeah i think it's awesome why um i mean because we need people like that i guess yeah i literally have no clue i've never i haven't watched news in a while man okay well there you have it he hasn't watched news none of us have we just vote for obama and pray that he doesn't smite us with his mighty hand of vengeance. Um, my first question for you is, which party do you uh, support? Third party, Libertarian. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, good. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure I didn't end up on some like anti-Obama or something, because it is Texas. Uh Yes, because that would be devastating. The TPP is fine. Just don't insult the Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Now, joining me now in studio is David Knight. And you are watching a very live edition of this InfoWars Nightly News. We have just received word the Biggs has landed. It's going to take him about 30 minutes to get to the site. Uh, then we're going to be Skyping in with him live. If everything goes well, um, I wanted to let you know that you can tweet us your questions on Twitter. Tweet them directly to our Twitter handles. I am Leanne McAdoo, 
uh, Do just created a Twitter today. You can follow him. That's Do's News with a Z at the end. And David Knight. Liberty Tarian. That's Liberty Tarian. Not libertarian, liberty. <laughs> liberty, Terry. And so we'll we'll have the guys pull those up so you can see for yourselves. Now, earlier I mentioned that Dennis Hastert, he was the former House Speaker, took responsibility, you know, took credit for helping to pass the Patriot Act in mm -hmm. 2001. He was so happy about that, helped get it reauthorized again in 2005. And now it is that very Patriot Act and the provisions that were in there uh, that were used to indict him on charges related to paying three and a half million dollars in hush money, which the the federal law enforcement was able to detect that using the Patriot Act. You know, it's kind of interesting that this guy kind of came out of nowhere and he was in place when September 11th came along when they needed somebody to push the Patriot Act through. And, you know, one of the things that we're going to see in this, and of course, uh, Alex Jones talked with Wayne Madsen a great deal about this today. We're going to have a clip about that uh, uh, towards the end of the, after this uh, segment. But they were talking about why is it that we have so many corrupt politicians and leadership of both parties? And of course, the answer is they need people who are compromised that they can use as puppets. And so then the other question becomes, why did they wait until now? To come after Dennis Hastert. Why he was in there the uh, longest time a Republican has ever been Speaker of the House for eight years. Uh, now they're coming after him. Uh, very interesting the timing that, uh, that this is coming up with. But I, I've got some other questions here too. Let, let's take a look at what they're really coming after him for because, you know, we ought to also ask the question how did a guy go from being uh, a basketball, I'm sorry, a wrestling coach in a high school? How did he go from that? to becoming a multimillionaire who could pay millions of dollars to a blackmailer because that's what happened here. Right. We should look at the obscene concentration of power and money in Washington and what this tells us. Of course, we see it with the Clintons. We see it with the Bushes. We see it with Obama himself. This is a guy who was uh, had never done anything in his life except be a community organizer. He was selected by the elites and put into place just like Dennis Hastert. And so the question about this becomes, and we'll talk about what the charges are, uh, but it's really, you know, he, he got this cash, they're saying legally, mm -hmm. but now he is facing a very long time in prison for cash that he picked up legally. But let's first talk about some of these charges that have come up. There was an interesting uh, fine, I think it was The Hill that found this uh, uh, last year on uh, C-SPAN. Dennis Hastert was on talking about his speakership and it was open lines, and they had this creepy call. This was put out by Drudge. Let's, let's go to that clip right here. Okay, you don't have that clip just yet. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go back to that clip, but basically he was a high school coach, as I mentioned, wrestling coach before uh, he became a uh, politician. Okay, got that clip, let's run that clip. Noy is our next call, here's Bruce, uh, Independent Line, hi. Hello, Danny. Hey, how are you doing? Pretty good. Remember me from Yorkville? Bruce, you're on. Go ahead with yeah, your question, Carmen. <laughs> I think he's gone. <laughs> so this just guy just calls in up. To troll him there. Remember he just calls up. Yorkville? Yeah, you remember me from Yorkville because that's the name of the high school, the town, the high school. Mm. Uh, evidently, he was paying this guy, had agreed to pay this individual $3 million, Leanne. And after he paid out about $1.7 million, he stopped. So maybe this guy was kind of firing a shot across the bow at that point. Now we know that there are multiple charges. This was leaked out today by uh, people with the Justice Department, the FBI, the ones investigating this. They called up uh, the LA Times and they were telling them this is uh, allegations of sexual misconduct with children that he had in high school, underage uh, people that he had in high school. And so it's interesting that they're pulling this out and they're shopping this around because that's not what they're going to send him to jail for. Right. The statute of limitations has long since uh, gone away. That was uh, 35 years or more because he became a politician in the 19, in about 1980, 81. So these charges would be 35 years old. There's a statute of limitations. So he's not going to go to jail for that. But they're creating this whisper campaign right, right now to discredit him and to keep people from asking why is he going to be going to jail? Because the reason he's going to be going to jail, and that's what we want to talk about, is this structuring charge. Right. This is something that he helped to create as part of the Patriot Act. And he's going to be hoisted by his own petard right into jail because it looks like they could get as much as 500 
and 30 years against him. They're saying wow. they're going to take each of these structuring charges. What he did to pay this uh, blackmailer off, first he took out 15 uh, d- uh, withdrawals mm-hmm. of $50,000. And again, it's his money, okay? But they, that was reported to the FBI as being something that was suspicious. So they began an investigation. They talked to him and he said, well, I just don't trust the banks. That's, I'm keeping the money. I'm just, uh, you know, it basically wasn't really any of their business why he was taking this money out. At that point, though, he decided he was going to do it secretly. So then he started taking out withdrawals at less than $10,000 so that it wouldn't get noticed, except that he'd already been noticed. So they, they started uh, monitoring his account. He did that 106 times. For each of those, they say that they're going to charge him up to a maximum of five years for each of those accounts. So wow. that would be 530 years. Now, consider this, Leanne. If he had been convicted of sexually molesting a minor, in Illinois, he would have gotten between six to 30 years, 530 years for structuring. If he had robbed a bank, because this is his money that he's withdrawing, if he'd gone right. in and robbed a bank, he would have gotten six to 55 years. The upper limit would be if it was armed robbery and he hurt people. Wow. Okay. But for taking out his own cash mm-hmm. and not filing the paperwork with the government, this law that he helped to pass. Yeah could possibly send him to jail for 530 years. And and so we have to really ask when we're looking at this, they're going to try to get you focused on his sexual perversion. Right. And that's that's the the Department of Justice made the decision to not even include that in in the indictment to specify his past. He had previous bad acts. Right. But they just but they went around and spent the day putting that in the media's ear that in quotes, Hastert paid a man to conceal sexual misconduct while the man was a student at the high school where Hastert taught. So they're wanting everyone to just say, oh, throw him in jail. He's mm-hmm. a pervert. What an awful person. Where, like you're saying, uh, it's actually what's happening with his own money. Where if you were to, um, if he was to have decided some something like this with his attorney, where they would have paid this person off to, to, you know, to not take it to court or something like that, that's perfectly legal. Yeah. That's a legal thing to do, yeah. but because he did the yeah. structuring process, yes, that's exactly. where you get into trouble. Exactly, because of he the could Patriot have done, Act. Absolutely, and, and I think it's outrageous that the statute of limitations has run out on the sexual molestation of minors. I don't think there ought to be one, but mm-hmm. nevertheless, that's what the law is. But we see that these laws, these structuring laws, they began a long time ago, and they basically have created an entire industry around this. And we're going to talk about what. Uh, an assistant attorney general said to the anti-money laundering conference, there's an entire industry within the banks. And basically, you need to understand that although you may think that Dennis Hastert deserves this, and he does, he deserves to go to jail uh, for what he's done. He doesn't deserve to go to jail for taking his own cash out of the bank. And you need to understand that uh, if you support that, you're in line to have that done to you as well. We've got a couple of cases just to make it... uh, just, just so that you understand and see what, how this works out for individuals. Of course, we've had people who uh, get their, their cash stolen from them constantly when they're stopped on the road by the highway patrol. Mm-hmm. We just had a recent case of a guy who was traveling cross country. He had cash on him. He was going to California to start a new business. And the TSA on the uh, trains uh, confiscated that cash. So that is civil asset forfeiture. Now, that is bad enough. But then it gets even worse with structuring because what's bad about civil asset forfeiture, they say it's civil, so we don't have to give you due process. We don't have to charge you with a crime. We don't have to convict you in court in a trial. We can just merely say that your property was involved in committing this crime and we charge your property with criminal action, this inanimate object, and seize that property or they call it forfeit that property is the way that they put it. So we see that this has affected people in a variety of ways. But we've seen in North Carolina, just within the last week and a half, two cases come to light of a uh, one uh, attorney from uh, the Department of Justice that's uh, based in North Carolina going after two small businesses and taking all of the money out of their accounts. In one case, it was a convenience store. They took $107,000 out of this man's convenience store. In the other case, uh, it was a business. They'd been in business for 30 years. Mm. And because of money that they were uh, withdrawing, they said uh, that it, it was structured. Very subjective, the way they do this. They said it was uh, structured. They confiscated all of their property. This is the way it's been reported. Now, the, the first guy, the uh, convenience store owner, Lyndon McClellan, had a bank account for his convenience store. It was seized by the IRS. And at first, he didn't understand why. The IRS said that it 
suspected that he was violating federal structuring laws. Do you understand that? It suspected. It yeah, didn't he wasn't find. even charged with the crime. That's right. They had no evidence. They just suspected mm -hmm. that he was structuring deposits. Now, if you've got a convenience store and you're collecting cash, uh, when you deposit the, the cash, that may not be any criminal intent whatsoever. And they merely look at the uh, amount of money that you put in or the amount of money that you take out, and they subjectively determine that you are trying to avoid going over that $10,000 limit. And of course, if you've got a business, if you're anyone who's ever had a business, you understand if you're dealing in cash, that's not a lot of money. That's not, that is a lot of money for us as individuals. It's not a lot of money for a, a, a business to do that. Now, this is what the attorney, uh, the, the federal attorney, U.S. attorney Steve West said to McClellan. He said, don't go public. He said, this will only make things worse for you. He said, it just ratchets up feelings within the agency. Get that? In other yeah, words, yeah. don't make us mad at you. Don't go public because we'll get mad at you. So he says, here's the deal. I'll return 50% of the money and this will stop this right now. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. He went public and the public was outraged about that. They've now returned that money, that $107,000 to him, which basically would put him out of business. That was his entire bank account that he had for his business. Then we find a few days later, the same U.S. attorney, Steve West in North Carolina, going after another small business. This is a small business out of Raleigh, North Carolina, Tom Bednar and his wife. They said they were looking, they had a bank account uh, for their three decade old business, 30 years old, Marla Enterprises. They were amazed to find that the bank account was empty. The bank called them and wanted to know how they were gonna cover $18,000 in outstanding checks that they had written. So you have to understand the cash flow involved in a business, the amount of money is much larger than you're going to see as an individual. That's why $115,000 is not that much. They just wrote $18,000 worth of checks. Now, in this case, it wasn't the IRS, it was the Secret Service that seized the money, but it was done by the same US attorney. He said, we got no warning, nothing at all. And so uh, this guy did the same thing to them. Again, he said, I'll give you back half of it. And they said, no, <laughs> we don't owe anything. We didn't commit a crime. We didn't do anything. And he said, okay, okay, I'll give you all of it back except for $10,000. And they said, absolutely not. This is what he had to say. This is what the business owner had to say. He said, my wife and I have run a business our entire lives. It's hard earned legitimate money. Why should I give it up and let it be stolen from us, whether it's $1 or $100? Exactly right. He committed no crime. This is a criminal government. And this is the kind of government that Dennis Hastert created right. that is still with us, that is still abusing everybody. And then get this, even though they have had some minor reforms of this, they had the uh, Civil Asset Forfeiture Reform Act that was just recently passed, under that, these people who have had uh, charges uh, made against them by their banks, they've had legal fees that they've had to go through to try to get their money back that was stolen from them by the U.S. government. These people are entitled to get back $25,000 in legal fees. The government just said, we're not going to do that. I mean, this is the law. This is, a re this is a law that was passed, Civil Asset Forfeiture Reform Act, that was passed to stop these very kind of abuses from attorneys uh, that work for the U.S. government, like Stephen West in North Carolina, and he just simply says, no, we're not going to obey that law. They pick which laws they want to, uh, to obey, which ones they don't. They violate the Constitution with all of them, and they're stealing people's money right out of their accounts. It's right. absolutely and who they amazing. want to come after and prosecute, because obviously yes. the banks are too big to jail. They yes. won't come after them when they're... Well, and, and let's, let's understand, exactly, that's, that's exactly the point. Look at the largest money laundering case ever, HSBC. They were fined $1.9 billion. Again, that sounds like a lot of money, but not for HSBC. Do you understand how much that fine is? And, and let me make it clear, HSBC really was engaged in criminal activity. They've come to us and they've said, we need to have this surveillance of your accounts, we need to have this massive uh, system of reporting from the banks spying on you and sending reports to us all the time. We need to have that because this might be a, you might be doing something, moving cash around to launder money for drug cartels or for terrorist groups. HSBC was 
laundering money for drug cartels, for terrorist groups. There's no question about it. They got caught red-handed. They're the kind of person, or kind of entity that this law was written for, trying to stop this. Not for people who are hardworking small businessmen who just happen to be depositing money without any regard, uh, not trying to break the law, not understanding even what the law is, and yet the government takes their entire account. They took $1.9 billion from HSBC. That was less than one month's profit for that company, right. less than one month's profit. If you look at that on an annual basis, that's 8%. That, if you look at that as a tax for them doing business illegally with drug cartels and money launders, okay, that 8% tax, if you wanna call that, Terrorist. the money laundering tax, that's less than their income tax. Of course, they don't pay any income tax anyway, but as less than a corporation would pay, less yeah. than an individual would pay, none of you out there are paying 8% income tax. And uh, so they get away with an 8% tax, even though they were guilty as could be with this. Right. And that's the other thing is just not pointing out that the real crime should be here with Hastert. He entered in Congress with a net worth of no more than $270,000 and then exited Congress with somewhere between $4 million and $17 million. Same thing with the Clintons. That's a crime. Exactly. Same thing with the Clintons. Same thing with the Obamas. Okay. Uh, of course, Hillary says when she got out of Congress, they were flat broke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the uh, but so that's why they had to up their speaking fees. Yeah. Yeah. That's the real problem. And I don't think you can stop it. See, campaign finance reform isn't going to get there. Uh, this is something that these guys are getting after they get elected. The problem is not campaign finance reform. Unfortunately, the problem is that there is so much power in Washington that it is a black hole for criminals. OK, it's a black hole for these type of people like Dennis Hastert, who they know doesn't have much sense. I mean, this is a guy that the the uh, the FBI's come to him and ask him why he took out uh, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and fifty thousand dollar increments. Mm -hmm. And he lies about it. And then he starts trying to uh, structure his deposits. And he should know better because he passed the law. Exactly. OK, if he doesn't know what's in the law, maybe he didn't read it after he passed it. Right. You know, he didn't do <laughs> what Pelosi did, did right? Pass it to find it. Yeah. Yeah. But of all people, he should know what's in it. So he's not a very bright bulb. OK, mm -hmm. but he's somebody who's crooked. He's corrupt. Somebody that they can control. OK, so. Well, and he's obviously been a sociopath and a predator, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. from from his early days as a coach. Yes. So there's a lot we can learn from this, but I hope people will understand the the legal corruption, the fallacies underlying civil asset forfeiture and structuring as a crime. Now, Rand Paul and uh, other individuals have co-sponsored this. I, I can't remember the co-sponsor in the House. They have sponsored now twice what they call the FAIR Act. The FAIR Act would stop civil asset forfeiture and it would stop the uh, the crime, quote unquote, of structuring if it's not being used to hide something that is illegal activity like HSBC. So uh, hopefully that will go through. People need to understand what this is. And let me give you something from Woody Guthrie. This is the guy who, uh, you know, wrote uh, this land is your land, this man land is mine. He said, as I as through this world, I've wondered, I've seen lots of funny men. Some will rob you with a six gun, some with a fountain pen. OK, Dennis Hastert is that kind of man. Mm. This attorney, Stephen West, this U.S. attorney who is robbing small businesses throughout central North Carolina is that kind of man. He is nothing but a thief with a fountain pen and he's not obeying the law. He won't even obey the reform of this unconstitutional act. Well, and all I can say is hopefully that with this happening right there in Congress, as they're trying to figure out if they're going to reauthorize the Patriot Act or not, everyone there can can sort of see that they're not above the law or that they exactly. might, you know. Hey, guys, this is Rob Dew. I just wanted to give you all a quick update on uh, what's going on. We just got contact from Joe Biggs. He's acquired a his rental car and is on his way to the site. So I would say 30, 35 minutes he'll be there depending on traffic, what it's like. We're about two hours ahead here in Texas, so it's about 8 o'clock now. So it's, what, 6 o'clock there. And uh, so just to give everybody an update out who's watching us uh, online on the YouTube stream and on the Infowars.com forward slash show stream and on PrisonPlanet.tv, all the streams uh, out there. We appreciate everybody watching. Uh, Joe Biggs is on his way. We're going to, as soon as he gets there, we'll you know get a uh, rundown from him of what he sees, what's going on. And I do believe he's um, going to be open carrying his head down Provectus rifle. So, 
Okay, yeah, we'll be able to see it. Hopefully not in action. The Second Amendment there. So yeah. just uh, give you that quick update. Uh, David, bre- great breakdown there on the on the real hidden truth of this Dennis Hastert thing. It's, it's got a lot of angles to it, but I think you've really nailed it. Well, Rob, uh, I hope that with this, uh, you know, they're still talking about the Patriot Act, as, as Leanne mentioned, and I hope that uh, people will keep this in mind. People don't understand what's going on. We just saw that with a report from Rex Jones. They don't know what the TPP is. If you asked any of these people what structuring is, they wouldn't know. Businesses don't know. They don't understand how the government is robbing us, and that's really a big part of the problem. Well, and they think they're above the problem that they're creating. Yes, for the they think it's not going to happen to them. But look, mm-hmm. no matter, you don't have to have a business. People are getting their cash stolen from them as they're traveling in cars, traveling on trains across this country. Uh, whatever you're carrying, whatever the amount is, it's a big amount to you. Right. And actually, people who don't have a lot of money are really in a worse position than someone who does, who has a business that they can use for collateral because they can hire lawyers to get this back. You don't get a public defender to help you recover your cash when they seize it with civil asset forfeiture because they say it's not a a criminal act, so you don't get a public defender even. So if it's a small amount of money and you're poor, even if you want to do this on the on the point of principle, it isn't. you're not going to be able to do it because you're not going to have the money to challenge these people in court. And also, too, there with the, the veiled threats that the, the police are issuing to people that they're confiscating their money. Um, you were mentioning that they were kind of also sending out those same threats to the bankers themselves. Absolutely. They are, they are going after individuals. They're going after small um, businesses. They let the big criminals, the big banks like HSBC, who are actually doing criminal money laundering, they let them go with very small penalty. But they're threatening the small banks, just like everything else. So the small banks are going to come after them. And so there was this uh, uh, conference of uh, anti-money laundering uh, individuals, anti-money laundering and financial crime conference. And this was back in uh, March. And this was the assistant attorney general, uh, Caldwell, who went and addressed them. And what he did was he used this occasion to threaten the small banks. And he says uh, that we're, uh, he also talks about a pro- a, a process where they're going after uh, kleptocracy asset recovery initiative, carry. I guess it's kind of like cash and carry, you know, where they go after uh, a foreign government. They say, well, we determined that this foreign government we think is corrupt. So we're going to call it a kleptocracy. And we're going to say that wherever we can get to any of their assets, we're going to just steal them. Okay. Now, of course, they're not going to give it back to the people. They're going to keep it. The U.S. government is going to keep it. They're going to keep it just like law enforcement keeps the uh, stuff that they uh, steal. But that's the whole point. The irony of this is that our government is the biggest kleptocracy on the planet. It is a, it is a rule by thieves. That's what these people are doing throughout this. But I want to I want to read to you what he said to these bankers. He said, when the criminal division, that's what he represents. And these are the people that will be uh, uh, trying Dennis Hastert. He said, when the criminal division evaluates the company's compliance policy during an investigation, we don't only look at how the policy reads on paper. We also look at messages that are conveyed to employees, including in-person meetings, emails, telephone calls, compensation. In other words, this is a full-on East German surveillance state, okay, where they're going to look at everything about your business. They're going to uh, complete surveillance of everything. It's not going to be like the privileged people like uh, Hillary Clinton who say they've got a private email server and you can't see that. No, they're going to come in and look at everything in these banks. They say, we look at it as a whole, a company that's meaningfully stressed compliance. Have they, or if they're faced in a conflict between compliance and profits, does the company choose profits? In the anti-money laundering and sanctions context in particular, effective compliance requires more. And I'd like to highlight a few points. First, you need to know your customer. In other words, spy incessantly on your customer. Constantly report everything about your customer. And he says, it's not enough just to uh, be filing these uh, reports. We want you to do more, more reports, and we want you to contact law enforcement completely. They say part of this is information sharing, okay? And he says, the second thing is, if this is a foreign bank and they have a U.S. branch, then this foreign bank that happens to have a branch somewhere in the United States, they need to spy on all of their customers in that other country. So if they've got a, uh, if it's an Irish bank, uh, they want them to spy on all the Irish customers. I know this is an international show. We've got a lot of people who watch us from around the world. Here's the point, folks. If you don't live in the United States, make sure you don't do business with a bank that has a branch in the United States. Because if you do, 
The federal government wants that Irish bank, even if you never set foot in the U.S., they want that Irish bank to report everything about you, anything that is suspicious. And then if some federal agency wants to assume that you did something suspicious, they will confiscate your cash, even though you never set foot in the United States. That's the kind of kleptocracy we have. You want a real kleptocracy? It's right here in Washington. Wow. And he says the, the majority of financial institutions file suspicious activity reports, but we encourage those institutions to consider whether to take more action, specifically alert law enforcement authorities about the problem. They may be able to seize funds or initiate an investigation or take other proactive steps. And he goes on to say, you know, you might think this is going to cost you a lot of money to hire all these anti-money laundering personnel. But he said it, it may not be a profit center, but an investment will pay off because if you don't do it, we will come after you is essentially what he's saying to them. Wow. So okay. you're investing in. Yeah, not it's being investigated. It's a protection racket. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. these people are nothing but gangsters. Look at the way this uh, U.S. attorney, Stephen West, comes to these people. You know, he steals their money. He has no reason to steal their money. And then he says, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll give you back half of it. Don't get you know? us ratcheted up. No. Yeah. Don't talk to the press. Don't don't tell anybody about this. I'll give you half of it back. It's like you stole this from me. I didn't do anything wrong. And I'm glad <sighs> these two businesses went out with this. I suspect uh, we just saw these two things pop up all at once. We saw the second one pop up in North Carolina. I suspect the re only reason we saw the second one pop up is because of the publicity that the first one got. And I think that now the local news in North Carolina is looking for this. If we make this go national, I bet this is going to be popping up everywhere. This is standard right. operating procedure. As, as bad as this is with this particular attorney, Stephen West, this is not something that is just coming out of that one North Carolina office. This is national and it is international, as I just pointed out. They will steal your money if you live in another country, never set foot in the United States, if your bank not even a U.S. bank that you're dealing with, but if your foreign bank has a branch in the United States, they can use that to steal your money. Wow, that's unbelievable. I didn't know about that yeah. aspect of the deal at all. And it's important, like like you have mentioned, what they really want everyone to focus on is the sexual indiscretions of this man's past. And of course, you know, he's the embodiment of everything that's sleazy there in Washington uh, with that, but that's not what they came after him for. And you the know, issue we, here is the over-criminalization. Exactly. We saw that with Waco, if you remember. When they went into Waco, of course, this was something that was already staged. Uh, they had uh, the press. They called the press to come and watch what they were going to do. The key word to kick it off was showtime when they atta attacked the uh, Branch Davidians. But when all of this went south and everything blew up in their face, what they did was they didn't talk about any federal firearms uh, issues that they were coming after him for. OK, this was the ATF. They were only coming after him. They only had the jurisdiction to come after him for some kind of a firearms uh, problem. They didn't talk about that whatsoever. And of course, it was nothing again except some paperwork charges, OK, that he had not paid. What they did was they smeared him with allegations of child abuse, child sex abuse. And when I looked at that, it's like, give me a break. That's not why this happened. Right. You know, it was hard to get information back in that day. We didn't have uh, internet. We had to rely on uh, uh, just, just billboards that were passing things around. So it was difficult to get information. But when you saw that, you knew there was something wrong. When the government was vilifying these people saying, this is all about child abuse. It's like, if it was about child abuse, the ATF wouldn't have been there with an armed raid. They wouldn't have called the press to come in there. It was simply a, a beard. And so now they're doing that again. They're trying, they don't want you to focus on structuring. They don't want you to wake up and understand what's going on with civil asset forfeiture before it happens to you or your family. But you need to wake up. You need to understand what's going on because it will happen to you. It will happen to people right. that you know if we don't stop this. This is a criminal kleptocracy. Thieves. And of course, these thieves uh, were put into place by people like Dennis Hastert. So he deserves what he gets. But we don't deserve to be abused by his perversion of the legal system and that's the key thing yeah i mean that's just you nailed it right there with that i was it makes me want to leave this country but where would we go i mean it seems as though it's yeah they'll steal your money no matter what country yeah, you're in <laughs> exactly <laughs> so well now on the alex jones show today we had wayne madsen come on and he was actually the investigative journalist who broke this Hastert blackmail sex scandal story in 2006. Nine years ago. Yeah, he was the first yeah. one to come out about it. Of course, you know, conspiracy theorists and, and all of that. Uh, but here, 
you know, years later, um, Vindicate That's what they call the anybody who's an investigative journalist. You're called a conspiracy theorist. If your investigation uncovers criminal or embarrassing information about people in power, you're a conspiracy theorist. That's their, their pushback. Right. And that's kind of what you're supposed to do as an investigator is yeah. you're supposed to look at what's underneath the service and what's not, you know, what they're not just telling you right there. If you follow it wherever it leads, that's, uh, that's what they'll do to protect themselves. <laughs> well, let's take a look at this report from Wade Madsen on the Alex Jones show today. Okay, uh, on September 30th, 2006, I, I first reported on the web, my website uh, about this past misconduct of Dennis Hastert. Remember, he was Speaker of the House, third in line under presidential succession to the presidency. If I can just read this, because it's very interesting, this, this uh, background of Hastert and how he got to his, his position. Uh, what I reported on September 30th, 2006, nine years ago, congressional sources told me that Hastert, while working from 1964 to 1980 as a popular history government teacher and wrestling coach at Yorkville High School in Yorkville, Illinois, uh, a suburb of Chicago, was the subject of persistent rumors about inappropriate contact with male members of his high school wrestling team. The culture of the times usually resulted in such alleged behavior being covered up by public and parochial school authorities. However, the rumors were enough for his Yorkville constituency to reject him when he ran for an open seat in the Illinois House of Representatives in 1980. However, Hastert lucked out when another sitting Republican House member who represented the three-seat district had a stroke and declined to run for re-election. The GOP machine bosses selected Hastert as the replacement candidate. Hastert served in Springfield from 80 to 86, six years to make the transformation from wrestling coach with that cloud surrounding himself to politician. In 1986, Hastert received another unexpected promotion after incumbent Republican U.S. Representative John Groberg was nominated for the, by the GIP, GOP for a second term. He was diagnosed with terminal cancer and fell into a coma. The Illinois Republican Convention selected Hastert as a replacement on the ticket, a virtual election of the U.S. House in the strongly Republican district. So that that's how Hastert got in to the House of Representatives. He 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 was rejected because of the rumors uh, surrounding him uh, him as a high school wrestling coach. I heard from people in that particular town, Yorkville, and nearby that Hastert uh, was caught uh, uh, with you know inappropriate sexual contact with underage male members of his high school wrestling team. He and isn't it funny? He only got into these uh, political positions because either somebody had a stroke or somebody died of cancer. I remember uh, walk uh, walking with um, uh, a friend of mine, and we encountered uh, Charlie Rangel back in those days in in the uh, rotunda. And and we, you know, if you're with somebody and they kind of look at something and it's like an inside, they have some inside information. Well, here comes Hastert walking across the rotunda with a uh, a young, uh, very young uh, male page. Obviously, you, you see members of Congress with their senior staffers, chief of staff all the time. But this was very unusual. And I noticed a wry smile on Congressman Rangel's face like he knew something. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with, with you know, the neuro linguistics on that one said everything. And um I actually had the opportunity of running into Hastert after he was speaker at the GOP convention in 2000 in Tampa. There was kind of a, 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 a people traffic jam in the um, uh, arena, and uh, he was standing right next to me, and I looked at him, and I said, How, how's retired life treating you, uh, Mr. Speaker, using the honorific? Uh, uh, I know he wasn't speaker, but it's the D.C. thing. Um, and he said... Um, he said, good. And then he said, I, oh, I did, I forgot your name. And I told him and the guy turned pale and said, I got to get back to my Illinois delegation. So clearly he recalled the reports that I had on his misconduct back in 06. Oh, you're definitely on target.
I want to talk about a perfect storm today. And the perfect storm I'm going to discuss is a really good perfect storm. I have prayed, literally, to be able to find a high quality gun sponsor that is affordable and that is extremely well made and effective that I can promote to my audience. About six months ago, we get contacted by Head Down Firearms, hdfirearms.com. Low cost compared to competitors. Super high quality, super lightweight, super accurate, and the experts salivate over it and love it. It is a perfect storm. Uh, it is a true diamond that we found. It's amazing, and so I feel so good about fully endorsing Head Down Firearms, hdfirearms.com. Check them out today, and then go look at the dozens and dozens of third-party reviews. Go and watch the videos of folks stacking this up against rifles that cost a thousand dollars more. Their entire line of 556, 308, and their accessories are simply amazing. And it's designed by battle-hardened vets that know what they wish they would have had. Right after InfoWars got two of the head-down rifles in, we went out to my buddy Shane Steiner's ranch and had a fantastic time. Now what I have to say so far based off looking at this, this is a much lighter weight uh, M4, AR-15, whatever you want to call it. This is a great weapon. I mean, I like how the railing system is for your hands, how you can get in. It's very comfortable. If I want to go in here and do some close quarters and come around, this is an amazing, amazing gun. I wish I had something like this when I was in combat. I mean, I'm telling you right now, an M4 like this would save a lot of lives if the military would just pick this up and put it army wide marine wide navy this is a good gun this is something that's stable reliable lightweight and very easy to use well this here is another model of the uh, provectus line and uh, it's a little more heavy duty it's really well put together nothing rattles uh, it's got this enlarged charging handle it's ambidextrous i've been playing with the trigger it's about a three and a half four pound it's got a real crisp break to it and uh, again, like I've, I have some, some custom rifles at home that I've spent large amounts of money trying to get a, a, a trigger that has that type feel. Joe Biggs here at the office had the idea of getting a mannequin, uh, wrapping an ISIS flag around it and sticking a clown wig on top of it uh, with some tannerite and blowing it up. And the results were somewhat spectacular. All right, ready, safety off, let's go. In my view, guns are an incredible financial investment as well, but they're also an investment in the future liberty of this country. I'm proud of the fact that the United States is the most armed country in the world, and I want to make sure we keep it that way. We're not gelded, castrated slaves. We don't live in North Korea. We don't live in communist China. We don't live in Fidel Castro's Cuba. We live in the United States of America that has been exceptional, that has been amazing, and that we've been losing ground to the globalist, and now the tide is starting to turn. The spirit of 1776 is rising. And I'm telling you, the spirit of 1776 lives at Head Down Firearms, hdfirearms.com. Or you can visit headdownproducts.com. That's headdownproducts.com. Welcome back. You are watching us live on the InfoWars Nightly News. It's about 8.17 p.m. here in Austin, Texas. We can go to a live shot now. I think we've got some aerial footage coming in from Fox News. Uh, they're out there at Phoenix, and Joe Biggs has landed. I'm not sure. Has he arrived there yet, guys? Or do we have an ETA on Joe Biggs? On He's route. still en route. Okay. Well, you can see there's a, a pretty large crowd gathering there now, and I guess the, the prayer time would have started just a couple of minutes ago. So um, joining me now in studio, Rob Dew. Mm -hmm. And 
I would just like to point out that you started your Twitter account today. I mean, like I finally fell into the pit in epic yeah, troll it. fashion. You started a Twitter account specifically to troll someone. I I, I just sent Why? one uh, tweet out about this, and it was in response to an article that one Matt Visor wrote. Uh, one reporter searched for talk show host Alex Jones. And it was very interesting. I got this email. If you guys scroll down to the bottom, you can see my first tweet was about five or six hours ago. tweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I saw this guy's email. I contacted him. I said, hey, you know, let's see if we can work something out. Alex does not have a lot of time. When does he get here in the morning? He gets here about 20 minutes before the show and he's looking at news. Right. And then he's done. He does some business around here, wraps a few things up, and then he's off meetings, doing other things. He doesn't sit around, hang out in the office, playing video games, tweeting, doing all this other stuff. <laughs> he's not here. Um, you know, he's working like he works from his house all the time, right. but he's not physically here that much as, as much as he, as he used to be. When I first started, we would be up here till eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, shooting videos, editing, doing all kinds he's of stuff. He's earned the right to not have to be here 15, 16 exactly. hours a day. He's, <laughs> at, he's got a good crew underneath him. Uh, we, we're all, we're pretty much self-contained. He throws us, you know, some, some leads when we need them go in this direction, go in this direction. Um, so I said, okay, I'll see what I can do to set it up. And I talked to Alex and he said, you know, see if he'll just come on the show live. Cause I'm really not going to have time to talk to him today. Well, and this is when all that stuff was going down where they were like, Oh, Alex Jones didn't show up to right. our interview and this all that. The net, pretty much two days after. Yeah. Uh, when he, when, uh, was it ABC Stephanopoulos? Some uh, Sunday show. Yeah. They didn't, they weren't going to do it live or they were going to do it live. And then they said not to all that stuff. And, so I, I'm like, yeah, you know, he, he put the call out to mainstream media. Here's a mainstream media guy from the Boston Globe, a writer. I went and checked him out. Uh, you know, he writes mainly about coffee and kind of social stuff. So I'm like, wow, I guess they're, but he, I think he went on the campaign trail with Romney. So he does have some political things. And so they sent him here to do some Jade Helm stuff. And I guess he just assumed we all sit around and wait for mainstream media to contact us for interviews. That's what we live for, which we don't. Right. And, but I was happy to, you know, try to see if we could work about to get him here. And I said, you know, how about this? How about you come on live? You do the interview. I think this will be, this will be something good for you. This will probably get your name out there a lot more than, you know, where you're at now at the Boston Globe. It's a little small uh, newspaper. And so at first he said, yes, he could do it. And so I sent him the address and we don't put out our address that much. Uh, that's something that we do keep private because otherwise we would get Tons of people, people here trying to give us, day. give us the documents. Don't and come here. <laughs> there's ways to do that. And it's mainly yeah. through email. If you ever want to get in touch with me, I usually I have my email down on my name key. It's robd at infowars.com. I'm more than happy to communicate with you via email. Um, also, and now I have my Twitter account. So you can <laughs> send me stuff that way. But <laughs> I read a lot of emails and I do respond to a lot of emails. Um, I don't respond to every email. And I don't read every email. I probably have 100,000 emails I've never read in my inbox. We get thousands of emails every day. In total insanity. But I do what I can. And um, so with that, we tried to get him over here. Then, then he hemmed and hawed and said, oh, well, I talked to another editor. And they said, no, I can't do it. I said, well, don't come by the office then because we don't want to have a reporter here that we have to hang out with and babysit while we're trying to do our other jobs. You know, if you look at the command post in there, when they're doing the live show, there's six people working in there. And that's just the people running the show. We got writers. We have the guys um, run the warehouse. We have graphics design people. We have hot tech people, computer tech people. We've got the nightly news division and the reporters. It, and then you got customer service. It's a big operation here. Very big operation. So, you know, I said, don't come here. And, and, and then I went on the air and told Alex that, hey, he's not coming. We, we thought he would be here. Now he's not coming. And Alex got mad, said, that's it. We're done with him. Cause this guy wanted to also have a phone interview. I said, you, I said, if you come in and do the one hour or 30 minutes with Alex, we'll give you a phone interview. No problem. After the show, you could talk to Alex when he's going to a meeting. He said, he's got to be in a meeting at three 30 while he's driving there. He'll talk to you. And he could have had that, but he wanted to neg on his showing up here to do the interview. The first interview. So Jones said, that's it. We're done. Which he even mentions in his article. It, but well, he kind of makes he, it look he, like, yeah, I'm, like I'm the jerk who, who's putting it out on him. Yeah. You know, he, didn't, and, he didn't tell him right away. Right. So it got all misconstrued. And well, and when I, when I got his, his tweet or his, his text, I texted him back after I got it. I didn't have, once he said he was going to do it, I put my phone down. I'm doing a million other things in the office, getting ready for the show. It could be printing something. I even bring Alex coffee sometimes. I mean, whatever needs to be done, I'm here to do it. Everybody's here to, to, to make this, you know, push this boat forward. 
And uh, so then he tried to make it look like we had staged this thing, which we didn't. Alex didn't know. The word did not get back to him that he was coming on. Because I called Alex after he said that he would do it and said, hey, he's coming on. His name's Matt Visor. He works for the Boston Globe. And Alex immediately went into this Beastie Boys thing over the phone. It was kind of funny. And I laughed. And then he did it on the show. And it was so funny. He even writes about it in his article. So... I hey guys, I hate to interrupt you, but uh, Joe yeah. Biggs is uh, out in the field right now, and uh, he'd like to ah. uh, say hello. There we go. Well, let's go to Joe Biggs right now. Joe, can you hear us? All right, hold on. All right. Joe Biggs is on location in Phoenix at the Islamic uh, Community Center. Just getting there, and yeah, I'm uh, walking up right now. Okay. Give me a second while. I'm yeah. Hey, okay. we'll we'll come back to you, Joe. We'll just letting people know that you're on your way there. And uh, get settled in, and, and then uh, we'll have you pop back in when you're ready to talk. But we do have our reporter on the ground. He was in Cleveland this morning. He was actually sending me texts at, at 9 o'clock this morning going, should I stay here in Cleveland? Because we were, originally we were going to do an Al Sharpton protest that night. Um, because things didn't, actually the people of Cleveland didn't decide to go riot and loot and, and do all this stuff. They're letting justice take their course, and hopefully they're taking nonviolent means to correct the problems in their community, mm -hmm. and, which is good to see. So he, he said, hey, there's this thing that just happened. It, it's going up in Phoenix. They're going to do a Draw Muhammad Part 2, and ISIS says they're going to attack. Okay. And I said, go immediately. Make that happen. <laughs> and Because uh, you can't wait with this stuff. Getting to the airport now, you, know, you got to be there an hour before the plane leaves. You know, By the grace of God, Joe's there right now, one day's notice, flying from another location. The guy's been in Cleveland since Sunday, I believe. I yeah. mean, and just he's a going to Baltimore right after this. And he's going to Baltimore because they're having all hell break loose because the cops are, are essentially standing down. Kind of what we saw in New York yeah. right after the two cops got shot. Well, we, we were the, not going to get our, have our standoff with Al Sharpton there. But uh, Justin Mooney on Twitter wants us to ask if Al Sharpton is going to pay for the Baltimore riot bill as payback for his unpaid taxes. Oh, that would be so, nice. That'd be good. Hey, we are we are getting a few questions. <laughs> um, I like it. Wow, we really got we're getting a bunch here. Uh, who woke y'all up? I like that. That's from James Bell. That just came in, and he's at Zets Pony zero eight three. Um, who who woke y'all up? Uh, I was kind of away. I, I became a theater major because I always liked to peer behind the curtain. I was always one of those people that liked to know what was going on behind the scenes. And I started reading. I actually read None Dare Call It a Conspiracy and Who Runs Congress, which I have both of those books on my desk right now. I bought those at a used bookstore on Route 22 in Murraysville, Pennsylvania <laughs> in, I think, uh, 1993 or four is when I bought those. I'd, I'd, I'd torn my ACL and I was doing a lot of reading at the time because I couldn't play sports anymore. And I had about a year of rehab. So I was, wow. uh, I was reading, Lots of reading. and I, that's when I started playing uh, bass guitar. But those two books really got me thinking of what was going on. And, and I'd already kind of said to myself, Democrats and Republicans are the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're just in it for the money. They're just in it to prolong their existence in that world of D.C. and, and not really interested in helping people. And uh, corporations have you know, bought them off. But what about you? Who woke you up? Uh, well, you know, it's kind of bizarre, but I was like 10 and my best friend's mom was like a real hippie. And she would always talk to us about um, like 2012, you know, that big 2012 theory and all that. So that was kind of the first time when I started to see that there was something more than just things that were going on with my daily life. And then, I don't know, I guess I was like 15 or something. And, and a lot of my friends and I in Chicago were into like reading about the Illuminati and stuff. So I don't know, I guess it was just my friends and I don't really remember any epic. I can't say the book or the street, but yeah. that's, I guess <laughs> I that's my memory. It and was, it was my it destiny. I was destined to be woken up here. So, <laughs> and if, if people don't believe in the power of Craigslist, uh, Leanne, uh, actually <laughs> she got hired through Craigslist. Marcos in there got hired through Craigslist. Uh, Joe Jennings got hired through Craigslist. Um, <laughs> you got to watch out for that. It's a lot yeah. of, uh, you know, we put out, that's how, that's how we do a lot of hiring because it's immediate. You get people interested really quickly. You can send stuff. It's well, all, and you also get the people who think you're just joking and trolling them. So then they send you back really. I did get a weird, responses. I got a, a couple of weird, <laughs> you know, I could have very detailed job descriptions when we do put one out and it's says specifically how I like things. And that really made some guy mad, but you know, that's a, uh, neither here nor there now before I, I think we go to joe biggs if we can if we do have time i want to play because yesterday we had wolfgang halbig on 
Uh, he interviewed with David Knight, and he's going back up for part two of of his hearing for for his Freedom of Information Act. For he, just asking for documents, he now has to have two hearings because he doesn't believe what he's getting from the people of Sandy Hook are real, the real documents. So the first one, um, it, it's if you watch the whole hearing, you can find it online. There's it's about two hours long. It's really long. There's several versions out there and several uh, really good uh, activists. One, I, I think her name was Cat Waters. I think that's her name. I hope that's right. I met her in New York, but I saw her actually one of the shots. I'm like, oh, I know her. I met her in New York uh, when Alex did the talkers uh, speech a few years ago. Um, but she uh, was there. I'm sorry to stop you, dude. We've yep. got Nazis. Oh, we've got Nazis. Oh, all right. Oh. Well, let's go to that. Well, that's actually one of our good Twitter questions. All right. Yeah, what? So what's going on, Biggs? Can you hear me? Yeah, there's a, a whole line of people um, standing facing the mosque, and in between the people are uh, like riot cops. Excuse me. And then uh, on the other side of the people that are uh, in support of Islam. Wow. Wow, this is... Uh, this is quite a face-off, then. There's a lot of people screaming and yelling at each other right now. Is there actually any side of sort of contest going on, or is that just a ruse to get people out there? There's a lot of anger out here, though. Yeah, this is, and it's all coming from the other side right now. It's What's coming from the, the Muslims, the Muslim side, or the yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, they're they're screaming and cussing and telling everybody to to go f off. Huh. Well, we got a good question from somebody on Twitter, Truth Depot. He wants to, he's asking, do you think the people putting on the drawing contest are government agents trying to spark unrest? What do you think of that, Biggs, Joe Biggs? Do you think they got some controlled opposition in there? Or? Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> he might not even be able to hear us. Joe, can you hear us? Oh, you can? Yeah. Okay. Do, yeah. So do you think it, it's possible that these bikers, since we just had the biker incident in Texas, that, that maybe some of them are working uh, as agents for the government, or you think this is just a uh, try to stir up unrest? A natural event. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that, Joe Biggs, let everyone know that you are live. He is live. <laughs> yeah, tell people yeah, I'm live. live on TV. Well, I mean, there's a giant, giant crowd of people. I mean, you can't tell people to to not cuss and be emotional. Oh no, hey, Army. you know that's gonna happen. I totally sure, understand no. that. Yeah. All right, we're on. How you doing? Good. All right. Well, so let's. What do you, so, what, what do you think? Do you about think? This today? <laughs> I think it's my First Amendment right to be out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If this, if Muhammad is gonna cry over a cartoon, what about Jesus? He never cried. He's not crying about it. He's saying, "Go for it. It doesn't matter." But when I'm in the United States, I defended this country. I will not back down from anybody trying to stamp on my rights, including Mr. Obama. <laughs> Let yeah. the mind be free. Thank you. Yeah. Now this seems like so, it's yeah. totally spontaneous. It was just announced this morning that they were going to do this, right? No, I think when, it's no, been, a the guy over here, it's been a couple days. Yeah. The guy over here on the other side. There's two guys over on the other side. They keep trying to pick fights with people. Oh well, of course. That's well, and that's that's the question that we just uh, we have from one of our Twitter. <laughs> oh yeah, the guy's flipping people off in all black. Yeah. And see, that was that was kind of one of the issues that I had with this is that this 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 wasn't like a planned cartoon event. I mean, they're going to be they're telling people to bring their cartoons, bring their drawings that they did, and then they're going to announce a winner at the end of it to make it be some sort of a thing. But, you know, I really got the impression that this was sort of a provocatoring type event. So what do you think? What do you think about this today? I just got here, man. This is awesome. I think it's Americans yeah, fed up. Yeah. I well, and that's with being told what yeah. to say and how to say it. Mm -hmm. And you know, and our government isn't condemning any of the stuff going on in the Middle East. They seem to be fine with with what's going on. They won't say burning down a church is an act of terror. We, they didn't even call the the so Beheading the two guys. Is an act of terror. One of the reasons why the person who put this event on wanted to go to this specific mosque is that the two guys who came to Waco. The two terrorist wannabes who went to Waco uh, and attacked or attempted to attack um, the people there are from this mosque or right. they had ties to this mosque. So that's why they are out here protesting outside of the the Islamic community mosque there in Phoenix. And um, so, yeah, I mean, David Knight said it earlier that the First Amendment has has been worth dying for in the past. 
So, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't think that that's, you know, something that they really want to do, but they said, you know, exercise your second amendment. If our first amendment is crushed. So B Biggs, give us a, a, a layout of the size here. How many people seem to be with the bikers and with the, with the draw Muhammad cartoon rally? And then how many um, are, I guess, with the mosque, with the Islamic center? Uh, I'd say maybe 300 right now on the Islam side and about 3000 on the other, on our side over here. <laughs> wow. And then how many police, how many police? Um, probably about, I don't know. I'd say three, 4,000 in the area. I mean, right here in front of me, probably about 60 to 70, but, uh, I mean, they're around every corner. There's more showing up right now. Right. Yeah. Now there, it looks like they're putting up a barricade between the two groups. Yeah. Okay. This is just insane. But you know, uh, you know, notice these guys aren't in riot gear. I mean, they have riot helmets on, but it's not the full battle armor, tear gas, uh, ready to to just wipe the floor with people. They're just there to be keep the peace, peace officers. Do you see anyone with open carry? Hey guys! Do I see anybody with who? We've had two guys. How many are open carrying boss, right now? And two guys trying to kill a friend of mine. Love your neighbor. What's going on? Well, previous to the shooting in Texas. Yeah, that's where I'm from. Okay, there were two guys from this mosque that got convicted in federal court for conspiracy for terrorism, right? So we got two guys convicted, two guys out of this mosque went to go shoot somebody that I know personally. So apparently, I'll hold it up, this cartoon by Bosch Faustin was the winning cartoon in Texas. Come over this way a little bit so okay. the light's on you. Oh, yeah, let's move around. So this was the winning cartoon in Texas, in Garland, by our, uh, Bosch Fonsti. Okay? This was apparently worth being killed over. He was going to die for this. Okay? This is actually somebody I know personally. This is a personal issue for me. Okay? All he was, he's a former Muslim. Okay, 9-11, he went back and studied the Quran seriously, and he read it, and he determined it was evil, okay? He adopted a new philosophy and became an atheist, and now he's got a death warrant against him. He gets countless death threats every single day because of this. If we can't speak out, we can't speak, we can't think. The ultimate goal is to destroy intellectual freedom right. and the ability for persuasion instead of violence. If we can't talk, we can't think, we can't be intellectual, we can't debate, we can't persuade, we cannot use channels that are nonviolent. This is what they want to stop. They want to stop thinking, they want to stop debate. Mm. They want to stop persuasion because they're against persuasion. They're for force. This is just an intellectual issue. It's on paper, that's all it is. Wow. It's that simple. And I'm shocked that behind me there's supporters. All they had to do was check. This mosque has supported Many people that have gone out and started jihad activities. They've had two people convicted in federal court, and they had two shooters from this mosque. How much more do you need? Ultimately, we're all motivated by ideas. Very well said. Get his you name. Take ideas seriously. They do. What's your they name? Act on it. My name is Jonathan Conley. Man, uh, yeah. very well said. I'm gonna get his contact nice info. Yeah. This is ultimately an intellectual battle. But they bring it to us as a physical battle. We have to respond in some fashion. This is how we respond. We hold up and we speak. Right. What is the alternative besides that? You know, and we were trying to do that at the uh, hashtag Black Never Lives Matter protest. Right. We were <laughs> trying you. to hold up signs and speak for the ones that can't be spoken for. These little babies so now, that are being killed. Now, mm -hmm. Go now ahead, as you Jeff. can see, they've, now you see they put up... Yeah this huge thing up they've got an area lane for the police and now everyone's uh, chanting usa wow hmm. it's quite a crowd yeah friday afternoon in phoenix arizona this is the site of the islamic uh cultural center Isla it's the islamic community community commun islamic community mosque oh there's a good aerial shot right there you can see the two sides facing off i I can see the American flags on one side, and uh, and then you can see the the Muslim crowd. They, they look almost can the I same see, size. Uh, can I see your sign? Yeah. Uh, here, come over this way a little bit so the light's on. Look at Biggs giving camera direction. <laughs> can you guys see that? 
Yeah, yeah. there's the Charlie Hebdo. Yeah, we see the Charlie Hebdo uh, yeah. cartoon. It says, oh. don't mess with Texas. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's actually when they had a few wannabe ISIS, ISIS, negative ISIS people. Two, Texas plus two. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's why. Biggs, what's Amanda your opinion? So do you think do you think violence could kick off at any time, or does it look like it's just going to be oh, a yeah. shouting match? Yeah, there's uh, some definitely some uh, some violent, angry people on the other side right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're coming out and screaming at people and flipping everyone off. Definitely not being uh, peaceful. Well, how do you feel? Time, I'll tell you that. How do you feel knowing that they they were making ISIS was making some threats on Twitter or some of their wannabe jihadists were threatening this uh, event on Twitter? Yeah, and now on the other side, they're flying the flag upside down. I don't know if you guys can see that. On the other side? That's just a sign yeah. of distress. I don't, I don't think they realize that. That's, that's just a sign of distress. That means your oh, yeah, country is in distress. Well, and that's the thing that's so important to let people know is that this is America and the First Amendment is very important to us. People have died to what? ensure that we have that right. And, and I don't know if, if the Muslim side of these people are supporting what ISIS is doing or supporting what Al-Qaeda is, is doing. But one thing's for sure, and it's come out, we talked about it right in the beginning, but we are funding Al-Qaeda. We jump-started ISIS, essentially, into what's going on now to use them as a proxy army. And now they're running wild. And that's what happens with these incidents. Uh, I was reading an article. I've got one up here from the Wall Street Journal from May 25th, talking about the Battle of Ramadi. Now, let me ask you this, Biggs. Yeah. So the Battle of Ramadi started yes. around May 5th. It talks about that the Islamic State launched an attack. The Iraqis held them off with helicopters in the Golden Division. And then on the 13th, they, uh, ISIS established a sniper nest and started taking out some people. Then on the 14th, they bring in an armored bulldozer yeah, we're live right now on the news. and spend over an hour clearing out a concrete barricade. Now, how come we didn't have any drones up in the air watching this and taking out this armored bulldozer? Biggs, let me ask you that. How, how could we, if we're supporting with air support on this campaign, how do we not take out this armored bulldozer that was breaking through the uh, the blockades that they put it going into Ramadi? I mean, that would be easy to do. Exactly. And then after that, they drive in 27 Humvees that have been converted into, they, they give it a name, uh, VR, let's see, it's, it's really interesting what they call it. Vehicle-borne improvised explosive devices are V-beds and most of these were made from captured U.S. Uh, military armored vehicles designed to be impervious to small arms fire. So they were to drive these into the city, blow up the outer defenses, and then invade. Wow. And we didn't have any air support. That, and that's how it fell. They were able to cut the, cut the groups in half. The Golden Division was cut off from the rest, and then everybody retreated. I mean, if that's not picture perfect, telltale evidence that we don't care what's going on with ISIS. We're just letting them run wild. Right. I think about the people and that we're died. dropping them weapons. The Iraqis are mad. And yeah. it's probably because the Iraqis have been coming out saying, hey, you're dropping them weapons. We've seen your helicopters. We fired at your helicopters because we see them bringing them weapons. It's ridiculous. Joe Biggs, your comments, if you could hear any of that. No, you were cutting out on that. You were saying about uh, in Ramadi how it fell. Yeah, it just it just seemed like there were plenty opportun ample opportunity for drone strikes to be used in this fashion to repel an I mean, attack. I mean, I mean, there was there was ample opportunity to take out ISIS back uh, this time last year. Oh yeah, they were convoying in from uh, uh, the northern part down into Iraq. I mean, we could have done successive bracketing. There's all kinds of things we could have used. We could have done, you know, hit the first convoy, stop the convoy, then hit the last vehicle so no one can back up, and then you got it pinned right there, and then you just start nailing them with, uh, you know, airstrikes. It'd have been over with. We wouldn't be where we are today, and yet we allowed them to come into Iraq. We allowed them to take it back over after we found a reason to go into Iraq for these weapons of mass destruction that we were told, and then we send countless human beings' lives to go over there and die for something that was a lie, and now we're letting this Frankenstein monster that we've created come back and destroy the country that we helped try to get back. And now they're taking everything over. We're accidentally airdropping supplies <laughs> to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just out of control. It's and twice. then we're offering no twice. air support at all. Yeah. You know, at least if you're going to say we're going to offer air support and drone strikes and missile strikes, then do it. You know, don't let don't let city after city just fall and go, well, we don't know what's going on. But don't show video the show. of of the ISIS uh, uh, convoys. Don't show video of that because that's old news. 
That's what they came out. The Obama administration went to Fox and said, don't show video of that anymore because we don't like it. Because you know why? Because you see them in brand new vehicles. You see them in Humvees right. that we've delivered there and just left for them to take. It's, it's totally ludicrous. Totally ludicrous. And then Judicial Watch comes out. Secret Pentagon report reveals U.S. created ISIS as a tool to overthrow serious President Assad. Right. I mean, that's it's all the proof is there. And it's stuff we've been saying for a long time. It, it's not we didn't just come up with this. It, it, you go search. Just go to the Alex Jones channel and search for videos on we created ISIS and you'll find tons of videos. We've been saying it since day one that this is a proxy army that we created. And that's what we do. We fund proxy armies. Uh, we had a guy who put in a sent in a question. Oh, I guess I can't Your find precious, it out. Uh, Mortish, uh, precious. Coach, I'm sorry, I don't something 94. Mortis oh, is asking, it's, it says this was set up three weeks ago on Facebook. Oh, it was set up three weeks ago. Okay, well, here's Lord Bone Shatter says, I live in Canada. Is there a chance Alex could cover laws that tread on our freedom? Well, let me tell you, Alex can't cover everything. I would say, Lord Bone Shatter, you get on YouTube and you start covering things. Hook up with like minded Canadians in your area. Uh, Dan Dix is a guy who lives in Canada. And he's out there fighting for freedom. Why aren't you doing it? You get out there. Get you know, if you have a phone, you could post a video and put it up on YouTube. Right. You can be your own activist. If you don't like the way things are going, then get up and change it. And we'll probably have you on the show if we if well, we like what we you're just doing. Launched, I, and I hate to talk about this. I don't know, have the, all the facts on it, but aren't we launching that new uh, YouTube site to help people out with that? Well, we're Revolution News or something. We're, we're actually, we're, we just launched another YouTube channel, and um, this one we're not even monetizing. We're going to see how we can grow it organically, and and we're trying different things. And um, and actually, I kind of Kit and uh, Travis are taking that on, and we're posting some videos to that because you know the Alex Jones channel is so big, it's got so many subscribers. You know, we're trying to find out who's how it's fresh out there. It's Resistance News. That's our our newest channel. We actually put up John Bounds uh, FIFA distraction exposed the feet and that's what's really you know that's one of the things the media is going crazy twitter's going crazy about this election for fifa i mean really that's what you people care about right we don't care about what the about tpp the racketeering we don't, in our own election well, going on yeah we don't care about the <laughs> tpp we don't care about world war three possibly happening i mean Putin's basically saying he thinks that nato is gonna have no choice but to use nuclear weapons on it. i mean that's where it's come to now. We're, we're, we've recircled around back to the Cold War. Well, they know that there's so many people in the world that are, are uh, football fans. So that's an easy distraction there. It's a very easy distraction. And what, there's not corruption in sports? Come on. There's corruption in every sport. But I'm sorry, bread and circuses at this point is not important. We need to really dig down. ISIS being created by the United States government, that's a big issue. That's something people should be concerned about. Um, you know, they're they're now releasing these Dennis Haster sex scandals. They're going after him. You and David talked about it earlier. Right. And they can't even put him on trial for that stuff. Well, and that's not even what they've come after him for. No, they're going but after they him don't, for taking they out don't, his money. They, yeah, they don't want you to focus on the structuring so that you go, hey, what's the big deal with taking out your own money? Mm -hmm. From They want you to focus on the sex scandal and on all the perversion. And they're like, that's the issue. That's the problem. He's a bad man. But that's not what they came after him for. They didn't care that he did that decades ago. And whoever was his victim, I mean, they were working <laughs> a huge payout or whatever, which is not illegal. If they, he had gone with an attorney to do something like that, settle out of court with the victim, that's completely legal to do. But here, because he, you know, t didn't want to tell the FBI what he what he was up to with that cash money. That's why they came after him. It's just, I need to know everything anyway. Hey, Joe, if you can hear us, tell us what's going on right now out in Phoenix on location at the Islamic Cultural Center. Or is it the Islamic Community right. Center? I keep saying it wrong. Yeah. Islamic Community Center in Phoenix, Arizona. Around. Looks like he's turning. Okay, there we go. All right, yeah. So tell us what's going on, Joe. Here. We, there's a lot of people out here. There's screaming going on on both sides mostly from the other side, screaming over. And then uh, you've got some people, looks like they've kind of infiltrated and came on our side. So the cops have been kind of like walking around, keeping an eye on them. Yeah, keep an eye on those people because those are the ones that will attack. This is exactly, uh, I guess they're taking from right from the communist playbook. We had to deal with a smaller version of this a few months ago. Oh, there's an evil gun carrier, Big. Yeah. Are you scared? Oh, you're There's a gun. There's some open carry. 
Um, well, I actually have my uh, HD firearms rifle on me right now. <laughs> oh my goodness! How dare you? So How dare that's you why everyone yourself. coming up talking to you. <laughs> so Davis Absolute, uh, he's a Phoenix native, and he's asking oh, yeah, you to interview. It's got the tripod on it or the bipod. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> look at that! Look at that smile on his face. And I, I've shot that same gun. That sh that gun shoots like a Cadillac. Close, overheard him talking about wielding knives and coming across into the crowd. Well, we wielding know knives, a, you hear that? They, they wielding they knives, of course. Yeah, no, they, the guy just said that he's he's like a security guy. Uh -huh. He said that there's word that uh, there's guys on the other side that have knives, and they've heard him say that they're going to come jump, like bum rush the line and come over here and start stabbing people. What? Okay, tell that to the cops. <laughs> Did the cops know this? Uh, Rob, uh, have, sure. have sure. they never heard you don't bring a knife to a gunfight? Yeah, but that's going to get... Oh, my God. That's going to be crazy. This is yeah. almost insane. Yeah, you don't... You, Joe Jennings popped in. I don't know if that went out over the air, but he said you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. And you've got a lot of armed uh, patriots there. Um, so, Biggs, we, we have a Davis Absolute on Twitter. He's a Phoenix native, and he's asking you to interview Muslims and peaceful Christian protesters that are in the blue shirts. So well, I guess they've, uh, they've blocked us off. We can't go over there. Well, I think they're on both sides. They're the ones in the blue shirts. So there, I guess there's a big group of them. We'll see. You might have just passed one right there. There's a blue shirt no. right there. Yeah, but that's, that's just a dirty T-shirt. Those guys <laughs> have uh, stuff written on theirs over there. Uh, okay. Yeah. They're, they're like a they're a darker blue. I'll see, but I mean they've got lines up. Yeah. So we're getting a lot of questions. People wondering if this is part of Jade Helm, if this is going to be used to uh, foment civil unrest and be and be used for that. Of course, obviously, if a knife and a gunfight starts okay. going off, that's going to hey, change so the game. The, the guy over here with the hat on, mm -hmm. the group looking. Yeah. That's the guy that's right. He's the one that's been saying he's going to come over here apparently and start stabbing people. Really. He's the shorter guy right in front of you. Well, we don't want Yeah, to. I can't get across. As soon as you get close to this thing, they come at you. Yeah, well. I think they decided there might be a, a security uh, issue here today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Go, go wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Texas don't even get to do this half the time. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think about all this? What do you guys think about this today? Uh, it was bound to start going off. You get more action down there. It's really been good to heat it up. Where? Right down here. We have that many trainers in this country. Yeah. So what's going on now? Where is it? Down here we had a couple guys that look like the provokers. You got to, you know. Provocateurs? Yeah, a couple guys. Well, there's a guy over here in the hat. They're saying he's the one that wants to come across the line of yeah, well, there's another. People. You see the big guy out here? He's another big yeah. one, dude. Yeah, he was starting there. Thing with another guy they about got into the police had to break them up that house right there they're coming out of that house you see them standing on the other yeah, side of that gate right there the they come around the there. corner and go back to that oh house. so they're coming over there yeah so he says in this gate right here come here look yeah see there's some of them right here Infowars.com reporter Joe Biggs is on the ground in Phoenix, Arizona at the Draw Muhammad Part 2 protest. For those of you just joining us. So there's guys coming over here and they're getting on the other side of this fence. They're coming over. Hmm. I guess that's uh, like a little uh, area where a lot of the Muslims live. Right. And they're over there at the gate. They keep coming over here provoking, and then they run back over to the other side. The guy said. Yeah, private property. And, and look, we're respecting their private property by not going back over there. Is that nice? It's like a helicopter. Oh, hell? oh, there we go. Oh, is, that, is that the Fox News chopper? It's just blue and white. I can't tell. Okay. Hey, if you guys have that aerial shot, guys, go to that every once in a while, too. Yeah, it's the Phoenix police. They tell Alex. Oh, we don't? Okay. We had an aerial shot earlier. Oh, come here. Come on this side. All right, so Our I got aerial shot has turned into this. They've gone to the ground. So, okay. I got these two guys with me right here. What's your name? Darren. Darren. Mike. Mike. And you're a InfoWars fan, huh? That's right. That's what I'm talking about. We Thanks, control, Alex. We appreciate we it. We do a lot of control <laughs> in the yeah. desert on I-8. Got pictures that show you when you're off. All right. We track the park down. Right on. Well, hell yeah. yeah thanks, man. Biggs, you might run into a group uh, called Freedom's Phoenix. Those are uh, there's a lot of good guys out there. Uh, er, uh, Ernie Hancock, Ernest Hancock, uh, 4409 is a good activist out there. He does some amazing videos. Um, I wonder if those guys will be out there at this event. Um, 
Phoenix is a hotbed of people. I've, I've been there a couple times. It's a hotbed of people who are into being free and living free. And, you know, when, when it, you know, the truth comes out that, hey, these guys are at a mosque in your backyard. I, I agree with what they're doing out here, coming out and just stating, hey, we know what's going on. If you're going to be a terrorist factory, we're going to have a problem with that. We didn't have a problem with you before when you were doing your Muslim thing, praying, you know, keeping to yourselves or just not not going out and provoking, you know. But but if you're creating shooters who are going out and attacking people, mm -hmm. well, now there's a problem. Right. You know, now we need to. Now we need to, uh, you know, man up and show up and just let people know that we're not going to take it. So what do you think is the right position to take? Because I know there are some peaceful protesters in the crowd who are trying to bring everyone kind of together and, and don't want this thing to get out of hand. Because obviously, if someone rushes the line with a knife, it could get a lot worse. That's yeah. not going to be it's not going to be good there tonight. But I mean, what do you think is the, Personally, I, I like it when people come out in, in, in a crowd and voice their opinions, and then you find out who really wants to talk and who really isn't interested in talk. Right now, it looks like, you know, people holding American flags, holding signs. They're just saying, hey, not in, our, not in my backyard. You're not going to become a terrorist breeding ground in my backyard. Right. Well, I guess. I mean, they obviously didn't have a problem with them building their Islamic community center right there because it's built. It's pretty big. Right. It takes up at least half a block. That yeah, whole it's section. right there by the the, the university and, and uh, federal buildings and everything like that. But so the, the gentleman that Biggs was speaking with initially, really powerful stuff that he was saying oh, yeah. there uh, and like that it's a cartoon, you know, it's a, a drawing on paper. And that was, you know, worth someone losing their life over. And if we bow down to that, then, you know, what are we? And that's kind of exactly what happened in D.C. They had, um, they, they were wanting to put up posters for this Muhammad drawing contest. Mm -hmm. And rather than do that, they just stopped for the next six months. Any PSAs or anything like this that oh, right. would be kind of provocative. Yeah. They just shut it all down. No signs there in the D.C. metro because they didn't want this particular event or the, the Muhammad cartoon or whatever to go up in the metro dc there now as the metro authority were they just thinking okay you know this is going to be a target I someone's going to come blow up the tunnel but then there there's a the thing now we're exactly we're, we have to censor because ourselves. of a cartoon right we are not you know we're not going to let advertisers or psas or things go up because we don't want to get bombed this is america and it's like you said, when you, you know, this is close to a university. You look at universities around the country. They're all playing this free speech zone game. We have to approve what you're going to say. We have to see what you're going to do. You have to have a permit. You have to go into a zone. And that's not what this country is all about. This country is about people expressing themselves and expressing their ideas. As long as your ideas and actions don't interfere with anyone else's. Although there's a lot of spots where we've taken that away, uh, especially when you look at, you know, the way people want to medicate themselves in this country. They're only allowed to do it the, the big pharma way is the only possible way right. you could actually heal yourself. Any your other way is, government is wrong or you're a conspiracy theorist. But, right. you know, it, when you get to the self-censorship level, this is how the terrorists win. Right. This is it. When people don't say anything, when people are afraid to speak out, when people, you know, get censored from putting, we're going to get rid of all PSAs. Mm -hmm. You know, now we're going to punish everybody. Right. No one can say anything because we don't want anyone to be offended because those people tend to go and chop people's heads off. Or and all this is done by our government creating terror groups. They created Al Qaeda in the 80s. We're having all these problems now because of Al Qaeda in the 80s. Right. That's it. And we're still continuing, even though we've seen what Osama bin Laden turned into and all of that, we're still continuing to arm and fund and train the rebels now thinking they're not going to turn around and be the same thing 10 years down the line. And it's our open worship of, of Saudi Arabia and, and their regime there. We don't condemn them for doing anything. So they become a breeding ground for terrorists. And that's where you look. Most of the hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. They didn't come from Afghanistan. They didn't come from Syria. I think maybe one did. But right. most of them came from Saudi Arabia. Right. No invasion of Saudi Arabia. It was Iraq who didn't even... Yeah. Well, have anything to do with it. Oh, we just happen to have bases on Saudi Arabia. Oh, we helped them out in the first Gulf War. 
All right, so I'm getting word now that we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Uh, we'll go right back to the live coverage if anything, if anything does happens break, there. Yeah. We'll be on standby. And hey, why don't you guys uh, pull up? I think John Bound did a second report today. You got a, a description of that right there. The It's about what Obama's doing. Court battle for the illegals. Obama must destroy middle class America. Right. He's bringing, instead of rising the tide and making prosperity happen everywhere, we're going to lower the dock level down to the least common denominator. So we're all wallowing in, in you know, filth and scum going, please just give us our, our digital soup line card so we can eat. Mm -hmm. That's that's where the policies of this country are going. They're not for freedom and individuality and prosperity. It's going in the complete opposite direction. It's to drag us down with the rest of the third world instead of getting the third world out of that. Because we can do it. We have the technology. Oh, yeah. Worldwide, everybody could be... And, and, yeah. a, and a, we could make a, easily a paradise in this in world Absolutely. if we just started changing. We don't let bankers run everything. That's if the, the problem. If the people that Rex Jones interviewed would just st start caring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'd be like, what's well, TPP? Is that toilet paper? Uh, uh, Might as well you know, be because it's flushing the country down the toilet. And that was Rex Jones's first outing with a microphone talking to people. Yeah. Guy did a masterful job. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's go to Bounds Report. Maybe we'll play a couple ads. I uh, encourage people out there, if you're watching this right now on YouTube or on Infowars.com forward slash show, we always appreciate our PrisonPlanet.tv members who are some big supporters of us. PrisonPlanet.tv, you can become, you can share your username and password with up to 20 people. So by getting one membership, you can share it with up to 20 people and you could all be watching at the same time the show that you're watching right now. So we're going to reconnect with Joe Biggs here after this short break and see what else is going on in Phoenix. We thank you for joining us for this live coverage here uh, on the InfoWars Nightly News, we're, what, th two hours in right now? Yep. Wow. There you go. So we'll be right back after this. And I've, I've said this consistently. Um, my job in the executive branch is supposed to be to carry out the laws that are passed. What I'm not going to do is just wait. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say that I've uh, shown a lot of patience and tried to work uh, on a bipartisan basis as much as possible uh, and I'm going to keep on doing so but in the meantime uh, let's figure out what we can do lawfully through uh, executive action. What about what's in the interest of the American people? America is not an oligarchy. The masters of the universe they don't get to meet at the White House and decide how to run this country. President Obama's legacy of bulldozing the Constitution with an executive branch arrogance unparalleled in American history has hit another snag. The judicial branch has yet again foiled the globalist engineered subversive dilution of what remains of America's receding middle class. As 53% of Democrats are chomping at the bit to get illegals voting according to a recent Rasmussen poll, the American middle class has receded by over 10%. As more illegals pick up blue and white collar American jobs, jobs the liberals would have you believe are jobs Americans won't do, a lower middle class income is becoming the norm for born and raised Americans. Obama's plans were thwarted on Tuesday after a federal appeals court in New Orleans denied the executive request to implement action deferring deportation of millions of illegals. 26 states, including Texas, are suing and want the action put on permanent hold. Texas Governor Greg Abbott said Texas just won the executive amnesty case at the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. The Constitution wins. Obama must now throw the Hail Mary to the Supreme Court, but that move could put his action in limbo until the end of his reign in office. His administration has decided to focus on the appeal of the injunction as it moves forward through the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in July. Ann Coulter and Jorge Ramos fiercely debated the actual census numbers concerning just how many illegals are now residing in the United States. Studies by award-winning journalists have put the number as high as 30 million, meaning a quarter of the Mexican population has moved to the United States. Do you think that people are biologically predisposed to commit crime? No, I think there are cultures that are obviously deficient. And if they weren't deficient, you wouldn't be sitting in America interviewing me. I'd be sitting in Mexico. You fled that culture because it is a, there are a lot of problems with that culture. When you bring the people here, you bring those cultures here. That includes honor killings. It includes uncles raping their nieces. It, not paying your taxes. It includes paying bribes to government officials. That isn't our culture. You can. But it's particularly difficult to be effective when the administration continues to sabotage its own efforts 
by embracing unconstitutional policies like the president's executive action. I think perhaps the larger tragedy is that the president has poisoned the well in Congress and destroyed any trust whatsoever between the executive branch and the Congress when it comes to fixing our broken immigration system. I feel obliged to do everything I can lawfully with my executive authority to make sure that uh, we don't keep on making the system worse. As the illegals crossing become more desperate and violent, Ramos and others like Luis Gutierrez won't rest until the entire population of Mexico is here. A creeping cultural imperialism that can only break the back of the almighty American dollar and dream. John Baum for Infowars.com. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the... In From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. When it comes to you and your family's health, InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy-to-use capsules, you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever 
to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. All right, and welcome back to this live edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be right back with Joe Biggs. He's live out there in Phoenix, Arizona. I uh, wanted to talk about some of your Twitter questions. You can send us in your questions. I am at Leanne McAdoo, Do's News with a Z, and there's also Liberty Tarian back there uh, answering your questions on Twitter. First, I want to address Conspiracy Scope. I actually got the chance to meet Conspiracy Scope when we were covering 9-11 there in New York really great dude he's like one of the original people who was putting all of our content on youtube so mm -hmm. if you're on youtube be sure you follow his youtube channel uh, but conspiracy scope has been wondering at what point will the people who pay for the prison planet subscription when can they get a commercial free news well actually we do put out a commercial free podcast version an audio version of the show that a lot of people download and that i would say goes up probably within 20 to 30 minutes um tech guy back there is that thumbs up is that correct about 20 30 minutes after the show's done by 2 30 we have a audio version up and with video the problem conspiracy scope is that it takes a long time to take hd video edit it out crunch it together then you got to compress it then you got to upload that it's a lot quicker it's a lot quicker to upload a audio file than it is a video file. It's probably 50 times longer. And then that would be tying up a computer and we would have an editor working on that and making sure that's going up and not doing much else during the show. We're having to stay much longer after the show is over. Right. And, and what we do have is we immediately go to rebroadcast. So that's already going back up. Um, people can tune into that anytime, anytime they can skip the commercials or mute the commercials or whatever. Um, you know, ads are what pays the bills here. And yeah, I agree. Maybe Rob in the future. Yeah, go ahead. We've got the guy who put this event together is on with Biggs right now. We need to cut to them. All right, All let's right, go let's to him. Cut to him. Contest. And All right, this is the guy who put this uh, event together. He's talking right now. And now my family is right. in hiding, and I'm having to go into hiding afterwards. Do you, know, Do you have any different online, opinion after talking? Nope. Correct, right? I, this is and how this is how it's been, been with a lot of Muslims, was, uh, and <laughs> some will still also say that you know they're allowed to sit there and deceive the infidel. So, but you you didn't have a nice conversation. You, you didn't get a positive reaction from that conversation. That, we were peaceful. It was a peaceful conversation. I am capable. I am a marine. I have discipline. I am capable to have a peaceful conversation with somebody okay and i have questions and i and i want answers and, and that's what it came down to and now and, and you brought up you, you got to wear a kevlar you've got some uh you got my family surrounding you yeah. with, with guns was it worth it absolutely you know i just sacrificed <laughs> myself i just sat i just bought my house first house i bought in my life okay trying to raise my family out here i just bought it a year ago and now we're gonna have to sell it i just sacrificed my entire livelihood just to expose what's going on in this country okay our freedom of speech is under attack if you don't believe me there's a group of people over there that think that i should be beheaded for wearing a shirt or for drawing a cartoon there is also a group of people over there that are not muslims but they are the same type of people that spit on our Vietnam veterans when they came home. Well, there, there was a lot of spitting going on on this side today, too. Uh, and I don't condone that. So we're, we'll do our, our part, and uh, we're going to police our own. Well, well, that's what I'm this saying. this gentleman over here right. said he's he, they're going to uh, practice and do their part and police their own. I still encourage anybody in any major city to fire up your own freedom of speech rally. Don't call it an anti-Islam. Don't let the media twist it. Uh, but a freedom of speech rally, I want it to happen in every state. Okay? And I I hope they all remain peaceful. What's planned from here on out tonight? Uh, I go, I hop in the truck with uh, some some fellow Americans, and, and we disappear for a while. Disappear for a while. You say go into hiding or just go into... Uh, I'm, I'm, going into I'm going into hiding for a while. All right, ICE has posted my address. My family's already way off the radar. And uh, they both, they, they've called for lone wolf attacks. Uh, I've had a few of these individuals over here that are say, saying they're going to murder me and all that stuff. Like, I, we expected it. I know. 
I knew I knew what we were coming here to. So and I and I came here and I have not once said that I want any of them to be murdered. Okay, I support their First Amendment and their right to their, their freedom of speech. I support anybody coming out here that wants to burn the American he flag. for that. Do it peacefully. Mm -hmm. Get it out of your system. Go home. It, you know, people can look at you, call you a dumbass, and you go about your way. And we all we all continue to live and get on with our lives. One final question, sorry. So there's a lot of police resources used up today, a lot of heated back and forth. Is it really worth it to, to make this point? I didn't call for the police the forces like, to be out here. They're out here because uh, we were, well, let, me, let me also say this. May 17th, we were out here. We were out here thing. fully armed. We came out here a few hours, voiced our opinion, held our protest. Everything was peaceful. There was a handful of cops. Everybody was courteous, all right? There was no throwing, there was nothing rude. We weren't throwing pig meat or nothing like that. Uh, and, and we all went home that night. Now though, today, a lot of police resources, potentially some bad blood, was it worth it? Yes, absolutely. Again, this had First to be done worth it. just to yeah. show Americans and the, the rest land of the, of the world free, that our freedom of the speech, speech for a reason. Of speech is People fought attack. for that. And Obviously, corporate controlled to media to wouldn't that understand that. No. InfoWars. <sighs> Info What's up, man? Nice. How you doing? Good. Thanks for your service. Thanks. Thank you for your service. Talk to him, Biggs. Glad you guys are out here, huh? Spreading the truth. Yeah, I've been in. Uh, Tell me he's live Cleveland. right now. So I just, I just flew in today from uh, Cleveland. I'm going to Baltimore tomorrow. I don't know. What so. Right Tell on. Well, I appreciate you guys making it out here, and uh, you know. This, this so, guy's got a button on his backpack. Hey, I'll shake your hand. I don't agree with the button, but uh, hey, Biggs. Good good fortune. Hey, these your own, and I support your freedom wow. of speech, brother. Yeah, okay? I knew that would be good out luck, there. Good good fortune. Every culture in the world needs. So, Biggs. Yeah. Can you hear me? So, ask him. You know, he fought for those people there to have their right to free speech, for their right to be offended with with him, uh, their right to have their religion there in the middle. <laughs> They're a phoenix, you know. They might not agree with each other, but he fought for our rights to have the freedom of speech. I mean, if you could even just talk to him about that, because the, 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 ma the mainstream media guy that was talking to him was like, well, was it worth it? Uh, I think when he signed up to join, the to be a Marine, it was worth it to fight for this country. This used to be a Christian yeah. church. They bought it and they Hold took on, I gotta it wait. Sure. So how does it feel, you know, fighting for your country like I did as well, and then you fought for the right to give people the ability to go out and do stuff like this, and then to be attacked? It's sad, man. Lady Liberty is crying. Uh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I, I did fight for my country. I went to Iraq twice myself, and uh, although I may not agree with everything that was going on with the war, I still, I still rogered up to the call of duty. And uh, this this isn't the country that I want. This isn't the country that our founding fathers wanted. All right. This is this is called this is tyranny right on the other side of that wire right there. Mm -hmm. That's tyranny at its finest. And they want to shut us up. OK, they, they think it's OK for someone like me to be beheaded because I'm wearing a shirt or drawing a cartoon. And unfortunately, yeah, I had to sacrifice my own livelihood here in Arizona that I just started a year ago, uh, all to expose what's going on in our country. Wow. How does he feel about the fact the mainstream yeah, the media wants him to be silent? The mainstream media is saying, well, why don't... The mainstream media wanting you to be silent. Was it worth it? Wanting me to be silent? Or asking you if it was worth it. To be asking if it was worth it. Uh, yeah, that's Anderson Cooper. Fuck Anderson Cooper. <laughs> Maybe that'll be my next shirt. Fuck Anderson Cooper. I'm sure he wants to behead me. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they consistently ask, was it worth it? I mean, was it worth it to go fight the war? Was it, was it worth it there? Everything that, I mean... That's where that's what we've come to. It's saying, amazing. Was We're it worth it to fight against this tyranny? To fight against these other people who are coming here to fundamentally change our country? Was it worth it? You know what's interesting? I've, I've been to Detroit, and they have Dearborn, Michigan's right outside of Detroit, and that is a, yeah. it's a huge Muslim community, and those people are there. They've they haven't assimilated into the American lifestyle. They've taken, they bought churches and turned them into mosques. And I heard somebody say that that used to be a Christian church, and they turned it into a mosque. And that stuff is going to happen when you do have large influxes of people moving in. But we still have our rights. It's like just because you move in, you can't dictate how we're going to live. Right. And David Knight had uh, came in here during the break and said he wanted to say something about free speech. And I think this is a good spot. David, why don't you pop in and talk about free speech? Because 
You've got yeah. a, a, a diff not a different view on free speech, but just a different view on, on what's going on in general. But why, why don't you pop in? and? Yeah, in general, you know, I, I've watched Pamela Geller, and, and frankly, I don't like her personally. I don't like the fact that she's trolling Muslims any more than I like the fact that you've got the Westboro Baptists that are going out there uh, protesting military people's funerals. I find that kind of speech repulsive, but even though it is hate speech, it is protected under the First Amendment. And I think it's very important that we not allow the First Amendment to be destroyed by vilification, by hate speech laws. We need to protect speech we disagree with, speech that's even hateful. We need to support that because it's important to support that as a principle. I think it's important to understand that the very same First Amendment that gives Muslims and Christians freedom of religion also protects free speech. And how do we determine these, these freedoms? Well, your freedom ends with my nose, as we say, right? When your mm -hmm. freedoms start spilling over into my life, when you start making demands on me, then you know it's no longer your personal liberty. And so I understand that Pamela Geller is making a point about a... A large percentage, perhaps, uh, certainly the, the the ones that we see, um, maybe, the, I, I don't know what percentage of Muslims they represent, uh, but we see plenty of people who uh, are, are Muslims who want to kill people for exercising their free speech. So I understand how they feel. It annoys me to see Family Guy doing cartoons, making fun of Jesus. That really annoys me. I don't want to go out there and kill people because I understand where the First Amendment uh, falls. I understand freedom of speech. I understand freedom of religion. I don't like to be forced as a uh, taxpayer to pay for Andre Saranis uh, putting a crucifix of Jesus in a vat of urine. I don't think that's art. I think that's hateful. I don't like to pay for that. I think we ought to stop paying for that type of thing. But I don't think you ought to be put in prison. I don't think you ought to be killed. And I think that's the point that you just saw the, the uh, uh, veteran who had organized this uh, make is that, uh, you know, now he's under a death threat from this radical sect of, of Islam. If Islam wants to coexist here in America, they need to verbally take the lead in putting down the people who are uh, getting violent against other people who cannot tolerate free speech. But I think it's just as important that we push back against the violations of free speech in the name of protecting people from uh, feeling bad, in the name of shutting down hate speech. I think it's just as important that we push back on that in the universities, in mm -hmm. the media, everywhere else where right. that's coming up. Right. right. The, the media guy's trying to shame the, the veteran there saying, oh, do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's worth it? You know, mm -hmm. well, these, you people aren't saying, these people aren't saying Muslims go back to the Middle East. They're not saying get out of my country. They're saying, look, it, we're allowed to show a cartoon image of your creator or your profit, okay? Yeah. We're allowed to do that, whether you like it or not, just because you're allowed to say things that we don't like either. And, and that's and the what way it is it is hateful, right. but until and they he fought can, for them to have that right. Exactly. What what they're doing, we could say at one level, is hateful. What Pamela Geller is doing is hateful. Until they can accept that and tolerate hateful attacks, then they, they need to be confronted. And I really do appreciate him putting his life on the line. But we need to confront people who will take away our basic fundamental freedoms that we possess as human beings. Those are things worth fighting for. Those are things worth dying for. Those are even things worth going over the edge and being hateful about to say, you're going to kill people because of their free speech exercise? And fine, let me illustrate that for you. I understand what Pamela Geller is doing. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it when it's done to me as a Christian, but I certainly understand the point that they're making. And it's an important point. We cannot allow free speech, freedom of religion to be shut down on the basis of hate speech. Understand, too, that we have the same thing as being done to uh, Christians in terms of uh, marriage and in terms of other religious aspects uh, that they wish to uh, exercise. And so this is a full spectrum that we need to understand where the boundaries are. We need to understand when you're coercing other people and when you're just uh, exercising your free speech. I got I got two points to make here from a couple of uh, Twitter followers. Lou Screw has a question. He says, do you think the straw that breaks the camel's back will be the financial collapse or religious riots? I, I think it'll be a combination of both, but I think the, the financial collapse is going to kick off anything major, uh, aside from these hot pockets of, 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 of protests that we're seeing around the country right now. I don't think you're going to see anything widespread until there is a financial collapse. And then uh, David Absolute says... 
Christians assisting in peaceful protests would not spit on the Vietnam vets just to clear that up. And uh, I would agree with him. I don't think you're going to see that. Um, what, what do we consider the Westboro Baptist Church? I don't think, are those guys, what do they consider themselves? They, they call themselves Christian. I don't know. Most yeah, people who call themselves Christian would not consider them to be a Christian. A weird inbred yeah. sect. Yeah. yeah so, I really don't understand where those guys are coming from. I, I've heard what they say, but uh, it, 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 doesn't, uh, it doesn't look anything like what I see Jesus doing, quite frankly. Right. Doesn't look like Jesus, so it doesn't look like Christianity to me. Yeah, and and so we see people there with the blue signs uh, across the way, and some are saying like, you know, F ISIS, not Islam, and so trying to make that distinction, and so that's where a lot of people are coming from is that you're you're being um, Islamophobic or anti-Islamic by by having this protest rally, and you're attacking the whole entire thing of Islam, but it's just like you're saying that people who are in this country who are against that and that's exactly what happened in waco they have one of the largest groups of uh islamic mosques there spoke out about that and said we absolutely disagree with what happened we're not for that if they want to draw the cartoons who cares like whatever and so that's what we need to see more of um but a lot of people there are just kind of saying you know that you're just attacking this entire religion of people here but that's not the case and that's kind of the excuse that's being used throughout the media to for to just demand passivity oh yeah. don't offend and, and it's like no we, we can't let a vocal minority whether it's the westboro baptist or whether it's uh, radical muslims we can't allow a vocal minority to uh, destroy our freedoms and so they have to be confronted both groups have to be confronted and uh it, it really is something that's necessary and of course i Personally, looking at this, I can't tell whether they are a s small minority or a large minority or the majority, quite frankly. I think the Muslims need to take the, the lead in terms of opposing these violent people, but they need to be challenged, not cowed down to. Right, because then it only builds. Yes. Then they think, oh, well, now we can get you on anything. Marco, it's just a quick production note. People do want to see what's going on in the protest, so keep this split screen up like you have. People, uh, I've seen a couple tweets already of people watching that, and you can... Send us your Twitter questions. I'm at Dews News. We got at Leanne McAdoo and at Liberty Tarian. And uh, you're watching. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. We're almost into uh, two and a half hours of live coverage on this Friday where, you know, we could be out enjoying our Friday evening with our families, but we're here with you getting the word out. This is kind of a, a story that really just started bubbling up this morning um, over in... Uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, with this protest, I guess it's been planned for a couple of weeks now, but it really it well, hit the he was media. On the Anderson Cooper, I think yesterday or it, something. It, but that's that's really how they want to. The they really want to just point out how these people are hateful, hateful, right? And you know they're being racist or you know bigots and whatever. And it's it's not that. I mean, yeah, obviously some people probably are out there with that paradigm, but it is kind of saying this is America. If we want to be able to put up posters. In the Metro Authority, we don't need to be afraid that it's going to be bombed. Yeah. I mean, that that's insane. Let me just repeat what uh, somebody tweeted to me. He said, the most important speech is that which offends. That is absolutely true. That's from James Knox. That's absolutely true. Hmm. If you're going to bow down on the speech that offends, then you don't have free speech. That's the whole point. That's why Voltaire said, I may disagree with what you have to say, but I will defend it to my death. Because that is the essence of the principle of free speech, the principle of freedom of religion. I may totally disagree with them, and I do disagree with them religiously, but I will say they have a right to have uh, to worship they, they, the way that they want to, unless that worship includes cutting people's heads off. Okay? Yeah. We're not going to accept that. Well, I think there, uh, the guy has it right there on that sign. He who does not love does not know God. And here's another one. Love the Muslims, hate evil. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to get. We can live together. Yeah. Christians and Muslims can live together. We can prosper together. They've been doing it for We've been doing centuries. It, yeah. And, and you know, they did it before we invaded in the Middle East. And right. now all the Christian churches in Iraq and Afghanistan have been destroyed because of American foreign policy. We poisoned that well. We were the aggressor in that case. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's, that's brought about a religious persecution and backlash against Christians in those Islamic countries that were was not there for thousands of years until the U.S. military industrial complex went there. And yes, liberals, we can thank Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld and the Bush clan for that, for definitely instituting that, because before 
Well, and I guess you can thank Zbigniew Brzezinski too for helping create Al Qaeda. <laughs> and I mean, there's a whole list of of, of uh, technocrats and evil people that we uh, sometimes vote into office. Sometimes they just take assume the office uh, in, in our governments. And you know, right now, what it looks like, I'm I'm really impressed that it's been peaceful on both sides. Yeah, you're gonna have words, but that's fine. Words can never hurt me. Right. right. Sticks yeah, and stones just, break my bones. Exactly. Change the channel if you the don't cartoon, like it. The cartoon, believe you know? it or not, is really not going to offend your God if he is your God. I mean, it's a cartoon. If you don't like driving in front of the mosque, don't go down that street. You know, there's a million streets in America. They don't all have mosques in them. So, you know, right now what you're seeing, this looks like the private property where... Um, the, I, I don't know if it's the Muslim, if the religion has, owns this or, or what or who owns it, but they seem to be coming over and they're talking with people now. This is what has to happen. This is the dialogue that, you know, you see hear all this cussing and signs, and stuff, but this is the good side right here that, well, that you probably won't see on the mainstream media. Right. You're going to just see the guns and the, you know, these people came out I know, here people were carrying they, guns. They're, ter they're frightening and terrorists and they're just harassing. But see, the, the, the gentleman that was interviewed at the very beginning brought up a a good point. I mean, if there are now four it's people point of the night, as coming as out of this particular mosque, I mean, I don't want to say that this mosque is breeding jihadists or anything like that, but a person who goes to that mosque, who is a member of that community, you you have to be able to step outside of your, you know, right where you're at and just be able to say, well, what's going on here? What's happening here that now we have a few people that have been indicted or went to go sacrifice themselves because of a cartoon yeah and as as far as i know there aren't there aren't too many christian churches where people are going around and and finding people to go out and attack other people i don't think that's happening widespread so you know the muslims need to not preach that if they are preaching it and condemn it if it's not being done in their name they need to condemn that stuff well, joe do you have anything to say you've been listening to us for a while can you hear us this is Joe Biggs getting a selfie, it looks like. <laughs> they had, uh, I've gotten a couple of Twitter uh, responses here. Somebody asked, uh, can he go to speak to somebody's representative for the Muslim side? Muslim side, But I think he's being prevented from doing that by the police. Is that well, you know, Joe, if you can hear us, go over by the fence area and talk to some of those people there. And let's get their side of the story. I'd love to hear what they have to say about what's going on now. Uh, it does look like it's getting a little dark out there the sun is starting to go down it's uh it's probably gonna 7 30 it's, after this. they probably have another 30 minutes of of somewhat having light in that area joe biggs can i get a 10-4 if you hear me <laughs> he, he might not have his earpiece in uh, he's he's unplugged guys oh he is uh, hey i got a, a tweet from a mark a bushy he says uh dave you know nothing about the westboro baptist church well yeah i'm not an authority on the westboro baptist church but what i have seen of the westboro baptist church is i've seen them uh, say they they uh, are going to be the instrument, I guess, of God's uh, rebuke and judgment to the uh, United States for homosexuality, I think is what they have an issue with. So they show up to the funerals of soldiers and scream at these people. I'm sorry, but that is out of line under any circumstances, and it has absolutely nothing to do with it. Christians don't rebuke people for something that they didn't do. And so, yeah. From, I, I don't know a whole lot about them, but what I know about them is enough. I don't need to know any more than that. Yeah, I would totally agree. Ah, uh, Anthony McCauley, he was one of the guys, or McCauley, he's the one who's asking for the split screen. So keep that, definitely keep that split screen up there, Marcos. We're, uh, this is live on location in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, we, this is all just kind of happened to Biggs this, or? this morning. I don't know if Biggs can hear us right now. So he's just going to keep shooting. All right. Turn this up, guys. They're just calling him racist. I can't tell what side he's on right now. So I did get, a, I just got a text from Joe. He said, uh, somebody asked to estimate how many people are open carrying. He said it's about 50 people there open carrying right now. Um, I'm going to text him again if, since know, he's watching this. 
Are you texting? Ask him if you can go talk to the people at the fence. Yeah, that's what I'm... And, um... You're watching live coverage right now. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Your host, Liam McAdoo, sitting right over there. I'm Rob Dew. we got David Knight in the control room. And uh, all this is paid for by your support out there on PrisonPlanet.tv. And... Um, you know, I just got a tweet, Rob. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Edward Smokes says, uh, we need an emphasis on the two convicted people and the two shooters in Texas that came from there in Phoenix. And of course, we mentioned that earlier, but uh, people who are just joining us may not have heard that. That's true. That was why one of the, the, the people there was so angry and so passionate about this particular event and why he was there in support of it. It wasn't just hearsay. He knew the people personally. Two of them had already been indicted. And then we had another two. Here's something from Zen Design. Wouldn't any and every description of Muhammad be a form of blasphemy? Even written words are painted pictures of him. There you go. I mean, uh, a picture, they say, is a thousand words. So I guess <laughs> when you draw a picture of him, it's a thousand blasphemies. blasphemies. But if you're just going to write the name Muhammad, is that a blasphemy? That which cannot be said. I think there's a Monty Python skit in there somewhere. <laughs> um <laughs> My eternal thanks goes out to the bi these bikers and Infowars. Thanks for the late night coverage, guys. That's Gabriel Allen King. Thank you all for tweeting us. This is my first day on Twitter. I feel like such a big boy now. <laughs> uh, I know. I was totally so ridiculous. proud of you that it was so, an epic troll fashion that you were like, I've got to get a Twitter and respond. Going to do it. <laughs> You're probably already blocked from by that guy. You think the globalists are not using <laughs> these events against the people? The op is more is the more important point to cover. Well, I guess we got a lot of people asking Get us joke. if this is a PSYOP meant to stir up division and unrest, the whole divide and conquer. And I don't know if this, you know, it doesn't seem like that guy right there is part of a PSYOP. Seems like he, you know, obviously put his life on the line and that of his family to go out there and organize this event. But situations like this absolutely are going to divide the country. The country is divided on this. And that's why you have... Americans who have gone out here to say enough is enough. We're not going to just sit back and passively allow our country and our freedoms to be stripped away. They they hate us for our freedom, so let's go ahead and and give them up. That means a lot of people died for those freedoms to to make this the land of the free, the home of the brave. We're not brave because we're, you know, just sitting by twiddling our thumbs and letting the mainstream media tell us everything is okay. We can see that the flag is upside down. You know, I, Leanne, I would also add, too, that this is just one aspect of the attack on freedom of speech. We see really it, it's not a violent attack that you get hit with if you go to the universities. It's a very subtle attack, but it can be devastating to people nevertheless. And so we need to understand all the different spectrums which this uh, uh, attack on freedom of speech is coming Coming after people saying that your speech is hateful, your speech offends me, so you need to be uh, silenced. Mm -hmm. We cannot well, allow that. And it doesn't matter whether it's a, a mosque, and of course, this is the worst case example of it. So maybe this is a good point for us to step back and say, what's the principle involved here? And then take that principle to other areas where they're not threatening to kill you, but they're threatening to uh, destroy your business, destroy your personal life, fine you perhaps, because we've seen this in other countries where they say you can... Uh, get excessive fines for hate speech. David, you probably rec recognize this name, Gert Wilders. He wrote a book, yeah. I guess, called March for Death, Islam's War Against the West and Me. Somebody tweeted this. That as, was the guy that was with Pamela Geller, right? You have to read. Is he? Is well, he he's he's uh, so. from uh, Holland or the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's from the there. Netherlands. Yeah, right. And they've had uh, a fatwa on him for a long time, trying to kill him wherever he is. So everywhere right. he goes, he's got to watch out where he goes. That speaks volumes right there as to what's going on with this. So There's a lot of people I hate. Yeah. You know, I just ignore them or block them on Twitter. Exactly. I try not to hate anyone. Um, <laughs> so, Islam is not, so he, good. the guy who sent this also said Islam is not here to assimilate. Well, you know what? We're not asking them to assimilate, but don't get in our business and we won't get in your business. How's that? Well, I you see know? someone there with a poster. It says Sharia law is not in alignment with the constitution. And that's exactly it. And, and there's, there's the other question there is, yeah. What you can't come here and have your own laws yeah, that are above the no, Constitution. No one it doesn't else work. It just doesn't that work. comes to, immigrates to America gets to come here and say, well, this is how we did it in my country. That's not how it works. I've looked into moving to other countries. I don't get to go there and go change how they do things there. I have to assimilate. It's the same thing here. You don't get to. And so that's that's the big question is what sort of 
authoritarian government would be appreciative of allowing something like this to start stripping away at people's don't offend them because they'll blow up the right they don't the like metro it. station better you know better not get under their skin and you know it just it says a lot because they allow isis to get away with destroying ancient uh cities and things like that in the middle east they're arming them they're allowing them to take down um ramadi there in iraq that we've got you know oh what do we have bigs back oh he's just saying you know, it's just they're allowing all of this to happen to like instill fear in the world, in the globe. And now they're it's trickling into America. And so that is what this is about. People saying, no, we're absolutely not afraid of this and we're not going to be passive. Not saying that all Muslims are bad and Islam is bad. And because I hate that. That's just a generalization right there. And that's absolutely not what this is all about. But we can't just refuse to call it radical Islam. Uh, uh, Oxnard Montalvo says, interview more Muslims. I'd like to hear their, the excuse for being upset while living in the USA. Uh, yeah, I agree. You know, you don't like this country. You don't like the way things are done. There's a million other countries. Well, not a million, a hundred other countries you can go to. And, and don't, don't come to ours. If, if it's so bad, if we're so evil, if we're so wrong, go somewhere else. We don't need to be bothered with your nonsense. That's what I'd, I'd like to say, and, and personally how I feel. You know, I, I'm very open to the stuff that I tolerate in my life. I'm very open, except when it comes to henpecking when I'm trying to find a parking spot. <laughs> I don't take that kindly to that at all. You know, Rob, you talked earlier about uh, the universities, and we've seen several reports from several different universities. This is going on all over the place where they have free speech areas. Yeah. This is the new trend oh, yeah. uh, for destroying the First They're Amendment. They're teaching we've you seen tolerance, it political David. Conventions. Yeah, we've seen it done at political conventions for the last several cycles mm -hmm. where they take all the protesters, put them literally in a cage blocks away from the political convention. We saw at the, at the Bundy Ranch where they created a free speech area out in the middle of nowhere, literally. And uh, somebody hung a sign uh, there that says uh, free speech. The First Amendment is not an area. That's it. And, and we have to understand that this is something that is, it, this is a big problem with Islam. This is also a problem with our universities. That is where they are also trying to cre create this repressive uh, approach uh, uh, against the exercise of free speech. It is systemic. It is something that they train the kids in. That's part of their university education. It used to be that you went there to uh, embrace freedom to and ask open questions. debate and ask yeah. questions. Now you have to toe the politically correct line, whether that's on climate change or whether it's on mm -hmm. white privilege or feminism or whatever. You have to toe their line. And so that, in a sense, I think, even though this is very violent uh, and focused on people who are criticizing Muhammad, I think an even greater danger is what is going on in the universities because it is so broad based and pervasive. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, you know, I went to WVU, that's where I got my undergrad. And um, there was a lot of liberal leanings there, definitely being in a, a theater major, there's a lot of liberals and, and left leaning there. And I dealt a lot with that well, writing for the newspaper. I would write stuff about Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich. That was, it was, Newt Gingrich was the speaker at the time, and there was a lot of clashes there. And I'm like, look, they're all in on it. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. see that. And, oh, well, Bill Clinton's doing a good thing. <laughs> but what was interesting there, we didn't have free speech zones. Uh, once a week, there was a guy who would get out and he would literally bring a soapbox and stand on it and preach the Bible. And we called him the Bible guy. And people, he would argue with people. You'd be walking to class. You going to talk, Biggs? Hey, yeah, he's Let's, Go ahead, Biggs. If you, How you guys doing? Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. Can you hear yeah, us? So stuff's, yeah, stuff's uh, pretty tense. There was some guys that were... Uh, yelling that they were going to gang rape uh, that girl in the pink. I don't know if you remember seeing her. Oh, yeah. But the, the Muslim guys on the other side, they said they're wow. going to find her after this and gang rape her. Wow. Jeez. That sounds peaceful. Yeah, it was very peaceful. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I mean, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that's going on. It's pretty out of control at this point. I mean, I mean, what an of, insane threat There's a lot of screaming and yelling, and everyone's making threats that, hey, once the police leave, once it gets dark, it's going to be on. So it seems like there's a lot but of people the who aren't decided to leave. come out here. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know, but they're it's just people angry and talking, and who knows what'll happen. Are you able to go and speak to any of the people there at the fence? As far as you know, people on our side. No, well, on the Muslim side, on the we're Muslim just private side, property. Yeah, they're, no, they're yeah, over there talking to people on the fence. 
I saw you. Uh, I saw you with your camera close. Well, yeah, they're, they're kind of close. Yeah, they're screaming. They're screaming over it. I mean, it's very vulgar language. So if That's I get right. by, and you guys are live. <laughs> hey, it's freedom of speech, Bigs. Freedom of freedom speech. speech. We can take it. Me, this isn't the radio. We don't have to worry about the FCC. Yeah. So. It's so streaming over the internet. Yeah, into the interwebs. This right. is. So this lady right here, she's been yelling for a while at them, and then they go back and forth. Can you go yeah. over to the fence where the uh, kind of like the compound was? It was that iron fence area. The iron fence. Oh yeah, those guys walked off already. Well, if you see him, some people want, would like you to interview him. We're getting tweets about that. Get their side of the story, which yeah, I think would be interesting. I do too. There's a there's a housing area back over there, so they go back over there, hang out for a minute, and they come back to the fence. Okay, so well, grab them out again, yeah, grab him if you can. But uh, if you can see the people over here, straight across in that like tie dye looking shirt, yeah, he's the one that's been making the threats. Oh really? He looked like he was trying to wave you down a second ago. So, well, it yeah, takes I mean, a real man to threaten a woman. Yeah. Oh, man. Any, anything can happen. I mean, to just make a, a threat like that, that's just disgusting. You know, Robbie, you were talking about the people at your university, a guy who would get up and get on a soapbox. They actually have a speaker's corner in Hyde Park in the UK every Sunday. Uh, people can take a soapbox and they can stand up there and talk about whatever they want. Usually it's politics and religion. And the last time I was in the UK, uh, last time I was in London was uh, 14 years ago. And. I had I'd been there many times before, but this was a really, really hot discussion. It was a Christian standing up, talking about religion, talking about Christianity, and the Muslims were screaming at him. And I noticed all the Bobbies just start quietly, start walking over and standing there with their hands crossed in front of them, keeping an eye on this situation. They could see this thing escalating because these guys were getting real. It wasn't just one or two. It was a group of Muslims uh, coming after this, about to get violent with this Christian. And he just kept... Uh, talking on the soapbox and the police just kept uh, assembling in a larger and larger group. That's what it's fundamentally about. You cannot uh, allow yourself to be intimidated to get off of that soapbox and the, the government has to stand there and defend that. That's what the First Amendment is for. It's not just, it says it's to keep Congress from making any laws to take it back, but it's also the responsibility of government to protect all of our rights, however they can. And that means that uh, that's one of the very things that the government, the police, the law enforcement should be doing, and that is protecting people's free speech, just like I saw at uh, Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park. And when the government isn't protecting it, you have the right to protect it with yes. your Second Amendment. Absolutely. And that's what it's for. That is one of the biggest things we preach here, and, and uh, Head Down Firearms is one of our, is our, our big sponsor, and is our only firearm sponsor, and uh, they're there. What do you got, Biggs? All right, so uh, one thing I want you to notice is Look how there's a lot of empty space. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people on this side are starting to clear out and it's the other dark. side is getting the other side is getting much larger. Wow. How is it broken down between sides would you say? It's uh, changing far, right now but uh, how how would you compare the size of the crowds? You say it's changing right now. How would how would you say it yeah, is? I, mean, I would say they probably outnumber us by about 100 or so at this point now. Hmm. Wow. And how many law enforcement are there? Um, let me see, uh, 20, about 70 still. Okay. Hey, what's the but Marine's name again, is, like, Joe? Any, any kind of road, any, any, any kind of road in this area that, that gets into this area has been blocked off from far back. You've got to drive way out and around and then circle back and then walk a good way to even get out this way. And they did that, I'm assuming, to, uh, to counter any type of, uh, you know, VBID threat because... You know, uh, those tweets that came out a while back by some of those uh, ISIS Twitter accounts saying that they weren't going to use bullets and guns wouldn't stop an attack, which means that they were kind of hinting at some kind of explosion. So I think they took that into effect here and blocked off any kind of roadway that comes in here so no cars can even get here. They blocked off every little area, so you have to come in on foot. So if anything does happen out here, it'll be from a person. It won't be by vehicle or anything like that. There's no parked vehicles there then. No, everything's far away. The only the only vehicles in the area are police. There's one big RV, but that's inside the the, the Muslim compound area, right over here, and that's been there for I don't know the whole day so far. 
But that's yeah, it's interesting that now the Muslims have cleared off from that fenced area where they were there earlier talking with people. You showed a little bit of people interacting there, and they weren't cussing each other out. They were talking and smiling. Yeah, I mean, they were having a, an all right conversation about stuff. They understand some of the people's concerns. You know, a lot of people are saying, uh, don't F, you know, Islam, but F uh, ISIS. And then you've got a lot of different groups out here that are just, they, they pretty much came out here to be rowdy, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. on both sides. Right. Well, that's why. And those are the kind of people. Go ahead. Yeah, those are the kind of people that are, you know, they put in place so they can uh, take away from the, the, you know, the entire meaning of being out here. The fact that this is about our country, you know, our First Amendment rights under attack. The fact that under this president, more journalists have been attacked. The fact that whistleblowers are completely attacked and just demonized for exposing corruption. Meanwhile, you know, we've got this criminal Hillary Clinton that could possibly become president and no one even cares about it. And her her poll rankings are still high. Yeah. You know, and, that's the country we live in. And Joe, if anything were to happen now, the, the mainstream media is going to jump on and say, well, it was those people wanting to go out there and stir up the Muslims and carry around their guns. And that's the big problem. That's what it'll be. It won't be the fact that, you know, wh whoever attacked first, that there was a clash. I mean, right now, it doesn't look like anybody's attacking anybody. But I guarantee you, the people who will get blamed oh, yeah. and, will be and, the ones who, who started the protest. And it even if anybody this else. remains a completely peaceful protest, that guy that was out there doing the interview, Fox News, you know, I don't know what they've how they've been covering it, what angle they're taking, but... Surely they've got to get a story out of this if they sent a reporter out there. And so it'll be really interesting to see how they spin hear, this event. Let's hear what she's saying. Tell me something right here. You guys are promoting peace, love, and hippie fucking peace. Uh, whatever the fuck you guys are promoting. And you guys are over there saying, yeah, come fight me. the mask over your face, big mouth. Seek the yeah. mask off your face. Oh, you also see the, the military behind me? People that, you know, are veterans most likely. Yeah. I'm oh, I'm just trying to get what you're saying. Why? Because I'm a reporter. <laughs> why are you out here? Why am I out here? Yeah. Go ask them why they're out here. Oh, no, but I'm, well, I'm asking you, why, why did you decide to come why out here? Why am I out here? This, and, and, and not, and, and, those American citizens that were killed from people that came from this mass, this address, right down the corner from where I live. That's why I'm out here. I'm supposed to be, I'm peacefully protesting. And people are over there calling me ignorant because of the color of my skin, saying that I'm a Nazi lover, all sorts of stuff, which is ridiculous. I'm still trying to hear some intelligent information. <laughs> That's why I'm here. All right, cool. Have a nice day. <laughs> That's a good point, uh, Joe. Tell us, uh, give us a breakdown on the factions that are there. The uh, organizer who was there earlier said that he was spat on by uh, some people. So I'm assuming those are some protesters on the non-Muslim side that were uh, counter-protesting. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's all kinds of groups of people out here. You've got your uh, your veterans, uh, like motorcycle clubs, a lot of guys who are uh, ex-Army, Marine, Navy, all that. And they have like a little, you know, a motorcycle club. They're all out here. There's a lot of the... Uh, uh, one percenters, 13 percenters, then you've got a lot of the uh, three percenters that are out here. There's a lot of different groups of people. The other side at this point, at the very end down here, are the ones that are screaming out stuff. But I mean, this whole area on the uh, on the side I'm on is starting to clear out, yeah, which makes you think of... Uh, so so on the on the non-Muslim side, do you have some people that are there that are that are uh, protesting the protests or the counter protesters on your side besides the no, people who no. are veterans and that sort of thing? No. No. <laughs> no. What about the other side? Uh, how would you characterize? How would you break that down in terms of uh, Muslims who are uh, yelling and screaming violent threats? And are there any over there who are uh, protesting the uh, protesting the uh, violent the people who are pro uh, making violent threats? In other words, are they saying, tone it down, we, that's not what we represent? You've got a group of people who are, uh, they're, they're over there chanting USA now as well. So you've got, you've got a smaller group of people who are uh, making uh, death threats and things like that. Then you've got another group of people who are saying, hey, uh, we don't agree with ISIS, but you, know, you can't hate all of Islam because of a few bad apples. So most of those people are on that side over there. And that's the only side that you can really get to. But what do they say side, about they, the, what do they say about the fact that there have been now four individuals that have well, had well, I mean, ties I can't to get ISIS? Close enough to it. I can't yeah. get close over that. As soon as the cops see me get over that way, they're like, "Yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna last long." Do you see any tension on the other side, uh, Joe, between the people who are saying or chanting USA on the Islam side 
and the people who are making violent threats on the Islam side? Are those two uh, going uh, after each like other? All ignoring, I think it looks like everyone on that side is ignoring the fact that they have differences over there, and they're more focused on uh, apparently all of us uh, white Nazis who hate everybody. Oh, that's not the right pigs. Here. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, fascist. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's so the easiest thing to do is identity politics. Hey, Joe, well, Natalie V just dropped, popped in and said, uh, tell Joe nothing going on in Cleveland. Good call going to Phoenix. And uh, I, I definitely say you had a good nose for that, of of uh, seeing that come come out. There's definitely, this is definitely the new story of, of the day, at least. And hopefully nothing goes wrong and people can go out there and, and say, well, you know, and pull out their, put all their First Amendment. Hopefully this will get a conversation started and not just demonize people who are exercising their First and Second Amendment because they're allowed to do that. That is their right to do that. We're in America. And hopefully this will start a conversation. It won't just get turned into this racial division and, you know, racist white people against you know, Joe, an entire religion and all that. Joe, read some of those signs that I, I can't really make out what they what they are. As soon um, as I get near here, they, people start shining lights. Oh, yeah. wow. That's interesting. I've got so a you, tweet from uh, Crazy Horse saying, thanks so you, goes to the Phoenix Police Department. That person for doesn't want to be on camera. That person well, right there. so far away and it's dark. I guess they don't understand how cameras work. <laughs> What does that one say? Love, not no, hate. Says, yeah. All right. Love, lo yeah. Love, not hate. One said, like I said, one said, f ISIS, uh, uh, but don't f Islam. Uh, I can't see that good right now because I was just uh, flashing the eyes. So. <laughs> Us too. Let me, uh, <laughs> no Revcom. Let me see if I could. No Revcom representatives. Are we? Are we seeing those? Oh no, they're not going to be at a place like this. <laughs> yeah. Big love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. Uh, love your neighbor. A lot of people are holding love your neighbor signs. Exactly. I think those are the ones in the blue you guys were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Do they bring those signs to these mosques when, you know, the, the people are preparing to go and, uh, what do they call it? Whatever. Going jihad? Yeah, well, it, seem, it seems like a couple people here that we've heard from, they've had personal uh, effects from this where people have gone out and, and shot the one guy in that's the beginning, what, yeah, that's saying, what saying. and then there the girl two, he just talked to. And then, yeah, that was right down the street. So they yeah. must have all known the same person that that happened to. And then two people from this particular mosque, and they were indicted. And then they had two more. And so, you know, we don't want to say that it's this mosque, because I'm sure they have plenty of other mosques. There's a whole online community, uh, things like that. So, you know, we don't want to say that it's they're training these people here or whatever but there is some sort of an element and so people need to be able to address this and to be be able to say wait a minute this is not what we're about what is happening let's you know let's see where the dark elements are within our own organization and are they already under investigation How, i mean why is that not a, a point of focus i wonder if you know that reporter went and asked anyone on that side anything like that no he just wanted to condemn the marine for speaking his mind and getting people active getting people off their couches and protecting and exercising their first and second amendment you can't have that yeah. they got to be at home watching tv bigs it'd be really interesting thanks to all you out there that are watching tv right now bigs, if, if you can hear me it'd be really interesting for you to get maybe even a second interview with the people that had that experience and and if you could get any more information about that particular case because that's definitely not something that's going to be talked about on the news with regards to this event. It's just going to all be to demonize that Marine and all the people that are out there. It's not going to, they're not going to point out why he was moved and compelled enough to put his life in danger. So if you can get a second meet up with them. Ernesto, if you've been watching, uh, Biggs has been trying to go over to the other side and talk to people and the cops will not let him over there. They are, they are keeping both groups completely apart. There was a small group of Muslims on the backside from a, a, an adjoining property, but they're no longer there. And uh, that is why you're only getting this one side. The cops are not letting people co-mingle at this point. And even though we would like to get an interview, I agree with uh, one of the tweets that I got from Crazy Horse that says, uh, kudos to the police for keeping it peaceful. Mm -hmm. I think they've, been, they've done a very good job and they haven't uh, been provocative to either side. And they're only dressed like a half a Darth Vader at this point. They're not in, in full Darth Vader <laughs> Go gear. Go full-on Stormtrooper, yeah. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah, I mean, Biggs, if you're going to be there anyway, it would be interesting once this all kind of settles down, if you are able to get an alternative perspective from the other side. 
Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> yeah, some water? <laughs> the water looks so good. Yeah, I know. I haven't even eaten today yet. Yeah. You're a true info warrior, Joe. I told him that. That's why you always got to keep a cliff bar in your bag. I keep a cliff bar in my bag just for these occasions. Oh, there yeah, you go. I'm, I'm talk to that person. Talk to that person. Yeah. Go, go, go. Talk to him. Yeah, yeah. Let me go over there. That way, I get uh, tackled to the ground, and we're done. <laughs> Anybody that tries to walk over there, they they stop you right away. I mean, it's... Biggs, are you afraid of getting tackled? Uh, no, I have a gun. <laughs> but uh, if I get tackled, then the show's over. You know. No, then the show just gets started. No, no, okay, no. when this falls off the <laughs> off the thing and hits the ground and breaks, then you guys have no way. Of knowing what's going on. I just got a tweet from uh, Andrew Liebich. He said that uh, Chris Cuomo just went on CNN and said, "quote hate, hate speech has no protections under the First Amendment." Oh. Sorry, read it. It doesn't make any exceptions for hate speech. Huh. CNN's Chris. But that, Cuomo. the guy there was just saying he would gang rape. Let's get a that picture girl. of Chris Cuomo. So that sounds up. like hate speech to me. Or yeah. tweeting out on uh, ISIS, tweeting out that they're going to attack this Marine and his whole family. Uh, that they're saying that they're going to behead people, come across well, the line, stab well, people. That's not hateful. That's there's fine. a difference. There's a difference between making bodily threats to people. Okay, that can be called assault, uh, or whatever. But that's that's different than exercising your free speech. Saying, uh, you know, I think this particular group is stupid. I don't like their leader. I'm going to parody their leader with cartoons. That's different. Oh, how could you, you want to call that, that hateful and shut it down, Chris Cuomo? Has just shown how Please put a picture family, of Chris Cuomo up for, the, right now, for so. the audience yeah. at home, or, or I'll pull him up here on my. Uh, so why are you guys out here today? My little tweeter machine here. You're here to what? To pray. It's our prayer oh. time. Okay. So what do you think about all this going on? You know what? If it makes you guys feel good, you know what? Come out here and do your riot, and you show your respect. No, it's not a riot. And we show our respect. It's not a riot. Trust me, I know what riots are. I was in you Ferguson know, in Baltimore stuff. So. You know, we're just hoping for peace for everybody, you know, here, everywhere. That's and all do, we're asking for. And do you understand the, the fact that people feel like they have the right to do this because of the First Amendment? You know, I think you have the right, but you don't have the right to disrespect any religion. If it's disrespecting yes, any religion, yes, we do. Yeah, but but the Constitution doesn't say that you. <laughs> they can't don't have the right to behead people. It doesn't say that you can't but do we that. We should avoid causing problems in the world. We're already having. What about the four the people that have come from that mosque? If that's right there. It does not avoid problems. That causes more problems. Do you condone the actions of the two guys that that, that came here and went to Garland, Texas? You know what, sir? They paid the price, and everyone who looked for trouble gonna pay the price. Yeah, that's, that's a good how point it there, goes. too. You look for trouble, you will pay the price. I got some pictures of Chris Cuomo yeah, up here. See, you know you uh, split screen. Is. Everybody gonna pay his price. But yeah, but, but see, the, but that. see, there are plenty does of people that are willing it? to pay that price, and so that's what? the thing is, there are people that are willing to pay that price. So, hey, so what do you guys think about? Uh, or do you want to say anything? So what do you guys think about the actions of ISIS? Do you, do you, is that of Islam, or do you not condone those? We're against it. We're against it, sir. We're against it all. We're against killing. We're we're all. 100% up to peace. ISIS That's does not represent mean. Islam. The same thing as KKK does not represent Christianity. Yeah. That's how I feel. There you go. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Take it easy, brother. So there, those are uh, the first two guys I've seen that have been able to come over here, but they're probably just getting ready to walk home. Yeah, we should remember that the KKK carries crosses and burns them, right? That doesn't make them representatives of Christianity. He's exactly right. Mm-hmm. The uh, the other side is definitely getting louder and more uh, more energetic. Energetic, and you've got a lot of uh, you can hear him chanting. It says that there's a sign that says "Love Rally." Can you guys hear him? Oh yeah, we can hear him. I'm trying not to talk. People are saying they want to hear what's going on, so yeah, <laughs> trying to keep my yapper shut for a bit. So we're now what, starting our third hour now. It's 10.01 here in Austin, Texas. It's 8 o'clock in Phoenix. I imagine that this will wind down when it gets dark. The street lights have come on. Oh, that yeah, used to be time for me to go home. Yeah. Street lights come on. Well, you know, and that was the thing on the Facebook page, on their event page. Uh, I think we might even be able to pull that up. They weren't planning on staying out there all night. It had, a, it had an end, a time limit, a start and a finish to it. They don't want this to turn into weeks-long 
you know, Ferguson protest or anything like that. They just wanted to come out, have their peaceful protest, and they're done. Yeah, so far, I mean, everything's good except for the people who are making threats. Hopefully it, uh, it only stays as threats and doesn't, you know, uh, evolve into something hands-on. Hey, so what do you think about all this, man? Honestly, I think, you know, uh, how they can just stand for a religion that's been, uh, that's been able to, uh, that's sac cut off people's heads, you know, that's been over numerous times, uh, uh so what do you, what do you think about, uh, do you live around here? Uh, yeah, just for school for right now. And uh, let me see that shirt you got right there. I, I don't, I've never seen a shirt like that before. It's on your yeah. website. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm being so, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> so what do you think about the fact that this church had the two uh, ISIS guys who came over to Garland, Texas, and tried to uh, essentially just ambush the place? I don't see why ISIS anybody would want to uh, be over on that side and support those and stand up for those guys that uh, were going to shoot that that drawing over there. That's unbelievable. Why anybody would even stand for that? No point in. Uh... All right, I just had something hit my feet, like a rock or something. I wonder if Chris, Chris Cuomo is related to Andrew Cuomo and the whole Cuomo gang that runs oh, New yeah, York yeah. and likes to tell people what they can say and what they can't say. Yeah, I think it's his son. Yeah, I think you're right. And so the, the, the media here is taking the angle that this is a biker protest. You can't do that in another land. You have the right to do it here. There you go. Bless America for that. There's people on the other side who keep fly, uh, shining lights over here anytime they see a camera. This guy looks like he's got a Quran. He's ripping pages out of it. Uh, Travis, we still have the YouTube stream going, right? I know we had, I think we had to yes. cut out at 930. But. So yeah, they're calling this a group of anti-Islam protesters. So yeah, it's not pro-free speech protesters. Yeah. Let's spin it. And that's what he continued to say. It's pro-free speech. It's not anti-Islam. Don't let the media spin it. And they're just going to do what they want anyway. Print what they want anyway. Yeah, I think this, I think this guy who's uh, tearing the Quran up is the one who's, uh, he's really getting them angry. <laughs> Do you support ISIS? Do you support them? Do you support ISIS? Is that what you're saying? You're supporting ISIS by saying that. You're, you're saying that you support it. This is America. We support our religion, our freedoms. And you're supporting sacrifice. You're supporting bullshit. You're supporting uh, beheadings. That's Come on, keep it going. Supporting. That's doing good. He's on a roll. <laughs> well, so we've got now uh, there is another hashtag, not my America. And so this is a hashtag that is it's a group that uh, they're the take on hate campaign and they're wanting to work against the, the narrative that this is all Muslims and it's, you know, kind of that anti-Islam rhetoric. Um, and they say, in our America, freedom of speech should not be used to trump freedom of religion. All Americans have the right to worship free of fear and intimidation. And, I mean, I think that that's exactly right. That's exactly true. But don't we also have the right to live our lives and draw cartoons and i mean this that was all in response to the the charlie hebdo attack mm -hmm. it's not like we were just like hey let's you know american the, or we that pamela geller was like let's just start drawing the prophet muhammad no she did that in response to a massacre that took place in in paris over and saying that. we're not going to stop using our freedom of speech just because the people of france they started cracking down and they were like oh we got to Maybe we ought to watch out what we're saying. And all the media stopped printing. They No one mm -hmm. would post the pictures that they drew. No one would post the cartoons. They blacked it out. Well, they did that at the shooting here, too. They capitalized they, yeah. the Prophet Muhammad, which they would never call him Jesus the Christ. You know, we, you it's know, just guys, a I've, double I've got standard. A question. I've got a question about uh, Chris Cuomo. And, of course, his dad is the governor of New York. And oh, I have to wonder surprise. if uh, any of them or his grandfather, Mario Cuomo, 
Did any of them ever have a problem with uh, the attacks on Christianity, the mocking of Christianity? Did they call for Family Guy to be canceled? Right. Did they want to stop the taxpayer funding of Andreas Serrano's uh, Piss Christ and these other works of so-called art? They never had a problem with that. They never called that hate speech. So why are they all of a sudden upset about this? Yeah. Because it's not politically correct. Yeah, exactly. And that's the point. The political correctness goes far beyond this clash of religions. As I point out, the real uh, pervasiveness of it is in the university systems that mm -hmm. they control. Mm -hmm. oh, somebody put up Chris Cuomo's uh, Twitter page. Maybe we should send him some tweets. <laughs> Don't be hateful. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Cuomo took to Twitter to claim hate speech has no protectionism under the First Amendment. Maybe we should say something to him That's right now. About. Well, about I don't really know. Yeah. This is just. No, we don't hate. We love. We want quality. There is just. It's just crazy how there's just such a, you know, two opposing sides where there's. They say Islam, Islam is love and peace and all of that, and then they have these other super radicalized side of it that is, you know, wants to take it back to Sharia law and. I mean, they're saying that they don't want intimidating anti-Islam subway ads and stuff like that, but then you're, but you're allowed to intimidate people saying that you're going to behead them or stab them or gang rape them. I mean, it's a double standard, but you're right. Like, when do they start sticking up for the other side? When, when are we allowed to not be demonized and when is it not wrong for us to be offended? Exactly. They can make uh, threats, violent threats, verbal assaults on people, and that's upheld as free speech. Nevertheless, uh, if you just do parody, that is called hate. Uh, you know, where is uh, where's Chris Cuomo in terms of uh, condemning the people who are making these violent threats? Hate speech is not the same as making violent threats to people, assaults. I mean, you should be and could be arrested for that. That's different. Oh, thanks. Well, it looks like a lot of the people left have are leaving now, moving out. I think that that was their plan, was just to stay there for their prayer time. But the media has already started reporting on this. It's... It's really oh, clear what they're saying. Chris saying. Cuomo was saying because 1.5 million Muslims aren't responding, then we can't say anything. We have to. <laughs> of course they are, but they're doing it to be insult insulting. That's the point. Yeah, someone saying a drawing is not incitement to violence. It's a drawing. <laughs> A slur just is a me. slur. Thought, That's why the Garland and Phoenix things were held to insult. Doesn't make them illegal by any stretch. Good. Well, at least he's saying that it doesn't. But he does say. Didn't he say? He said something similar. Do I have to follow this guy and actually look at the rest of his tweets? Um, no, I think you can go to his page. I just go to his page. Having to teach do the ways of the Twitter. <laughs> you don't understand this technology. Well, Biggs, is it winding down? How long are you gonna stay out there? Are you Hold hungry? On, I don't have my earphones in. I gotta let yeah. my uh, my battery charge. Give me a second. Gotcha. Just had someone tweet me and uh, and correct what I said, and that is that uh, Andrew and Chris are sons of Mario Cuomo. They're not father and son. That's how much I watch CNN. <laughs> so yeah, the two of them, uh, the uh, governor and Chris Cuomo, the commentator for CNN, are brothers, and both of them are sons of Mario Cuomo. It's just weird how. Uh, these these people get in these positions of power and then their spawns go out and keep preaching the same stuff. Oh and, yeah, well oh, that's yeah. they think it's their their bloodline that they have that divine right to lead all of us lesser humans. We have that book in the store. <laughs> bin Laden's what, favorite. What'd you say there? What'd you say there, Biggs? <laughs> I said they uh, they just brought the lights out, so uh, I don't. It's not going to get dark anytime soon now. There you go. But it, it seems like the crowd is nobody really was thinking. Out. Uh, the crowd on uh, the side that I'm able to be on is very cleared out. Yeah, I see that. 
Well, that, I mean, that was kind of the thing. They weren't planning on staying there all night. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm just, it's hard with me by myself. I'm trying to roll all these wires and. <laughs> I know you're doing a great job. Yeah, right, everybody give Bigs a hand. He was in Cleveland this morning, getting ready to protest Al Sharpton. How are you doing? Turned on a dime. Oh, here we go. There we so, go. So, where you at? Uh, Infowars.com. Infowars? Yeah, Infowars. Oh, okay. So, uh, can you tell me why? What are you out here today for? I got nothing to say, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How are you doing today? I'm all right. Doing? What do you think about all this stuff that's going oh, on? I guess it's just because say I was no point to it. <laughs> He's telling him not to talk. Just do what? No, I was going to say, I don't know what's going on. I barely care. I mean, Dovey, what do you think about all this, huh? though? Just your personal opinion. I don't know. It we just have a, We have a yeah. spokesman for the mosque. Yeah. If you want, you can interview him. Yeah. You guys can't speak for yourselves? I mean, we, it, it, it's no word. This is funny. This You're is, in America. You got freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want. Uh, see see if you can get the spokesman. This is for sure. Going against that, this is, this is going just against what? You guys saying that fuck Islam, they shouldn't be. I never said that. I, I don't agree with ISIS. It's a... Do you? What do you? No. Do you no, yeah, no, fuck no, no, ISIS. No, no. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I said fuck ISIS. But you know, uh, the protest for me is is, is funny. It's just for sure. It doesn't mean anything. Just for sure. Oh, no. I Got a lot of people talking. <laughs> do you want to? ISIS is a piece of shit. That guy had the best sign out here. Said, That's right. Fuck ISIS, not Islam. Yeah. Best sign out. Here. Yeah. So who's your representative that can talk? He's, he's in the box. My dad? But, yeah. Yeah, he already spoke to a couple of media. Out there. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's in well, what? Uh, yeah. Johnny Yarbrough is asking us to ask them their feelings on Sharia law versus the Constitution. Here, Do you think that uh, Sharia law should be implemented in America over the Constitution? Don't say. We don't believe that. We don't believe. I mean, that's all you got to do is yes, yes or no. That's why they're here, right? Because <laughs> our country is great. A lot of people, that's what people wonder. So they want to hear from someone who's being peaceful and they just want to know. I mean, you gotta understand when someone doesn't know something, they they become fearful. Of course. So United that's why I'm trying to ask you. The United States Constitution gives us the right to pray here. So why would we want to get rid of the United States Constitution? Without the Constitution, we don't have a right to pray. These people are gonna jump over the fence and shoot and kill everybody else. Without the United States Constitution protecting our rights to practice our religion. Right. So why well, would you want to get rid of that? Okay. Exactly. I mean, I, I agree Amen. with you. <laughs> I agree with you 100. percent But I'm saying, you know, a lot of people think that. There's a lot of people who are radical who are saying, yeah, you know, that all Islam is bad. You know, I believe that everyone should have the right to practice whatever religion they want. That's what the country's founded on. But, you know, I just, I you don't, I don't like ISIS. It's just ignorance. Yeah. Anytime in society, the less you know about something, the more you are afraid of, afraid of it. But the more you learn about and understand it, that's when you become tolerant. Uh, in our history, uh, they hated black people, okay? There are less people who hate black people today than in our history. But what happened? Over time, they learned to live together and adapt and know there's no reason to be afraid of them. Now they are afraid of Hispanics. They think they're going to take over Arizona, okay? <laughs> now they are afraid of Muslims. They think Muslims are going to take over. So this is nothing new. This has been around in our history this for a long cycle. time. Ask him where he's from. Say that again? This is just another cycle. And this where are you from? This... I'm a, I'm a U.S. citizen. No, but I'm just uh, with your accent. Where are you from? My accent is from Gambia in West Africa. Okay. He um, said in Gambia. Yeah. Gambia, West Africa. This has been going, so this is just one cycle, like you said. Yeah. So another cycle will come around. Someone else will be a target. Um, the imam preaches all the time uh, that violence is not acceptable in Islam. So what do you think about the two people that, that uh, supposedly went here and then the ones who went to Garland and uh, went to attack the uh, other event? Their, their actions are unwarranted, and we do not condone their actions, and they should not have gone there. What However, are, how do you think I they're getting radical, radicalized? The First radicalized. Amendment of the United States Constitution, that they were provoked. Uh, how do you think that they, they became radicalized, so to say? We don't know them. We don't know them. How long were they uh, attending here, do you know? We don't know, and I don't know. I've never met them, and I don't know them. They, how long have you been going here? About six years. Okay, so out of that entire time, six years? <laughs> yeah, you didn't get radicalized. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But did you ever see those people? No. Did you, sir? Oh, no. I haven't, I haven't. I'm an attorney. Does he think they were set up? Do you think they were set up at all? No, I believe their actions are uncalled for. 
violence is not accepted in Islam. Oh no, but do you think that someone put them up to that? Do you think someone no. kind of grabbed them and uh, radical? I, I don't have personal knowledge of that, but I know here it's not, it didn't happen here at the mosque. If they are radicalized, they must have radi been radicalized elsewhere. And radicalized is a subjective term. It depends what you mean by radicalized. What Saying I Saying they want to go kill people for a cartoon. Does not tolerate their conduct. Oh well, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, radical would be saying you want to kill somebody because they drew a cartoon. Well, we do not support what they did. Okay, what they did was unacceptable. However, we don't see anybody speaking against uh, provoking Islam. They are provoking us to act, and it's our job as Muslims to restrain so us. A cartoon. Cool. I mean, that, that's our job as just adult human beings to restrain and no. to restrain ourselves. No, no, if no. someone's verbally attacking you, 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 you sit there and you move on. If you decide to take it to, to violence, then that's what escalates. There, there is speech that's protected and there is speech that is not protected. Mm. Oh, All speech is that protected. Violence is not protected speech. Okay? Speech that, uh, even hate speech is protected, but speech that provokes violent for someone to act is not protected speech. I believe what they were doing in Texas is the only was provocative speech and it's not protected under the constitution. However, I equally believe the conduct of those that went there, allegedly from here in Phoenix, their conduct is unacceptable and they, and violence is, not, is also unacceptable under Islam. And the Imam believes that, our Muslim community believes that. And like the guy said, the best sign here is the one that says, fuck ISIS, not Islam. Yeah, I like that one. Hey, okay. tell him he should be the spoxman. Uh, he's he's an excellent speaker. I don't speak you're, no, 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 you're very excellent. I don't speak for the mosque, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're, it's your opinion, yeah. Yeah, I don't speak for the mosque. And, uh, but this scene, to me, is not surprising. For me, it's just for sure. Well, do you think, Does he think do, you, do, you, do you think it stems? Well, no, but I'm saying, do you think it stems from the fact that uh, with a lot of the ISIS stuff, the beheadings, uh, because they've gone around killing uh, Christians and they're they're lining people up on the beaches, chopping their heads off. Our Don't you think that them? kind of gets a? Oh, and then on top of that, we know that our government drops some weapons as well too. So I mean, no, no, what protest is nothing new. This has been around forever. Oh yeah, I go to protest all the time. Exactly. So this is not the first time this happened. The events you mentioned, this type of these types of protests have been around before those events occur. So we can't blame this protest on those events that you mentioned. So um, <coughs> if that event is over, tomorrow they'll have a different reason to protest. Well, but they're the protesting because of the Charlie Hebdo attacks. And fear. I mean, originally. Of someone else's religion. They are here. They think Islam and Muslims are going to take over. Well, you don't no. think. You don't think. Well, no, people are protesting because of the Charlie Hebdo. They are thing. in Europe. So the the fact that <laughs> the fact that armed gunmen came in and shot people because they drew something. I mean, people attack all kinds of religions, but that's where you have to restrain yourself. Exactly. We had the Holocaust. The Jewish people uh, were persecuted. Those they were not persecuted by Muslims. Okay. We had the Crusaders who were the Christians. They were not the Muslims. The Crusaders killed more people than the most than the so-called Muslims did. You see what I'm saying? So people will always have reason to protest, and it's their right to protest. What I, what we don't accept is provoking someone to act because you hate them. That's not protected on the again he's putting the blame back on the people drawing pictures. But then you're blaming the people who are drawing. You're blaming okay. the victim. Well, thank you for your time. <laughs> What's your name again? Abdul. Abdul. All right. Oh, he should be the spokesperson. He's he was, yeah. he was great. Except for the fact that he said that some people, yeah, there's some free speech that's not protected. That's where he's wrong. Yeah, where is that in the Constitution? Yeah, yeah where does it say you can't uh, incite? And it's like, one, how do you know what's going to incite B? violence? You could say, "Hey, have a good day," and he can turn around and punch you. Yeah, but that's, you know? I don't think that's in the Constitution. But I think that that they hey, did decide the that. Now. The lines. Oh they got man! Watching. Who's crossing the line? Mm. We are better than that. No, 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 no. Yeah, don't.
Anybody who just tuned in, you're watching live coverage of protest outside and inside Phoenix, actually, at a mosque where uh, there's a Marine who decided to hold a free speech protest and uh, basically have a d draw Muhammad uh, contest, part two, in response to the attacks that happened in Garland, Texas. And he's being condemned by the media. Definitely the mainstream media is condemning this guy for and saying you can't go out and, and incite hate. And incite violence by doing this. Well, that's not that's what like he's saying, doing. Pushing no. our side. No, we're going to do both sides. Okay, cool. We're doing both sides. All right, cool. Thanks. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, they're making the. We barely have our own water. They're uh, parting the seas. Tom, you're a vet. You need some water. Hear me real quick. They are uh, pushing the uh, the ropes over and uh, pushing everybody onto the sidewalks now. You can no longer stand in the street. Ah. Uh -huh. They're widening the area so people can uh, attack at each other. Are there any tank ambulances in the area? Yeah. Yeah, Does they have a huge military base? I guess that's near Tucson, right? Uh, he said people are afraid of the Hispanics. There's Hispanics hey guys, living all over screen. Phoenix and Arizona. They're, they're not afraid of Hispanics. What they are is saying, we can't have illegal aliens come into this country and start sucking off the system without being contributors to the system. And that's what they're saying they don't like. And they're coming in and getting a lot of free stuff. They're getting free bus tickets everywhere. They're not being deported. And that's what people have a problem with. We cannot save the entire world ourselves. We have to get other people to show them the way to save themselves. And it's not by all everybody coming here and bringing all your problems and all your baggage along with it. Right, and not, I mean, and if you do come here, you don't have to assimilate. Yeah, pretending like, oh, you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do I? Where's that shot coming from, guys? That's the Fox affiliate out of Arizona. Okay. Will someone move uh, is that anybody else covering it? Um, any other affiliates? Or you think it is, is Fox the only one? This was the aerial footage we were showing earlier. They, they were posting the aerial footage. Oh, okay. So we've just kept the feed coming in. Oh, on, is this, this has got to be one of our longest live broadcasts. Uh, I don't in a know while. when we did the, uh, uh, was it the election or the. State well, of the we Union. did Ferguson was pretty long. But Ferguson was pretty long. That was like a five hour, actually. I think it's good, though, that we do these, you know, at least once every other month. I think it's good to get out here and do this live stuff and react to things you're seeing in real time. Right. We are always teleprompter free. <laughs> That is true. We do have some TVs here, but we're just looking at stuff you guys are seeing. Uh, we're seeing the feed that's going on the air, and then we have a, a feed going back into the control room where we can see people eating pizza. <laughs> yeah, they've uh, widened uh, the road and pushed everyone back to the sidewalks now. You know, I've gotten several tweets of people saying... Uh, Joe Antekuzar saying, can't see how there's a built-in hate factor to artistic expression. <laughs> the fact that you're drawing a cartoon is not a provocation. Uh, <laughs> well, and just like you said, the when, the, when the artist did piss Christ, I mean, people were really upset about that, but they didn't try to go kill him or anything. They were just upset that their tax dollars were paying for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Robert Winters says, looks like they're clearing a path for a vehicle to move in. Which could, Do you see any vehicles there? Uh, any any MRAPs or anything on the staging area? Hold on, let me walk down the road real quick. I see some lights flashing. I've got my earpiece out so I can charge the phone. Sure. Yeah, they pushed everyone back because of that scuffle that happened, I think. Because people started uh, running across and into the road and... Uh, one officer got hit a little bit, so I, I think they were just like, all right, that's enough. We're going to push back. Settle down, everybody. Settle down. So we have our reporter, Joe Biggs, on location. If you're just joining us, this is our uh, we're working on our third hour at this point. We started at 7 o'clock, over our third hour, well into our third hour now, just about halfway through Make sure, yeah. getting to the bottom of the hour. And this Go. is our live coverage Go. of the... 
Mohammed Prophet on, cartoon card content. Oh, right, okay. we came fourth hour, actually. Going into the fourth. Like, we're, we're going, going, going into our fourth hour. Yeah, we're, it's like three and a half hours. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there was thousands of people here earlier, and now it's starting to die out. I was just going to see, is there a big vehicle down there getting ready to pull up? There's a, you mean like a MRAP? Like an MRAP or, or something? something? No, I didn't see an MRAP, but they, they've got, a, of course, the undercovers and stuff like that. But, I mean, on both sides, they're, they're doing stuff good. Yeah, there were people on the road a minute ago, but they pushed back because some guys ran across our scuffling. Oh, really? Oh, that just happened here? like, yeah, just a few minutes ago. So they push everything back. Well, let's walk back down here then. Yeah, yeah. If there's nobody, uh. So they said there's no MRAPs down there. It's just regular pe police vehicles. If you don't mind, man, when you get a chance, let me get a picture of you guys. Yeah, yeah, we can do a picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is my girlfriend, Lane. Hey, Hi. How you doing? This is why we don't let people come to the office because this would happen all day long. <laughs> yeah. If you think about coming to the yeah, office, don't right just send us an email. Just please. don't even think about it. It's much it's much easier that on That is a pre crime. <laughs> it is a pre crime to even think about coming to this office. <laughs> oh no. I well, yeah, it's definitely cleared out a good bit. The other side is definitely stronger as far as uh, numbers, but uh yeah, I mean, there's no need to feel like people protested peacefully. I think you need a three burst of an air horn and everybody just walk away. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's made their point. And, that's the signal. But if they want to stay out there, go ahead. But that's... If uh, we're getting a, lot, a few people asking us if you're able to speak to any more Muslims to ask them if they have any message for non-Muslims. That is. Nobody I am. That's oh, a tricky Twitter handle there. Hard to read. <laughs> James Knox is active. This is He's put in several tweets. He said, remember Rushdie's book. It was Satanic Verses, James. Is what and, and that is from what I remember, like the first brush with people being threatened with death for uh, writing something. At least in the in my modern memory, I'm sure there's other people who he was making correlations to where the 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 prophecies Muhammad received weren't from God. The did that come that especially evil? Did that go out over the, the air, Marcos? Yeah, I'm okay. on the air. Okay, I'm on the air right now. I read the satanic verses and I got looks everywhere I went. Because people didn't, so they would just read the guys, title. Uh, I'm I'm looking at some things right now. We do have a lot of them are are giving the, you know, biker rally, anti-Islam. Um, they're obviously putting out the other groups that are against this, kind of going against counter the hate and all that. Really pushing for everyone to go to Twitter to try to drown out anyone who might be in support of this protest. Um, Maximilius is digging the Twitter action. Why do people hate the Constitution? Why do people? That's where I see hate at. The right. fact that there's this incredible hate for freedom, for liberty, to to be able to say what you want to say, to be able to go out and do what you want to do, without being harassed. You know. Well, that's the only way their tyranny to will reign. Without having cops storming in on no knock raids and mm -hmm. attacking you. Right. Well, that's the only way that they can push their authoritarian agenda and rain down the tyranny. Yeah, <laughs> what did Rex say? Smite us with his <laughs> hand of tyranny. You know, but that's that's the only way they can do it is they got to break our break our spirit to take us over. That sounds like one of the worst authoritarian rules when they start telling you what you can't say and what you can't draw and ways that you are not allowed to communicate. And they use violence to enforce it. Right. That sounds like one of the worst author authoritarian tricks in the book. You're absolutely right, Marcus, because if we allow them to say that certain things are allowed to be said and others aren't, that's going to be used as a justification to take down web channels. It's going to be used to take down media organizations. That's the way they will come after us if we let them decide that there are certain things that can't be said. Who makes those decisions? There's nothing in the Constitution that gives anyone the uh, right to make decisions as to what speech is allowed and what speech is prohibited. Sorry. You Paul don't have Watson the right it will be to loud not be feminists offended. Who will be making those decisions. <laughs> you don't have the freedom from offense in America. You have the freedom to say what you want. 
<laughs> I'm not going to tweet everything. I no, I, I was wondering if he, uh, Watson's up with us watching the. Oh, I wonder. I don't know. Andrew I haven't heard Liebich, from Watson. Andrew Liebich points out that South Park depicted Muhammad as some sort of fireball wizard with no backlash. You guys get the <laughs> the camera on that? Is there a picture of it? Yeah, oh, yeah. this is this is South Park that, depicted this. If you can do the doc cam. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Where, where, where is it? There Which hand? There we hey, go. Yeah. It's getting late, everybody. <laughs> oh, fire! That look, that's the Prophet Muhammad as depicted on South Park. No backlash. Fireball wizard. <laughs> is <it> Joe Biggs? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Somebody's saying something about nine eleven. I know. I heard that too. There we go. I think the most amazing thing is Joe's just out there with an iPhone, bringing you this coverage. And uh, right, and that's what we always want to point out to to everyone else. They're like, "Well, why don't you cover the Zionist agenda all the time? Like, you go out and cover that. Take your phone and go out. And if you have all this knowledge for something, I really that really bugs me." When people say stuff like that, like, why don't you cover this? Why don't you cover that? Do you know how much tyranny is out there? We can't cover it all. And it's not our job to stay on one specific topic. I day probably don't, day I probably don't do as many reports as I do because it's so, moving so fast and there's so many other things going on. I, I would put out five reports a day if I could. It's just you can't. There's so much, and There's I think so that that's by design as well, is that you have all these fires going that, you know, the fire department can't put them all out because they can't get all across town. And I really respect people like Bev Harris who just do one thing. I'm just doing black box voting. That's it. This is my this is my task or the food, babe. I'm just doing food safety. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not getting involved. We're, we cover everything. Right. I can't think of something we don't cover. Right. They probably still hear, you know, hey, why didn't you cover that kind of food? Or that kind of added it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got something on Twitter from Zach Mount. He has uh, he asks, were there any winners declared at the Muhammad Art Contest? Do we have any pictures of any entries? Uh, well, they, we saw last contest winner, but I don't think we. we well, they were any. supposed to declare a winner at the end of this protest. Travis says, when you stand up for free speech, everybody's a winner. That's true. <laughs> That's true. There you go. <laughs> we're all winners. Hey, wait a minute. Is this Common Core? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's how here's how tolerant Andrew Cuomo is, brother of Chris Cuomo. Who are they? Are are the are they these extreme conservatives who are right to life, pro assault weapon, anti gay? Is that who they are? Because if that's who they are, and if they are that if they are the extreme conservatives, they have no place in the state of New York because that's not who New Yorkers are. How's that for tolerance? Yeah, that's very I think tolerant. that sounds kind of hateful and provocative, don't you? <laughs> you right don't to life. Like exactly. I love how they're saying like right to life. <laughs> how does how does saying like Because he wants to kill you. <laughs> being <laughs> for why. life. When did that When you're become... old and, and not working and providing a tax base, then he wants you to have the right to die. Well he he'll he'll want and he his wants right the to right life to when he kill gets old. half the black babies in yeah. New York. That's what he that's what he wants. Right. Well, more killed than have been born there. But I'm racist for pointing that out. I'm sorry. Racist. And sort of extremist. Yeah, there people are really really digging this Twitter. We should probably do this once a week. I've been saying I also want to have a contest where I I mean I gotta, you know, I gotta run this by the the boss, man, but I I wanna have a contest for our prison planet subscribers. I think we should do like a monthly giveaway or something. Something one of our big products. I don't know. We do appreciate you guys. You really do help us fund this operation and send bigs out to do all of this extremist activity. <laughs> right on. So what do you think about all these uh, people coming out here doing this? What do you think about it? I love it. You love it. All right, cool. Good. And don't you think that the Constitution says that you have the right to say whatever you want? And if it, if it offends you, they know well. Just get over it. Right, right. That doesn't that doesn't mean that you're able to go out and go shoot people up or threaten to cut someone's head off or cut someone's head off because you don't like what they said or drew. Right. Correct. All over broadcasts in different states because it lets people know about. All right. Yeah, man. Uh, I just got one question: Is is, is Alex like really like how he is? 
personal. Is Al this guy wants to know if Alex is how he is on the show off the air. You guys want to tell him real quick? <laughs> Alex is sometimes more intense off the air. Yeah, he um, holds back a little bit because it's a family show and he doesn't want to get too angry about stuff sometimes. But yeah, yeah you've seen him have to... <laughs> he breaks the mic sometimes off air and he gets really upset with this. This is this is real. And, and real he has deal. everyday problems. He, you know, he loses his cell phone. You know, he's, he's, I've seen him actually quit smoking and, and be successful doing that. He's got everyday problems just like everybody else out there you know uh sometimes he forgets to put gas in his car and you know he's got so much going on so yeah i mean he's alex is as you know i hear people say he's putting on an act he's definitely not putting on an act definitely not what if he is, is then his get. entire life is an act which yeah. i don't believe i mean alex is like that even when <laughs> i remember we took a day off one time half a day actually and we went to barton springs and we were and we were shooting b-roll for a a piece on Barton Springs, but that was considered a day off. And we went and got snow cones and we're sitting there eating them. <laughs> and they kind of tasted chemically and funny. And, he, cause, and he's looking at me, I'm like, yes, yeah, kind of tastes weird. He goes, let's investigate. He pulls out his phone. We go over there, we ask the guy for the, the syrup jar. We're looking at it and we're like, yep, has aspartame in it, has this red dye. And then we start preaching to the people at who are getting stuck. You just got aspartame in it. You know what aspartame does? You know how it's made? It's bacteria poop. I mean, <laughs> you know, if, if, it, if this was all that, he wouldn't be doing that. He would yeah. be having a good time at Barton Springs, but instead he's investigating the snow cone man yeah. and what he's putting in the snow cones. What, what were you showing me? Were you showing me something? Yes. Uh, I wanted you to respond to this oh. tweet. They said if they did not wear shirts saying F Islam then the pitch for free speech would be more convincing. I don't, I mean, he has, that's the whole point of free speech is you can do that if you want. If, if it offends people, that's what, you know, David Knight, you brought people this wear up. Shirts to say yeah. F Westboro police. Baptist Sweet. Church, awful people. They, I just, it, they make me cry. I just watched a video today where they were out protesting a Marine's funeral. And there, there is a, there is a, a um, a troop of veterans that come out and they station themselves in between the Westboro Baptist Church and the funeral attendees and they block them off. And you know, that's one way to block that hate speech. But you know, that brought tears to my eyes because I just don't understand how people can be that hateful. But you know what? I don't misguided, want to murder them. Misguided and hateful. And as uh, one person just tweeted here, you know, point out that uh, you can go to jail for denying the Holocaust in Europe. Some yeah. European countries, you you really can. I mean, not just for saying it, but if you write a publication saying that uh, you know that that it didn't happen, they they can consider that in some instances they have considered that to be hate speech. So I think that's deplorable. I think you ought to be able to say whatever you wish. I mean, I personally believe that there was a Holocaust. I think there's a lot of evidence for it. Nevertheless, people who feel otherwise need to be able to say that we need to have a clash of ideas when you gag people's speech. Then they start to wonder, well, what's really up with that? And rightfully so. That's what we see happening all the time in America, that the government will not be open and honest with us. When they finally do talk, they usually give us conflicting lies. They'll tell us one lie one day, another lie another day. That's why people start doing investigations. Then uh, they call us conspiracy theorists. Well, I think we could sum up tonight with, uh, with Maximilius's tweet, popular speech doesn't need to be protected. That's it right there. Right. That's right. It. The only type of spe is, is is speech that could be inflammatory to people. That's what needs to be protected. Whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, is beside the point. It still needs to be protected. Or this country's gone. And when our country goes, and there's people working on, on getting rid of our country right now. When our country goes, the whole world's going to descend into a hell pit. Yeah. And all the little communists running around here that are living in this Western world that love it so much, that love the designer sunglasses they wear and the designer clothes that they're wearing, uh, they're, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. Yeah. Well, that's their answer to police violence in America against minorities is communism. Yeah. <laughs> and even, you know, even Mao said, I'm going to do a report on this next week. Mao even said, communism doesn't work once the revolution succeeds. It doesn't work. He even admits it. All these people run around worshiping Mao and they, they don't even... He, he didn't even believe the system he was pushing and wrote about in his little red book that yeah, they carry around. His little red book. He just needed the useful idiots. Yeah. Well, too. he could see that it didn't work. He saw people starving by the millions.
right. tens of millions uh, when he did his cultural revolution. You know what works? Local farms, local power, mm -hmm. deconsolidation, decentralization. That's what works. Yeah, he had this idealistic idea that everybody ought to go back to the land and that I'll be better off for it. Yet he didn't have any idea himself how to run a farm, how to grow things. So that centralized management made it all fail. There were people that could make it work, but uh, he probably killed them. Yeah, he, he killed. They he had glasses. Definitely on. did kill them. Yeah. You know, you read the, you read the letters from Pol Pot. They had kids that survived the uh, Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot and all that. Well, that whole revolution that went on only only killed about three million people. But you know, these were kids who had they saw their parents killed. They were going after anybody that could read, anybody that had glasses, anybody that was educated. And if you were older, they got rid of you because those people knew what freedom was. And then they knew they could take the kids and brainwash them and make them turn them into work slaves. Mm -hmm. That's not freedom. That's not a utopian society that you think you're going to get. And that's what's going to happen when you go that route. That's what happens. And that's why we have to worry so much about what they're doing in the colleges. In many cases, it's indoctrination and uh, brainwashing, especially when it comes to freedom of speech hate speech, all the isms that they're preaching to everyone. That's what's so concerning about what's going on in the colleges, because it is a way of social control. And they started early. They started K through 12 as well. Right. It's getting earlier and earlier yeah. now. And now it's this whole thing with white privilege. And, and I actually took an African-American history class. I learned all about white privilege. I saw all of the advertising and stuff like that um and and it there is a case for it it's absolutely true it's not just like this myth that's out there but the way that it's being indoctrinated into the young people is that they are becoming racist themselves against white people you even have white people hating themselves who are there for this you know and it's i mean i just think that that's those people are weak <laughs> don't be weak don't be weak don't be weak that's a that's a saying that comes around, uh, goes around here. Don't be weak. Don't be weak. <laughs> that's mental weakness, not physical weakness. Mental weakness. Don't be weak. Yeah. Don't, don't get be... pulled into these little these psychological games. Right. And happening. it is important to understand your history, to understand facts, to see what things are really going on, so that you can have empathy and you can understand, so that when you do see these protests or you know a lot of people g getting upset, saying Black Lives Matter, you can understand why that is happening. And, you know, but but don't allow yourself to get sucked in to the racial division that what, is a part of it. I mean, that's what we've been right saying now? there. I don't know. Let's hear. Yeah. Turn this up. Everybody here on both sides has way more in common with each other than we have in common with the governments that lie to us. And Amen. Like yep. There should be no border here. The 99 percent have to cooperate together to beat the one percent we're all in the same boat right. we're being lied to by central government and central bankers that's the issue Oh, and good thing you didn't know that first. I might get nervous. Yeah, when you guys got tear gas. Yeah, I got the shot right here. So you, you tell me, if the Islam has to be held monolithically responsible for all bombs, and if a drone goes in. Fishmaster says, Leanne, I say we douse the Middle East in DMT and let them settle their disputes then. Well, that they're pretty much doing that. They're dropping weapons there I and letting that. them kill each other. They're DMT, not TNT. They're, they're you know, Big difference. they're Definitely allowing more them to explosive. clear, clear I don't recall MLK showing up, guns loaded, and saying F whites. Right, That but that was back then. Apparently, you haven't seen a lot of the protests that have been going on now saying F whites and hammer and sickle and... You know, uh, who, who's that guy out there saying whites need to bow down? We're all going to die. I mean, it's it's changed now. There, the racism has shifted. It, it is actively shifting. So yes, you're absolutely right. MLK was out there calling for peaceful protests. Things got violent, escalated. Um, you know, on the other side, and we're still seeing that today. But I mean, wow. When we started today, I had 155 
followers. Now I'm up to 298, and I think I do almost has 300 followers on Twitter. Two guys. more. He's really pumped about this. No, I'm not really. It's you just are either. pumped. It's it's your first day. You're new to the Twitterverse. I wanted to build an account so when I go to build a burger, I can. Yeah. Keep well, it is actually my favorite social network. Oh, 299. You know what's going on right when it's going on. Yeah. And the people there, they only got 150 characters, so. <laughs> you have to be really careful with your words. Yeah, it helps you, you know, be succinct. Efficiency exactly. is the. Uh, Efficiency at all costs. There's a great hippie that lives in South Austin that says efficiency at all costs. So Gunner Chamberlain, King Gunner, I think he's saying, I think white privilege is rare. In today's economy, many of us white people have no privilege or pool in America. Myth to me. And that's exactly right. That's why a lot of white people are like pushing back going, what white privilege? Nobody handed me anything. That's And so that's what it is. You're going to these classes in college and the university and they're showing you how the history of it all you're seeing the historical cartoons and the historical advertising and how black people were depicted in in television and, and movies and, and elections and things um and how that's kind of still trickled through in our society but you're absolutely right like i didn't grow up i mean at least i don't feel that way but you know leanne i just been notified uh, joe told me he got a text from joe biggs he's being taken over to the other side so hopefully we're going to have some uh, interviews with people uh from the muslim community just when you thought we were going away <laughs> There's a good quote here from George Orwell that was sent from uh, Rant Reaper. He says, if liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. There you go. Yeah. I think that goes with the popular speech does not need to be protected. That's right. These are truths that are self-evident. Yeah. Is he walking with that older gentleman that, that was talking to Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to walk over here. He's going to get me on the other side, and we're going to go talk to some people on the other side. All right. Stay in the light. All right, well, uh, just I got to unplug this. I got to unplug my earphones so I can keep the, uh, the phone charged. Yeah, hey, Joe, why don't you get... Do you want to stay live, or do you want to take a, a, quick, a little break or anything? Yeah, that'd be nice to be able to get off this so I can yeah. start filming, shoot some videos. Well, why, yeah, why don't you charge a little bit, um, and then when you get ready, why don't why don't we uh, hook back up at 11 o'clock, and you're on the other side ready to go. All right. That's right, Mr. Right, Jennings. We're still going strong. <laughs> um, and uh, let's like, uh, eh. let's go to a break. <laughs> Real quick, did we play? We did play Bounds' other report, didn't we? Do we play both of Bounds' reports? I know Jakari's got a few reports. We could throw in those. We, you know oh, we, we could do? we didn't do the wolf bet. We wolf could do the how big. Uh, we went through this. We had Carmen, our intern. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to explain them all, and then we're going to lump them all together and play them all in a row. And then play a couple ads, and then we'll come back. Because, we, you know, we've been doing this. We're, we're about to hit four hours. We're getting a little... <laughs> I think our backs are going out at this point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got to get up from this chair for a second. It is getting a little hot in here. A little. I'm getting a little shiny. You feel it. <laughs> um, so these are clips uh, from the How Big hearing where he, he had to go up uh, to Sandy Hook. Uh, his attorney is Kay Wilson, and the Sandy Hook lawyer is Monty Frank. He's the bald guy in the shots that you'll see. Uh, a couple of things about Monty Frank. He started a, a cyclist group called Team 26 where they ride to D.C. and he's a gun control legislation advocate. So I don't know if he's biased or at all, but he does try to offer testimony in, uh, in one of the clips. At one point, he just starts blurting out testimony. He's not objecting. He's not being a lawyer. He becomes an active participant in there. Uh, the first thing what we'll start with is, is him asking for the security system. Um, and, then the and then they're talking about, well, there's a lot of reports that they installed a new security system and then we never saw any video of, of anything mm -hmm. going on in there. But the judge says uh, news articles are hearsay and not credible information. And then he asked for the log for people checking in because while Gene Rosen, we have actual proof of this, Gene Rosen is being interviewed, a guy who a lot of people think is questionable. Behind him, there's a flashing sign that's saying everybody must check in. Mm -hmm. Everybody must check in. Mm -hmm. So how big saying, where's that log? that everybody checked in. You're saying you have a giant flashing road sign that says everybody must check in. Check in where? Check in where and what are they checking into and let's see that list. Let's see how many people checked in. The second, he's asking for uh, proof uh, from a school board meeting that there was um, permission slips signed 
for people, for these kids to go on this Super Bowl trip. He said, you can't have kids going out of state without there being permission slips. There's a procedure you have to follow. And they don't have that. And they pretend like they don't know what he's talking about. And then he starts interviewing uh, the police chief. And there's an incident log that they, that they write up after an incident happens. Well, the incident log pertaining to Sandy Hook lists an unwanted person as what's going on. And it lists uh, that 22 cop cars showed up and that it was only a medium threat. Now, I find that hard to believe that the second, the second biggest shooting in school shooting in American history is a medium threat and it's being listed as an unwanted person. I find that really hard to believe. And this report's written, written after the fact. Not, it's not a report that's being written in real time as 911 calls are coming in. And there were 911 calls of people supposedly saying there's being shots fired. Right. Um, the next clip will go to the explanation of, uh, of why the lawyer wants to see, why they think that unwanted person report is wrong and been falsified, and they want to see the real report. And that's when the lawyer, um, Monty Frank, starts offering testimony. Uh, and then he asked the chief why there's no transcripts of audio communications between the state police and the helicopter, uh, state police helicopter and the Sandy Hook police on the ground uh, because there's a log that they did provide that said the state police helicopter is being called out to assist the Sandy Hook PD in locating people in the woods. So you'd think there would be communication going on there. Well, there are none, uh, apparently. And then there's the case of the dashboard video cams, which uh, Wolfgang went and looked at and they had no time code on them. Hmm. And they released these dash cam videos on the web with time code and with the officer's name, but the stuff that he saw did not have that. It's just weird. Like, well, how, how do you get rid of the logs like that? Is it that easily falsified that you can just r remove it after it's been, you know, created two years later, it's, you can still remove the, the log. And then he uh, speaks with the uh, head of facilities there at Newtown It's Gino Faella. And um, he asked him if he had any emails between him and Don Hopsprung. And the guy says, I'm not sure if we have any emails. He says he's, he says he's seen them, but he says, do they exist? And he says, did you read them? Did you see them? Do you read yeah, them? Yeah. I'm oh, not so they sure. exist. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm, yeah. And, and then they, they ask him about work order. So those are, it's a whole two hour, uh, you know, uh, hearing that's online. And you can go watch it. Just want further anomalies. It, it's, it's definitely hey Rob, some anomalies. Yeah. Rob, I, I, I got to say, I, you know, as Montel Williams said, Alex Jones is a fraud for profit. His attacks on school shooting victims are evil. So you shouldn't ask any of these questions. Anybody that uh, investigates this, you know, like a school safety consultant like uh, Wolfgang Halbig, uh, he shouldn't ask any questions of this shooting. We right. shouldn't be looking to see who really was behind this. We shouldn't be investigating the actions of the police to see if they were uh, done properly. Mm -hmm. You know, he investigated Columbine. He didn't get those kinds of false answers. He didn't get that kind of stonewalling when he investigated any other school shootings. But, you know, people like Montel Williams just want to say that we hate the school shooting victims if we investigate these things. Right. No, actually, we want to keep this from happening again. That's what Wolfgang Halbig's. Uh, profession wise he was a highway patrolman he was a principal he combined those two together become a school uh safety consultant and he investigated these other school shootings but you know we're evil if we look at these um uh these these logs if we look at these discrepancies right. if we, we analyze the actions of the police why didn't they do this why didn't they do that we're not supposed to ask questions because then we are attacking the victims no we're trying to stop more victims from uh, more pe victims from happening. Yeah, obviously, if a guy, one guy, loaded up a uh, hundred pound weakling, loaded up with ammo over hundreds of rounds, mm -hmm. and and going into a school can go in and kill that many people that quickly, well, there's something wrong, right? And if that's what's really really what happened, then then we need to where did it break down? Sew up those loopholes, and the loophole is mm -hmm. not the fact that he had a gun. The loophole is the fact that there are not more guns on the campus. And there's something wrong when the government will not answer for their actions, when they will hide and cover up oh, totally. and stonewall information. I mean, we're talking about free speech. We should have transparency as well. And that's what we're talking about. And that's a glaring problem with this. People like Montel Williams just don't want to see it. They just would rather troll people and make false accusations. So well, we're just going to roll these clips all at one time, and then we're going to go to a break and come back. What do you have? Uh, to well, add? I just wanted to make this point is that they say they don't want to release the video of, of Adam Lanza going in the school and all of that because they just they don't want to, uh, if, you know, further hurt the victims and all of that. But they released the video of uh, the Sarniev, you know, behind the little boy 
that was killed. I mean, that was a tragic accident. Those pictures all made that, up on the internet. They released we all, that we video right it. away. So where, can't release the Osama video. Why isn't that concern? That's going to offend people. It's just a video but they of did him show walking the videos. in the school. They did show the videos of Saddam Hussein and others that they had uh, Qaddafi. Killed. Yeah, we exactly. got to see his execution. Mm -hmm. So they're rather Saddam. selective about this, aren't yeah. they? Right. It's only the ones that are going to offend certain people. There's just certain groups that we're not allowed to offend. White people can be offended, or maybe the ones that they just made up, the <laughs> ones that aren't real. <laughs> there you or go. Or they don't have any real pictures. Maybe that's why they're not showing them to us. These clips, uh, it's about 12 minutes and a couple breaks. So about uh, around 11:15, we'll be back. But uh, people should watch this because this is some really interesting stuff behind the scenes of what's going on. Um, in Sandy Hook. And then we'll be back with Joe Biggs and he'll be on the Muslim side of this protest. So thanks for joining us. Did you request information regarding the Sandy Hook Elementary School security system, including the name and address of the contractor who installed the security system in operation at the school before December 14, 2012? Yes, I did. Did you ever receive any of that information from the town or the school board? I received it from my attorney. And what did you receive? I received the document, a purchase order that was generated in the year 2007, 2008, showing the installation of a security system at Sandy Hook Elementary School. and. Uh, that's not what I was looking for. Is there any reason you had a belief that there was a newer security system that was at the school? Yes, ma'am. The national, the national news media, all major channels carried the story the next day of the yes, incident. Sir. Yes, sir. I have, would you provide the document? If you're, you're, I'm sorry. If you're, if you're referring to a newscast, newscasts are hearsay. You would actually It's published. It doesn't matter if it's published in the paper or if it's on the TV station, what's, what's in the public media that's not uh, credible information. You testified that you did not receive a copy of the sign-on line referred to on a traffic sign posted outside the Newtown Sandy Hook Elementary School on December 14, 2012, right? And the town responded that it does not have that document, right? Right, but, yeah, but you have nothing. You don't have any documents. I mean, isn't what, that what, what, sir, answer my question. Isn't that what it says? That the town does not have responsive documents. Absolutely, but you have documents from nobody. And you just don't believe that, correct? I don't believe you. I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't believe it. We'll it. So, Mr. Halvin, you're here today because you do not believe that the town has porta potty records or responses uh, in connection with the signage sheet. Is that right? No, I believe is the that, school that, board, I question? believe the school, I want this on the record, I believe the school board has the records. They have school board policies, they're required to to show the expenditure, taxpayer dollars. Do you have, those, do you have it? That is outside of that, but why? What they're required, they're required to so let's try to stay focused on the FOI. I agree, but I'm looking for the custodian of records. The town is not the custodian of records, even though he writes that in there. Do you have any reason to believe that I was not responding on behalf of the Board of Education, the town of Newtown, and the Newtown Police Department? I do not believe. All right, through this. Item number one says consent agenda, right? Item number one, on okay. January 23rd. I'm, I'm with you. I'm here for you. Go ahead. The first bullet point says minutes of December 17, 2012. Correct? That's true. All right. Turn the next page. One. Turn we'll the page. The next one. Sir. Turn the page. Turn the page. Okay. Those are minutes of the Board of Education from December 17, 2012. Right? Right. That's not what I asked for. The next item. January 8th. And if you turn two pages back. I didn't ask for January 8th, but you made me pay for it. Next page is what? I, I, I think, think I made my point. You asked for copies of all supporting documents, and those could be considered supporting documents. They no, are the supporting no, documents. Not, he understands how a consent agenda works in public schools. I've been the school administrator. If there's one thing I know, is how we pose consent agendas. Well, Mr. Collins, what is it that you actually thought you were going to get when you asked for these documents? 
But I was looking forward for January 23rd on the consent agenda when the board approved that consent agenda five to zero, you should have seen field trips for 26 children going to the, to the Super Bowl in New Orleans, which is an out of state field trip, which has to be approved by the principal, the superintendent and the school board. Nowhere on any of those documents have I reviewed can you find that field trip signed and approved. That's what I'm looking for. And it should be on the consent agenda. And the reason I say that, sir, is because if you look at the document that he just provided to me, you can actually see a field trip being approved on the consent agenda. Field trips are approved on consent agendas. You just cannot find the one that I'm looking for. Um, but he can do another document for two, two copies for you and your council, um, Chief Pigo. Chief Kehoe, it purports to be a daily incident log. Do you recognize it as such? Yes, I do. Okay. Is this an official record of the Newtown Police Department? Yes. Okay. And I direct your attention, sir, to page three of this document, which has been marked as Complaint as Exhibit C. Um, <clears throat> are you looking at page three? Yes. Looks like it's for, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but this is for December 14, 2012 at 935. At the top of the page? Yes. Okay. What is the incident type there? Unwanted person. And the location or venue? 12 Dickinson Drive. Okay. You understood that to be the Sandy Hook uh, Elementary School? Yes. Okay. Now, there seems to be a list of uh, units. Um, I'm counting units. Unit 1. Looks like there were 22 units that are identified. Were those all Newtown units? Newtown Police Department units? Again, I would object and I'm can ask what this has to do with the subject of this appeal. Your Honor, we have requested um, under FIC 14461, our exhibit CA is the FOIA request dated April 25th, 2014. We asked for copies of all communications for December 14, 2012 from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. between the Newtown Police Department and the Connecticut State Police Trooper 1 helicopter. <laughs> Mr. Halvin testified we did not receive that. Okay. My inquiry is whether or not there is indicia in here of communications so that they, if they exist, then the next question would be why do we not get them? Well, it, it's, it purports to be a detailed call for service report for December 14, 2012. And the town of Newtown, and it says 911 caller, 12 Dickinson Drive. And uh, Chief Kehoe has indicated that the call type was unwanted person. So I asked him, what does that mean? Okay. It's a generic term that we use from our CAD RMS system, which is a integrated dispatch records management system, indicating that this person is, has not been invited to this particular location. Okay, thank you. Um, is there, Your Honor, I'd like to put this into the record. So the injection, well, I, 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 I want to understand what, 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 what it is. That, is. Has that clarified whether it's an authentic document or not? Well, I, I'm not sure. I need further testimony. So the claim, so he's testified that this is an official that document. Was provided in response to your request, right? It's not a true document. All right. So, may I, may I further what you the witness, Your Honor, as to this document? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm directing your attention to this 911 caller from 12 Dickinson Drive. What was the priority of this particular call?
this particular document sets it's a medium priority. <clears throat> Chief Kehoe, to your best understanding of this series of events and the calls that came into your station, isn't it true that the first caller on this day regarding the 12 Dickinson Drive incident at Sandy Hook in the town of Newham was that there was a report of shots fired? Objection. Let's, uh, let's stick to the brothers in the document at hand. Well, it goes to the issue of whether this has been doctored and whether it's the document that we requested. You brought, brought in, you're asking questions whether this is a relevant document. Mm. You're, now you're saying that there's a change to the document. We don't know. Well, not, let's, stay, let's stay focused on the, uh, the request for the document. I think the hearing officer is trying to suggest, how does your question get to that point? Um, I believe that the do a document which would have been the detailed call for service report concerning this particular incident would have been a high priority call type involving shots fired. The document we have been given through our FOIA request indicates that it was a medium priority and that it was for an unwanted person. It calls into question whether or not we have in fact received the documents that we duly requested through the FOIA request process, which is upon appeal and is in, 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 directly at issue in this hearing. I think we're starting to get to the real heart of this matter, which is that this isn't really about the documents. It's about a belief that the events on I'm going to object to that testimony by Attorney Frank. This is about the FOIA requests. The motivations behind Mr. Halvig is that he is a concerned citizen, a brave one at that. And that he is, you know, he has, like any citizen of this of this country, has an opportunity through the Connecticut FOIA laws to request public, non-privileged, non-exempt documents. And they've been provided. We don't know that. You have the document. You just don't believe it. If you want to continue it's, with the document, it's at odds with the facts as we know them. Mm -hmm. I'd still like to ask, put this in the. For the commissioner's the consideration. That's what we know is that 26 people were killed. <laughs> <by the laughs> Objection to the un Let's testimony you're, 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 of you're, counsel. You're, you're giving testimony now. You're yeah. not sworn in to do so. I think that uh, the question was whether you want this uh, put into the record as, a, as an, exhibit, an exhibit showing that. I, I do not have an, an objection um, if it's being offered as a document that was reduced then the response to FOIA. For, for purposes, we're going to put this in. And, and it's being stipulated that uh, this is a document that you have received as a response to the, uh, the FOI request. That is correct, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Chief Kehoe, do you know whether or not there are any transcripts of communications um, for December 14, 2012, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. between the Newtown Police Department and the Connecticut State Police Trooper 1 helicopter? To best mine out, there are no communications. No communications? That's correct. There were no communications between the Newtown Police Department and the Trooper 1 helicopter for the state police. That That's day. an answer. Her question was transcripts of communications. So do you mean to say that to your knowledge there was no transcripts of communications? Well, I think that was your question. Mm -hmm. That was my question, but I think his testimony is what it is. No, I'm just reminding you you're under oath, but I'd like to ask you whether or not you know whether or not those dash cam recordings contain a date signature and a time stamp as well as a listing of the police car or um, unit and the officer. Could you repeat the question, please? Do the, do the dash cam videos typically contain a date stamp, a time, a unit, or an officer's name in the video? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us why there was no date stamp or time on the video shown to Mr. Helbig yesterday by your executive secretary? <laughs> mm. 
what you reviewed yesterday was to copy. The best we could do to copy our in-car camera system to a medium that could be viewed uh, by uh, by you, and that was our best attempt to copy. How did so? If the originals had date and timestamps on them, how did those date and timestamps fall off of the copies which were given to us for viewing yesterday? I'm not sure they did. Did you review the? They're, they're embedded in in that that uh, copy of the um, video reviewed yesterday. And how how do you know that? Because I I viewed them. And did you actually see them appear on the screen yes. superimposed on the video? Yes. Okay, so you did review them prior to allowing us to view them yesterday? Yes. And it's your testimony that there were date and time stamps on them at the time that you reviewed them? Yes. Are you aware of any emails that may have come from school principal Don Hoxsprung or her assistant school principal for the period of May 1st, 2012 through December 13th, 2012 to the facilities department? Yes. And um, did you have you reviewed those emails? I, I don't quite understand the question. Have you looked at them? Have you read them? Of course. Okay, so they exist. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, Attorney Frank can't help I, you with that. If, I, I, if, I, I if would, you received say, them and you read them, I, then they I must exist. I would think that they must exist, yes. And did you conduct such an inspection in 2012, by August 1st of 2012? Yes. And did you conduct such an inspection of the Sandy Hook in Elementary School? Yes. And what were your findings? Objection. What does this have to do with documents? Well, because, well, we have never received those inspection reports, although they are the subject of this appeal. If I may direct Your Honor's attention to uh, FIC 14-461, which has been marked as Complainants Exhibit A, constitutes the FOIA request made by former attorney Spinella, or the former counsel, Attorney Spinella, for Mr. Halbig. So paragraph 5 requests Newtown Sandy Hook Elementary School positive substance reports. Copies of triannual annual asbestos inspection reports. Copies of any reports showing lead paint. Um, it also requests... And, and the town responded to those? We did not receive those reports. Uh, Joe Biggs, as he was attempting to go back over on the other side to talk with uh, some of the Muslim people at this protest going on in Phoenix, said he, we got a text said, I'm trying to call in, got bum rushed or got rushed. So uh, Biggs, are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I'm back on the other side now. I went over there and there were some, uh, some of the hipster dudes, like uh, a lot of the Austinite looking people. The guy's got, uh, you know, bunch of piercings everywhere and he just starts going you know he somehow knew that my shirt was Infowars and started flipping out i wouldn't even be able to tell this is an Infowars shirt because it even stayed on the front it's a live free or die and 90 percent of it's covered up by a vest but the guy just started like coming at me and everyone just started screaming and pushing me out of here and next thing you know because well, uh, isis so has a fought well, did you get that on video were you recording <laughs> uh well i was trying to call into you guys right as it happened so but uh, I was called a gun nut, uh, uh, a stupid conspiracy theorist. Alex Jones sucks. Infowars is uh, stupid. We all watch Fox News. We're all retarded. Uh, everything's a conspiracy. Uh, just a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah, it's a huge conspiracy that ISIS, you're one of their number one targets. But those weren't even Muslims, though. Those are just people out there that the same ones that show up to like Ferguson and start crap. The, the people over here behind me that I talked to at the fence, they've all been very cool, calm, and collective, and they're willing to speak. I mean, they've all left now for the most part, but, I mean, 
everyone over there, they're just a bunch of agitators who are looking for something. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. I feel like that's kind of what's going to be there right now at this hour. Well, it's already clearing out now. I mean, a lot of people are starting to push. The one thing I definitely don't want to be is the only one over here mm -hmm. when it's time to go. And everyone's over there because they didn't seem too happy about me being here. <laughs> hmm. And you were going there with somebody? Well, what, so who yeah. was trying to bring you over there initially? Uh, well, a guy who uh, listens to the show, he goes, hey, man, he's like, He's like, you want to try to get it over on the other side? I know a way to get around. And I said, okay. So the cops let us through. And then as soon as we went over there, the people started like verbally attacking me. Then uh, some lady came over. She looked like one of those communists. <laughs> she runs over and starts grabbing the cops and goes, this guy's starting stuff, you know, get him out of here. I'm like, all right, I'm just over here being peaceful, saying, hey, why are you out here? What's going on? And then it just immediately got bum rushed by people. So definitely not uh, peaceful, but I'm sure the... Tomorrow, when you flip on Fox News, it'll say everybody over here on this side is a bunch of gun nuts, and everybody on the other side was very peaceful, which uh, definitely is not the situation. Yeah. And the same thing happened when Jakari tried to ask one of those communists a question. He said, don't be aggressive. Well, all he did was ask him a question. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The humanity. Well, and it's crazy because you, you wonder if that the mosque there, you know, are those people speaking on their behalf or did they just show up? And so that's kind of their own personal agenda they're pushing here. You know, because you, you thought you were going to go be able to speak to the other side, to those on the Muslim side. Um, but I, I think that all those people are probably gone. I mean, they were there for their prayer. Like the guy said. Yeah, yeah. now it's just a bunch of people who just want to literally just argue back and forth and bicker. Right. And it's, it's pretty much ridiculous right now. I mean, what's going on? Both people making, arguing stupid points that don't really even matter that are just completely against the fact of why this is happening. Right. Well, that's why I think the leader of the event already kind of rolled out and the people that were there for the right thing. And then you have, you know, some people there are really aggressive, but they're fighting with the wrong people. They're just provocateurs there. Are people still open carrying out there? Uh, yeah, me. You're the only one? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, every, the, that guy took all his people with him. So he had about, you yeah. know, 20 or 30 people around him and they're all gone. So now I'm uh, pretty much uh, alone. Yeah. Um, why don't you uh, give us another shot of what's going on, and then maybe we'll uh, we'll go ahead and cut out. Maybe you can go get something to eat. And it looks like it's winding down. I don't think there's. Uh, or maybe they're just waiting for all the media to leave. But it does. Oh, well, it looks gone. it looks barren out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's what it is now. It's just you know people that. Might, might not have plans on a Friday night. <laughs> Just still upset. <laughs> but, you know, Somebody that was... Somebody said, uh, how does Chris Cromo not have white privilege? If his family wasn't famous, he wouldn't have a job at CNN. <laughs> yeah, well, that's um, nepotism. Yeah. I think that's called nepotism. That's pervasive. Yep. I'm live right now. Hold on one second. Oh, I'm sorry. No, talk to that guy. Interview him. Let's close it out. All right. All right, so you're going to be the last interview then real quick. So why are you out here today? One second, man. Can you hold us? Just talking to that. Are you going to put the earpiece in? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm out here today because um, uh, pretty much because I got a Facebook post letting me know that I, there was a rally coming out um, approximately uh, uh, four or five miles away from my house. So I definitely wanted to come out and you know see what was happening. Um, it's definitely an interesting crowd. Um, I wasn't sure what was going on as far as like the, uh, the... Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, goodness. What's going on? Well, I don't know, but people are running. Are the cops running? Yes, everybody's running. I don't know what's going on. I didn't hear any noises, but people are yelling and can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Keep talking. All right. 
So I don't know what's going on. There's some kind of squirmish. They crossed the line to us. Uh. Yeah. Yes, don't cross that line. The proverbial line in the sand. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on right now. Someone keeps saying tear gas. I heard someone say stand your ground. Yeah, because there were some people uh, pushing, and the guy was saying, hey, you know, if someone pushes, you stay on your ground. Let's go this way, guys. We're fine. Thank you, officers. Well, that's about it. That's the last few people. <laughs> Tell that one guy, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Biggs, can you see the group that you went over and tried to talk to who were outing you as an InfoWars person? Uh, they, I mean, that whole side just cleared out now. I don't know where everyone went. Wow. Look, there's no one on the other side now. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. The, the event, it, the event wasn't supposed to be that well, some big pop-off protest, you know, for... Huh? What happened? There's just a couple of guys... I guess... Some weeks, kind of it was just a planned protest. Emotions getting the best of people. So now the, now the, uh, the helicopters flash, or uh, shine a light on this guy with his kids, his family. I guess he was one of the ones involved, so the helicopter keeps shining his light directly on him. Hmm. Well, that, is that the police helicopter or Fox News? <laughs> it's probably a police helicopter. Well, I, it's a pretty bright light. I'm pretty light. sure that's police. Yeah. <laughs> Unless Fox News has got a Skrillex concert going on. <laughs> this is Fox News. Yeah, you can see that uh, it looks like most of the people have cleared out on the Muslim side. <laughs> And there's the road. You can see the cops in the middle of it, keeping everybody on each side, keeping what the sides that big divided. Moving stick. What was that? Did you see that? <laughs> it was like a light pole, but it walked on leg. What? Yeah, it was right there on the corner of the screen. Well, let's clear it out. To see it on the replay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Biggs, are you signing off? You think you're ready to sign off? Or you... Are you... Yeah, we might as well. I mean, it's already clearing out now at this point. Everyone's starting to walk off. and I mean, there's like five people on the other side right now. Yeah, I think it's just going to devolve into... You can only scream so much at these events where you get tired. Right. Especially if you don't have a megaphone. Well, let us know if you're able to speak to anyone else while you're there or on any other reports you're uploading. But hold on. Aww. Look who look who came out to protest. These little puppies. Puppy. <laughs> protest puppies. Aww. Those are cute. Protest pup. She's all. It's a line. Let me see him. What's this guy's name? Gretel. What? Oh, Hansel and Gretel. Aww. I need some puppies like that. That's cool. What kind of gun is that? <laughs> Fat in the This is a Provectus uh, AR-15 made by Head Down Rifles. It's pretty awesome. Because you're allowed to carry. I know, like, for what? Like, they said on the news that they might burn down the church. They said what now? On the news that they might burn down the church. Who? I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> no. Educate them, Biggs. Educate them. No. <laughs> well, you guys be safe out here. Do what? No, there was no gun. It's a peaceful they protest. So far. They were exercising their First and Second Amendment. No, he doesn't. Can you still hear us, Biggs? Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't have my earpiece in. I just got the phone close. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to uh, walk off and try to get back because... If it clears out and I'm here by myself, I'm a big target. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what's the plan next? Are you going to try and talk to anyone else while you're there? And then you're, when are you flying out? 
Oh, well, I'm not going to put that information out, but it's uh, going to be tomorrow. <laughs> what flight are you on? <laughs> uh, I know where he's going. Guy, some creepy guy was tweeting me today, like, like he was stalking my flights and uh, like trying to find what flight I was on. Yeah, I guess it's true. I mean, you're not as far as that Marine there that's going into hiding, but... Well... The cops are obsessed with uh, flashing this guy. Well, the, the guy with the dogs, right? Was that the guy? Yeah. Or, yeah. I guess the guy with uh, his two sons and three puppies is a threat. Yeah. Puppy protest. <laughs> hey, how's it going? How you doing? Good. Uh, can I just ask about this? Because I saw you. Okay. So is that just like a. Yeah, it's Skype and we're live right now. This is out of Austin, Texas. Oh, nice. Yeah. So everyone's. <laughs> is that your prom? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. You guys have a good night. Be safe. He's making his people way. Are all, pe people are always amazed by. Uh, the selfie the stick? Fact that we can, we can do so much with this little setup that we have. Yeah. The power of the selfie stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to hate those things until I I learned that we could actually utilize them here at work. It's not just for take. About? It's not just for taking selfies, Bigs. Negative. That's the whole purpose. <laughs> it makes it easier. My arm doesn't cramp. I don't have to hold my phone out. <laughs> uh, well, hey, Bigs, I would say maybe get some food to eat and maybe do a little after action report for tomorrow because this is all. You came in at about the two two and a half hour mark of the whole show. You're with us for about two hours. Uh, I guess we missed all the good, the one good spot when uh, when you were going over there. <laughs> that's all. That's yeah, always. Every time good. we go to break, that's what happens. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that there'll be many more events like this. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Biggs, you stay safe. Um, just give us a report later later tonight after you get some food. Well, somebody, somebody in the studio needs to be monitoring this until I get back to the car. Yeah, well, I think we're gonna do that. We'll keep you live. We'll keep you live. In fact, we could just keep you live and let you take it, out, take us out. You want to do that? Well, I don't want it to be live because I don't want someone watching on the other side that doesn't like us to be sitting there going like, "Okay, I know where that is." <laughs> Biggs, you're, it's called you're, you're a conspiracy theorist, Biggs. You have become one. <laughs> no, I'm a I'm a combat survivor, and I know what it takes to survive. <laughs> All right, well, we'll, we'll we'll sign you off now, and then we'll close out the show. Um, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you. In, I guess you're going to be in Baltimore next. Yes, indeed. Tomorrow night. Or at some point in time. At some point in the future. Possibly. Sometime, possibly, maybe, within the next 48 <laughs> hours, I could be <laughs> back on the East Coast again. What's your What's your plan in Baltimore? Uh, to go to uh, North and Penn, the area that Jakari and I were at last time, that seems to be the uh, the kind of focal point, the uh, main area where a lot of stuff has been happening. Yeah. Why do you think it was so different there in Baltimore versus Cleveland? Because the community came together. I mean, the the the, the, the community really cares. I mean, the fact that every religious leader in that town came out there and held hand in hand, usually religions that you wouldn't see you know talking that much around and then kind of coming together so why not i mean yeah when you act that way that's the kind of uh, reaction you're going to get you're going to have people act uh rational and have uh, more uh more of a respect for what's going on when they when they can tell that the community cares you know people went out and protested but everything remained calm i mean Cleve uh, cleveland no i'm talking about in cleveland oh. So in Cleveland, you know, they 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 handled they handled everything a lot better. Hmm. Yeah, it didn't seem to be any outside agitators. Yeah, it's not. I as mean, close there was the Rev, the Revcom guys were there, but I mean, oh god, they couldn't get the support. I think I think Cleveland likes their sports more than they like anything else. <laughs> you know, the well, fact it was that kind the, of an the, odd. The data. Cavaliers were about to. The, now that the Cavaliers are going in the championship, I don't think they uh, are going to waste their time riding. When their sports team is finally going to go to the uh, playoffs. I thought they got eliminated. Yeah. No, yeah, the Cavs are in. They won. Really? I thought they lost. No. Oh, you're good. <laughs> <laughs>
Like, All right, well, Joe Biggs, thank you for uh, sacrificing being out there on the front lines of the info war. Uh, we appreciate what you're doing out there, and uh, we'll see you in Baltimore. And um, I guess that's about it. I think we're going to yeah. wrap it up here. Let's go ahead and take Joe off so nobody sees where he's going. <laughs> and uh, and then stay, uh, Mr. Jennings, you can just stay on there until he gets in his car, just so we know he's okay. And I guess we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. We're coming in on four and a half hours of broadcast. It's been uh, quite an event. Uh, hey, very interesting. <laughs> I didn't think we'd be on this long, but I, I thought we were going to roll out about nine thirty. Two hours yeah. later, here we are. Well, I think it was pretty interesting. It'll be interesting to see how you know the media covers it tomorrow. You guys mm -hmm. were all there. You watched it live, so you can see for yourself what exactly was happening. You're not just going to get the bits and pieces um, that some other news outlets might want to give you that spin. And if you're not watching it on prisonplanet.tv, what are you waiting for? Become a member today. You can log on to prisonplanet.tv, sign up. It's a monthly fee. It's a subscription site, but it pays for everything we do here. And you can share your username and password with up to 20 people. I don't know of any other subscription site that lets you do that, but we do it here. And it's because we're more interested in getting the word out. We just need a little bit of cost to cover the bandwidth, cover the studio lights, the personnel, the TVs, the ridiculous amount of TVs we have around us right now. There's Unnecessary amount of televisions. That's because it's a building full of men. You're like <laughs> nine, 18 TVs <laughs> right just behind us right there. Television. So there it is. But that's all we've, we've done it all with your help. And, and, and Alex Jones' ability to carry the ball every day and get on the radio and, uh, and wake people up. And we thank you once again for your support, prisonplanet.tv. Also, uh, check out Head Down, H, I'm sorry, hdfirearms.com. Uh, Head Down is one of our sponsors now, and we're encouraging people to go check out their firearms. I've fired both models that you've seen in the videos, and uh, they're both, there's the Prevectus model. And really amazing rifles. They're very solidly built. Um, I, I've got an old AK Draco pistol, and I fire uh, a couple clips through that and it's ready to fall apart. It needs to be retightened and <laughs> fixed. And, you know, it's not, I think it's a Romanian AK. It's not, uh, it's not very, not, not very good. <laughs> it, it's not very durable, but these Prevectus rifles are amazing. I've fired them myself, very accurate. And especially once you get them dialed in and just, uh, you know, a fun to shoot. Mm -hmm. So you got to fire one too. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I like the little grip. Yeah. Little soft grip there. It was good. It wasn't too big, you know, on my uh, my hands and my weak little girly arms. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, we're gonna sign off. Uh, Liam McAdoo, Rob Dew. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, and uh, please spread the word about the broadcast. We'll see you here next week, 7 p.m. Central. It's the Infowars Nightly News. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must 
must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.